lights and the electrician, you know, they didn't use their lockouts. And next thing he knows, he's he uh, was lit up. He was he was dangling above the stage. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> he, said, wearing, he, huh? said, he said, "Thank God I was wearing my harness." <laughs> yeah, just skip right to the end of his story. Well, hello there, Mister Mad Spidey. Good What's going eight. on, Spidey? Rob, Good. myself. We got Jeremy here with us for the first time. Oh, hanging out on the job site. Mad Spidey, Spidey. What, do you, what, do you, what do you just get done or on the way to breaking into? What do you what do you bed. do? He's getting ready to go to bed. <laughs> it's uh well now that daylight savings is over, it's the not it's the 9 30 p.m. time slot, so it's a little bit oh. easier to do now. No, it's pretty early, yeah. It's only 9 30 in the evening. Huh? That's nothing. What yet. other offices are awake? Where's Bo? I have absolutely oh, no idea. I can send it to him. I got him right here already. You got it? All right. Yeah. Oh, oh great Google. Let me movie. download this app on my iPad. Which app are you referring to, just out of curiosity? The StreamYard Guess app. Now, wait a minute. There's a StreamYard app? Yeah. <laughs> That's new. I ain't, I ain't never knew it or used it. It didn't. I've searched for it in the past and it didn't exist, but. Now I don't want to. Well, yeah, usually you just yeah you just click the link or copy the link whichever you need to do depending on what device you're using and just yeah. go from there. Yeah, if I'm if I'm on my cell phone or something, I'll copy the link and just go into Google Chrome and just paste the, the URL and go that way. If I if I'm on my phone going through Chrome, I have the settings. Like if I just click the link and go through Instagram, there it's like give me permission for them. Like ah. Uh, it always gives me problems doing the mic and yeah, it's a pain in the it's, ass. It's like it, it's I, Instagram still so recognizing it has permission, and then you know, so I just go straight in through Chrome. Well, I don't, I don't see it anyways in the um, Android store or go Google Play store. So me, Jeremy has a Jeremy has a phone that's ten years old, and he found it. Well, he said he said he also said the word <laughs> iPad, so he oh, may, he he may be he may be sort of things. It may be something that exists in the Apple store, but doesn't exist in the Google store. Yeah, That's see, I'm not that broke. StreamYard. I only spend 90% of my money yeah. on comments. Stra StreamYard guest. Okay, so yeah, so it's something that exists for Apple, and mm. apparently. Which, if they're working on building one, usually the Apple one gets released first because Apple has... Mm. What happens is Apple has tighter mm. control oh, of, their you, yeah. of their OS versus... Android. Yeah. If, if, it, that, if it works on Android, it don't mean it'll work on Apple. If you get it to work on Apple, it'll work. Yeah, because they pretty much are synonymous. Yeah, with Android, there's so many different variations out there that mm -hmm. it's more problematic. Mm. Even though there's more people running Android than Apple. But you yeah. know, I got Apple, but it's because it's a company phone. But I honestly like Android's better because you got. I feel like you got more stuff you can do on there. Well, there's vastly more you can use. It was good seeing you, Izzy. But there's, I really <laughs> think it's a Coke or Pepsi thing. Like, I don't think there's, there's very, very, I mean, like, very few people on the planet that will use a cell phone to its maximum ca capabilities. There's just so much that you can do with them these days. So it's really just like what you prefer. Like, mm. it, I think I use five apps. I got, I got, I got, there's a billion apps on my phone, but man, I only use like five. five apps, and then you don't touch half the stuff that comes built in for it, you know. Yeah. Mm. All the rest of the stuff is like, oh, every, you know, something odd comes up. Oh, I can reorder my medicine. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> and, and Vince V. Nice points out a very accurate statement. They caught a lot of trouble for that. It's actually Maybe. two two models. So you got to, it's two models behind, and it slows down your phone. Oh, I'm a stupid yeah, balloon. Yeah, what's up? What's up, balloon man? Uh oh, <laughs> now we have royalty of the internet, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to introduce to you the one, the only co-host co of the Hucklebuck, <laughs> Mister Mike Becker. Oh, I thought, it was favorite I thought it was person. I thought oh, it was great. Be I gave him that introduction, and the first words out of your mouth, out of as Spidey, is oh. Uh, wow. <laughs> why do you why do you hate Mike Becker? I do not. I love Mike. Mike is one of my favorite people. Uh, I thought it was going to be Chip when you said royalty. No, when I'm you sorry. say Chip, you say like peak human being, golden god. Uh, the the C2 C2 Cabra. We, we listen to Pat the McAfee, Cabra. so we know that it's a, the apex of our species. The uh, <laughs> that's yeah. rare sighting. You know, I'm yeah. I'm uncommon. 
the owner of StreamYard. <laughs> we, you know, we were talking about StreamYard, so the owner of StreamYard, you know, Un uncommon royalty. How about that yeah. one? But yeah, I'm good. Under ninety six. Good morning. I I, I know why you hate Mike life. Becker. It's really just because of art. Your know, art rivalry, isn't it? I do. You should see what Scott's been say, doing. Scott don't um, go. Man, Scott don't publicly. I'm well post aware of what Scott's I know doing. you. I know you would be, but like Scott don't post publicly that much stuff. Like he's on his little group thing where they post like themes and all mm -hmm. that. Scott has been like setting a new high water mark with some of the stuff he's been doing. You're talking about Hoarder's Hide? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've, I've seen some bits by year. I've seen some bits by year. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. so we, we buy an art piece, like Michael buy an art piece here and there. I'm on hiatus. Scott buys his in he bulk. Retired. In not, bulk. Not, not these past couple of weeks. He's been going after like. Like targeted early specter pages, targeted like Sheldon Moldenov, like, like Ostrander uh, run, like that. Uh, dude, he got that freaking. Uh, I mean, I know he shared that he even went on live stream for the uh, the Bindi card or Foldy, the Foldy card that Wally Wood did the art on. He got the original Wally Wood art for that. Like, that's fucking insane. that was a while ago. Yeah, he um, well, that was a few weeks ago. No, about two weeks ago when it uh when it closed and shipped to him. He'd been working on it because it was an open option thing. But uh well, you, know, you, you know who he did a big package deal with, Spidey? Uh Anthony. Mike Berkey. Mike Berkey, uh yeah, yeah. Ramita Man. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like he's yeah. within driving distance of the proper nice. Friday. Proper Friday. Oh, that jacket, my dude. Stick them together because they belong together. Is that like I, the Superboy version of a Star Wars jacket? That's the red blur right there. The red yeah, blur. man. Legion of Comic <laughs> coming at you with Aussie vs. Rob Stack's facts. My nerdy collection, Izzy vs. Mad Spotty and Becca Man. Yeah! How are you, boys? <laughs> we are outstanding now, sir. I'm, I'm I've gone to bed. I love that. that that's exciting. I, I, was, I was just I about to have... I don't I'll much tell you. into foreign greetings, but hello. I was just <laughs> about to have a conversation with my travel agent, Izzy. To book travel, uh, <laughs> or or so, so or to rare, listen to very either that, or to listen to the pitch to come to about work this um, for a presentation that we're going to do. So that's why I'm here. Oh yeah, oh, that's right. I forgot. I was actually here to listen to his pitch on share on my um, my timeshare. Go ahead, Dizzy. So um, you know, <laughs> we in State Farm. <laughs> We we in State Farm too. Oh, you're pulling out of California. <laughs> great, great, thanks. Hey, Izzy, you have you else. considered for your presentation today? Just bear with me. Interpretive dance. You got the eyes for it. <laughs> with ribbons. <laughs> he does have the eyebrows. You can talk with those things. Yeah, that, yeah. Tell a story without words. That could be done. You know, yeah, we I think it could be. Put your whole body into it. Well, spirit, spirit spirit well, we'll I, ha I have my, oh, you know, right. I have my diploma. So as you can see here from what, the, the in Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters, what is that a symbol? <laughs> Doesn't it look familiar? It looks like the, it is the Xavier Institute for Gifted Youngsters. <laughs> I just saw the X and was going to crack a joke on you, but no, that's what it is. Oh my god, that's the real deal. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I want to know about this nerdy collection hat. Cause that is rocking, bro. What's going on there? <laughs> hard hat. Hey, hey, look, hold up. I gotta do to him. Oh shit. Yep. <laughs> nice water bottle, bro. Make me smile. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you insist. <laughs> Who's bow to deny a man's smile? <laughs> Good morning. We got Wonder Woman here this morning. Hi. Hi. Did you, sleep in that outfit? Huh? Did you sleep in that outfit? Yeah, you got me. Yeah, I don't wear pants <laughs> when I sleep either. <laughs> don't wear pants, don't wear a shirt, anything else? <laughs> Any... He doesn't wear shoes either. Well, good morning. Um, but, but he keeps the sandals on. <laughs> yeah, it's flip flop. Is he put some respect on my feet? Flip flop. Oh, not, the chancletas. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know what that means, but I agree. It's chancletas. That's the right word. So a lot of people on. It's so early. Well, we get good turnout today. Dang. It's, it's the shirt. 
it's not early at all. You're just on the wrong side of the planet. It's late here. Yeah, I've already been up. Oh, it's hours. early, man. Just it hurts early. Spidey. He looks like he's about to break into someone's house and steal their comics. Yeah, but he told, us, <laughs> he, he told us it's only nine thirty. That means it's not late at all. It's like yeah, you get another four Maybe hours just getting late. started. Oh, it's 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 late when you're getting up at five a.m. to go to work. Come on. Oh, really? Do you know what time it is right now where I'm at? Oh boy, here no. we go. <laughs> it's four, it's four forty in the morning right now. What are you doing up your nutcase? <laughs> because <laughs> this guy over here, Mark, recruited me to co-host this show with him, so I get up every <laughs> fucking Friday morning. It happened yes. organically. He, he, let's be honest. He didn't recruit you. He blackmailed you. No, look. He has something on and you. So, he traded up. <laughs> Yeah, he traded up from Tyler. <laughs> yeah, I think he, he must pay you in um, beard wax, I reckon. Now that y'all mentioned that, I really miss Tyler. Yeah, sure, a while, but man. said no uh, one ever. No, it's been a while, man. In small doses, he's great. I love yeah, you, too, Tyler. I see him on Fridays, though. Yeah, yeah I'm glad show. I do. I'm glad I do. But he used to, you know, like, uh, over time, like... Uh, the people that have been on here longer, I, th- I heard him talking about it on Jig's Kingdoms live stream. Like, you see people come and go. And uh, it's not just people going, but just how much things change over time and how fast it changes. You know, like, you, you look forward to hanging out with certain people or talking with people. Then, like, Spidey used to be here every Friday morning. Now it's a treat. Now it's a treat to see his goatee grace us on Friday oh, morning. That's a goatee? Yeah, I, I, I just hard. cleaned up, so it's only hey. a little bit here now at the moment. You know, it's an Aussie. Uh, see, an Aussie sure. I wasn't quite sure what that was, but I wasn't sure it was a goatee. I mean, it's bike it's it's and sure, but yeah, it's because it's because Mad Spider's not allowed. Mad Spider's not allowed pets in his house, so that's the closest thing he can get. It's a chinchilla. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh well, Mark. Should we say hello to everybody? Well, it's time. It's time. All right, let's roll on up here to the top side. So, Run the room. Everybody. There you go. Hey, Scott, how you doing? Good He's morning. Lois and Clark last night. It's almost done with season yeah. three. Season three, it's not a chore, but it's definitely not up to the same par as one and two. Mm. What? Yeah, Dean Kane, man. That's definitely something. What is it, Bo? The first couple of seasons, like I love Smallville, but the first couple of seasons are a bit of a hard one. No, no, he's talking play. about Lois and Clark. Oh, yeah. sorry. Lois and Clark. Yeah, the Isn't it Lois? No, the, the Lois and Clark, the Dean Kane show you're talking about. Yeah, yeah Lois and Clark, Lois Clark. New Adventure. Yeah, that's Disneyland. what I thought you were talking yeah, about. Whatever it is, yeah. I read yeah. Lois and Clark, but I, for some reason it translated to Smallville for me. I don't know. Oh, why. I did. Very yeah, Smallville because you're because you're young. Two is just a rinse and repeat with the meteor freaks. Just what, what well, infecting yeah, season, superpower season did one, the kid yeah. have this week? I, I like yeah. Smallville. I love Smallville. Smallville was, was great, but it takes season three for it to get good. No. I never yeah, watched yeah. it. It's good, oh, especially it's this guy's loose lore. Season season seven is untouchable though. Oh, the man, Nocturnal uh, Miso, hello. I hated Clark in that show. I always agreed with Lex. Lex was the man hey, of that show. Look who's here. We, we already talked to him. So. What's going on, Jeremy? He likes boobs. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> there you go. The collecting those stirs. Chiming in there. Android was created by Android was YouTube Create, so I live with that. Okay, well, yeah, well, yeah, Android, Google, yeah. YouTube, yeah, YouTube Creates is fantastic. That's what I used to make the uh, the vlog that I put out every week. It's amazing. I like yeah, it. I like to slow down on the phone. And stuff. Well, good morning there, Hydrus ninety six. Just got home from the night shift. Is that some cool way to remember a Hydra? I don't know. There's multiple, there's, you know, sometimes you do your own thing. <laughs> Steven C., good morning. Hey, Steven. Flash Ray Video joining us this morning. Good morning. Of course, <laughs> Click on Comics says that Omnibo <laughs> is too chill this morning. Sorry, mate. I'll try to pump it up. But I'm, I'm nervous around new people sometimes. I mean, I've got a legit superhero next to me. I've got the thief on the other side. I've got a dude with the cool freaking hat over there. And then I've got the guy that I you know you did that in the opposite direction. We I know that was even more hilarious. That's, that's because he's in Australia, so in Australia he has his he has his mirror boat on. <laughs> Brother John, Jim Henson made Izzy's eyebrows. 
I guess because they're animated, or I don't know. Oh and boy! Even that, it can only raise one. Yeah, it can only really raise one. Sorry. One's all you need. That's true. Ask the rock. Canadian survivalist. <laughs> Hello. What is that? Gary Quinn, the officially unofficial geek, is here. Good morning, y'all. Question. Does Madam just wake up sometimes and think, I want to be Wonder Woman today and do it? It would be really cool if she did. That's what I do. Maybe she's Wonder Woman every day. Yeah, that's what I was about I to mean, say. It's like she just wakes up, she is Wonder I've seen, Woman. I've seen her as Catwoman someday. So she does swerve. She does swerve. Well, do you actually have to put on the clothes, or do you just spin around really I fast? I spin around first. Yeah. Okay, and when cool. that doesn't work, then I have to put on the clothes. But when you spin, <laughs> when you spin around, it's like a big giant star that comes behind you, right? And it makes that sound like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually um this morning I had a dilemma because I was like, I have all these cosplays, right? And I want to, you know, I, I I enjoy dressing up. Um, and I was like, hmm, I'll be a, I think I'll dress up to this morning. And I was like, I should be a DC girl, right? So I was looking up all the DC girls, right? Uh, For you, Mark, that's right. Yeah. And, and I was like, I was surprised Harley Quinn is a DC girl, I guess not. But then I was like, I could be Harley Quinn. I was just Poison Ivy. And I was like, oh, Wonder Woman's a fan favorite. It's crazy how similar our mornings were. <laughs> 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 it's true. I, <laughs> I want to oh, see Beckerman right. spin around. <laughs> I, no, I woke up this morning and it's like I want to be a DC girl. <laughs> I thought I'd be DC today. Yeah. So I guess I, 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 I'm just lucky I have options. Just uh, sure. there? Do you ever do any competitions at cons or anything? No, but Mark, I am going to go to a con in um in July, and be that new my new cosplay girl, and I, I'm going to be on some cosplay discussion panel, nice. then, and uh, a couple other stuff. Well, if you do get to make it to Heroes Con, you know, like we you've heard us all talk about it, how it's very comic book based, you know, right. like there's still cosplayers there, but the the volume of cosplayers I'm sure pales in comparison to other cons that are kind of it does. Shifted and geared more toward like pop culture versus actual comic books, but there's still a good number, like what, like yeah. beyond zero, like way beyond zero, you know. And they do a cosplay competition stuff. So if you are lucky enough to come to Heroes, go ahead and plant that seed that that would be a good, a good first, uh, first competition. I love that idea. Thank you, Mark. In fact, Actually, I was on. They have a I competition on- there. I was on yeah, Journey Stream yesterday, and I saw Jiggs. And Jiggs, who fell asleep during the stream, um, but <laughs> before he fell asleep, he did say he was going to he was going to um, buy someone's gift, one-way plane ticket from anywhere in the world ticket to, con- to Heroes Con and, and the buy A-Cast. their ticket. Yeah. Well. Yes, and so I was very alert when he said that because I was like, "Hey, I could use that." <laughs> Yes. Yeah, you know who wasn't I'll need a plane ticket. I don't think the hotel. I thought you have a car. Me? No, Jeremy said he doesn't need a plane ticket. He just needs a hotel. Yeah, I need a hotel room. You guys don't know each other. You guys can just room up with each other. No, you just get a spritz bottle, put some water in it before you leave the house, and sleep in your car. Just use that as your shower. It's yeah, fresh enough in the morning. You don't go to sleep the whole time. You go. You need a. You need a car to sleep in. Okay, Rockefeller. You go to the hotel's <laughs> pool to shower. Yes, it has chlorine. Yeah, it has chlorine in it, but that's okay. It's all right. <laughs> Wear the glasses, and no one cares about how your eyes. And you have this distinct smell. And then you just do that every day, and then it's just like being in a regular con. Hell, just put a. You don't even need just to have a pass to get in the. You don't even need a pass to get in the con. Just grab your tool belt, dress like that, come walk walk right in the door like, you're, <laughs> yeah. like you know what you're doing, like you're on your way to go fix something. Mm-hmm. And f- wear, yeah, uh, wear your the, bright you yellow jacket in, and be like, I'm just you, here to fix the lights. When you get to the uh, the registration right in the front door and you ask for the uh, where's the power supply box, they're going to point you in the direction of Sheldon, who <laughs> will be on the floor. He won't be. He'll be past the ticket uh, threshold. You'll be good. You'll be good. And last, we forgot to say hello to AR, 
not last but not least, he was talking about wearing his faded Fantastic Four shirt, so he's also cosplaying this morning. Funny enough, I almost grabbed my henchman shirt, which would have made me cosplaying too. Yeah. Which, of course, you can grab a henchman shirt, fatstacksmerch.com, with all proceeds benefiting comics curing cancer. So what I shirt are you wearing to today, cosplay loosely there. I, I am for you wearing your favorite color, that nice dark green. Uh, this is That's the 20. Green? It is a dark green, yes. That's the one uh, I got too. Yeah. The comics curing cancer. This is the 2023 special edition shirt. It's no longer available. Uh, I'm working currently on the 2024 shirt. And Ooh. you'll know when they're posted by checking out comics curing cancer on Instagram. The <laughs> donation link is live. The campaign is live. You can follow uh, comics curing cancer. Know what we're doing in the most realist of time by uh, hanging out with us on live streams or. Checking out Comics Curing Cancer on Instagram. That QR code will take you right where you need to go. And we've been talking about Heroes Con, and of course, we'll be there this year. Booth number 1769. Hey, yo. But make sure you're there. We have some very, very cool stuff lined up. Special announcements coming soon. And remember, yeah. heroes aren't hard to find. It'll be, your, it'll be your only place where you'll be able to get the uh, Comics Curing Cancer magnet. Among other stuff that's coming, but anywho, that sounds that's right, guys. Spent hundred dollars <gasps> just so hello. There's Rob, and then there's a bunch of people you don't know. Hello, you hear my voice a lot. All, all of us gathered just to see you today. Can you believe Wonder Woman? Yeah, uh, look, Wonder Woman. They got my life on. See, how cool is that? <laughs> 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 wow, Mark, that post you did has uh, smoke coming right out my mouth. I know, I timed it perfectly. <laughs> it pops. I was trying to keep your identity discreet. <laughs> Pop Pop's watching at home. He's typing in the chat. He said, Good morning. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Good morning. Spidey, can you can you not bark when you're on the freaking show, man? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it just it just comes out. <laughs> it's the way it's the werewolf. It's the I werewolf think I heard in the burp earlier. This yeah, that was me as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all huge full of noises. <laughs> huge surprise. I knew Mike would say something. <laughs> I was like, I just heard someone belch. I'm like, okay. My favorite is when he used to do it, like he'd be eating on streams because obviously time difference and stuff. And then he'd belch and then turn his mic off. <laughs> <laughs> but my like, herbs, what is that? What was he eating? <laughs> oh, why? It was Magus. What else? Was there? <laughs> Always. My favorite was when Beck used to saw log. Oh, oh, that was good too. Oh, yeah. She actually asked. It's a bit. Uh, it's it's. There's a bit of a chill in the air tonight, and she's like, "Oh, you're just gonna you're gonna do it outside. It's a bit chilly." And I'm like, oh, "I'll do it outside for a little while. See how see how I go. If I go inside, so you, you may you may hear the log." You say well. You say it's a bit chilly, but let's be honest. How? What is I'm it? I'm guessing like 15? it's 57 degrees Fahrenheit. Where Spidey is. Please, That's my please use freedom units when describing your uh, temperature. It's a bit He's, chilly, but yet you eat chilies, and it I, makes you hot. I'll, I'll convert for them. Go ahead. What is it? Uh, let me have a look. Corrosion Does Australia Earth. use Celsius? Yes. Yeah. Most uh, of the world. It's 11 degrees. So it's 51. Oh, okay. that's close. That's you were really close, Mark. It's, I mean, it's cool, but you're right. It's just hoodie weather. I mean, what's up, Joe Dog? How are you, Warren? Going on Mark Specter Comics. Hello, hello. So, real quick, I need some uh, feedback because I only watch X Men '97 when it's good, and the way that I gauge that is by how the internet responds and acts on Wednesday, Thursday, and literally. And you no saw one, no reaction this week. Literally, no one in any group chats, any posts, any. The only thing that I've seen is X Men officially. <laughs> After the death of Magneto and Gambit via the intro showing different characters, basically. Uh, I don't know. It's not it's really. They don't even do that. That's just no. the and the only X-Men other thing I see is right. The only thing. Right. 
the only thing that I saw this week that came out of it was a, a meme talking about the uh, the Milky Way ghetto. Yeah, because um, so they went they went to so this, they went into space. They went to, but they didn't. It's not an X Men in space. It's a no. They're, it, they're it's Xavier. They go, yeah. They're picking up on Xavier and. But see, here we go. I think it was are. good. Not as good yeah. as last week, but it was all right. It was I've, a I've learned with my experience when someone says something was all right, it means it was bad. But we're just not that negative of people. It wasn't bad. It was good. No, it was good. It was good. It was it's good. just that we had yeah. such a freaking awesome episode. Yeah, it was. Five, five. It was and boring. Boring. three and four were boring as well. And but here's the thing: like I'm not knocking the show for that because even the original show it isn't like every episode is is a sended episode. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so there is significance with this episode because it goes back to Storm and Forge, but at the same time, it's it's. It's also visiting Xavier. The the PR Empire yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm just not there. watching it for the uh, the Storm and Forge stuff. I'm just. I just want to catch the. Uh, but there's a cool storm the episode scene. one, two, and five type stuff. No, you know what I mean? but there's a cool storm scene. I'll give you that. I'll give it that. I don't. Much. I don't care. And then of course there's, the episode there's a cool ends. Scene in everything. The the episode ends. This is not a spoiler, but this, the episode ends with. Xavier and Storm finding out what happened in Chanel. You said it's not a spoiler. Then literally but everybody finds out already. Like, <laughs> well, they find out. well, they find out. Well, they find out. Is anyone else pumped for the new Planet of the Apes movie coming out this week? Big time. It's, you're getting it this week. We're not getting it until Memorial Day. Oh, you're kidding. We, we, yeah. get it, we get it yesterday, I think, actually. Wow. We're not going to get it for like another month. Oh, what? Yeah. How does that make any sense? I don't care. I'm seeing it this weekend, mate. I'm all about it's those. Because of, it's because of holidays. This weekend, I am going to go see the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Yeah, I can't wait for that either. That looks awesome. I have tickets for it on Sunday. Yeah. That does look fun. Has that, um, it has that, um, what, what's the Quentin Tarantino movie? The Glorious, Glorious Bastards. Glorious Bastards. this one. Yeah. So that should be fun. So yeah, no, I'm, that's what I'm gonna go see. But Planet of the Apes, I don't know. I haven't gotten super into any of them since the originals. Well, this okay. one's going back to the way it really was. I know. I've seen. Yeah. I've seen. I've seen the trailers that kind of teasing it. I think that, and I think that's really cool. But at the same time, I'm just kind of like, well, they, they it did, doesn't they sing did. to me the quite the same way. I'm kind of like, maybe I've grown old. They added a they added a like a a trailer really not a trailer but a scene where two of the apes are talking two of the apes are talking and they said well the humans don't speak they they lost I know, their I saw that. and and it, you see the one ape he just like when she starts speaking yeah, at Ron like, Pearl, Ron Perlman looked like he's playing Zaya as his character all yeah night. yeah I've I've loved the the remake era of the ape stuff they've all been fantastic and I'm excited to keep it going the original ones were so good like all of them. Great franchise. Oh, you know it's an epic fail that Transformers movie. Ugh. Oh, um, you see that trailer? I oh, disagree. It's, no, it's awful. It looks what bad. is with what is with the Megatron in that one? Like everyone's bitching about Chris Hemsworth as the voice, but I'm looking at that Megatron going, what is that? No, it's it's it looks bad. It's the, the Transformers have been minionized in this movie. That's what it looks like. It's, it's not you're not, oh, I, you're thought not it was, I thought it was a kid's not, movie. It is, is definitely a kid's yeah, movie. Yeah, I was gonna say it, I don't think that you're the target audience. Okay. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Let me go ahead and preface this because I, I would normally be on like the pitchfork line about something like this too, but this Transformers one does not speed up or slow down. The next installment in the adults Transformers movies. No, Rise of the no. Beast was the last one. They've they've confirmed twice over that Transformer GI Joe is next summer. Yeah, like that's that a exciting. year away. This is just a, a random one for the kids. So you're saying uh, there's it's next summer that they're planning to have this thing released? It's supposed to be geared for next summer release. Yeah, Rise of the Beast was last summer. This one's yes. they're not yeah, that seems a little too fast. Transformers. It's cold. No, you say if it's next summer, then that's a full year. <laughs> Two years since the last one. You yeah, know when they yeah, made the last one when they were the already planned on it? But they, I ain't, I ain't talking the about, stop, stop for a second, man. I ain't talking about <laughs> what they just announced at Cinecon. They like I was talking about how they already announced this 
last February. The the producer yeah. was already saying last February that we're making, of course, we're making Transformers Joe shooting for summer 2025. The Cinecon announcement is not some starting point announcement. They announced this movie at the end of the last movie that they were doing this. And then they confirmed it and the date they're shooting for in February. Cinecon is just a presentation thing of things to come with no specific starting or ending point. That's just, I don't know why it's just now catching the traction, but they've been working on this. Yeah, this is the, this Transformers one is just to sell some toys. Yeah. Yeah. As absolutely. Opposed to, as opposed to selling collectibles. Now they did. They did say this will be, uh, despite it being geared for kids and everything. They're paying attention to canon, and this will be canon to their current universe. That's where I worry about. I don't. We're getting the quintessent. We're getting like Optimus, like back when he's Orion. Like I have to watch kids' movies, and I hate most of them. I get to watch. I get to watch this kids' movie. Yeah. I go to the theater to see Paw Patrol movies, my dude. Hey, I've done that. <laughs> My kids Mark, already reached that age. So I don't have to worry about that anymore, but I've done that too. I know what you're talking about. Mark, I think you need to um, tweak your speakers just a little bit. All right. Now. How's it sound? We'll see when you start talking loud again because it was, it was, um, buzzing. It was just, yeah. Staticky. The, uh, the gain on the bottom of my mic gets bumped every now and then. It's just a rotating thing. It's still there. No. Um, let me see how I'm doing the settings. Yeah, no, I know. And this one, I hadn't heard it in a long time, but it was back. I was like, oh. Anywho. Oh, look. One of the woman's in the invisible jet right now. <laughs> no, she's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to, and to this point, like, the Transformer stuff, they've always had running shows, like, like as, as recent as now. Like, running TV shows so that they can continue the toy sales and everything else. It's just... I think people just don't pay attention to how much they actually do until it's like a theatrical release because they're always doing stuff. Yeah, a whole lot. Yeah. But I get it's not going to be like a lot of people are probably excited for it from the announcement with us not knowing what it is and they get their excitement up and then they release the trailer and like, psych, it's for the kids. I <laughs> <laughs> they, they bait and switched everybody with that for sure. Psych. For the kids. <laughs> I, I was a little shocked this morning when I saw your post, Mark. And I didn't realize that the Rebel Moon, whatever second half, was already out. The Scar Giver came out. I, I, yeah. I completely missed that that was that that was released. Yeah. Yeah. It's because I, I didn't it. promote it. And, and it came out like yesterday. I guess I, I guess I, I guess I don't watch enough, the end now. I don't watch enough Netflix. I guess. Um, so I don't. I didn't see their own commercials. So I've been too. I've been too caught up with you know watching. You know, um, Dharma documentaries. No, Shogun. Shogun. And, uh, I, knew it was oh, I thought you were going to say porn. Oh, of course. <laughs> Shogun. Not in Texas, and, uh, you won't be. The only show, slabs, the only things. Bad Batch. No, 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 and, that, that's uh, show buns. Trying to force, 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 force myself to watch watch uh, X Men ninety seven. Um, what now? Force, attack like that. Yeah, it is for me. Okay, I didn't grow up on that show. I don't. I'm not an X Men guy. It has very little appeal to me, but I watch it because I know people are going to discuss it. So yeah. So with Rebel Moon, like I, you know, I'm, like I, I push stuff that I'm excited about because I want people to watch it so I can talk with them about it and all this and that. Uh, for Rebel Moon Part Two, my stance has since the first one has firmly been that I'm not watching it. I'm I'm waiting till summer when they release the actual film that he made because they took they took eight hours. They took a TV show worth length of content the film made to create this entire story and edited it down to two separate two hour movies. So why would I watch like a glorified trailer for something and know who lives, know who dies, see battle scenes instead of just waiting and watching the full length movie. It's like, it, it makes no sense. He even stated in an interview that part one, that doesn't even represent the first half of the movie that he actually made. It's, it's completely different because it's edited down. So my question is this. Why is it whenever we get something of Zack Snyder that always has to be like a director's version of it? Why can't it just be this is the movie and that's that? What's the deal with Zack Snyder's movies that they always have to cut it down? He films You're asking them the wrong too, person. Because he films them for too long. But it's like, it's like the case with almost every movie he has. Especially the most recent ones. 
Tate, I agree. I didn't think that it was as awful as a lot of people made it out to be. It wasn't. It wasn't. It was by no stretch of the imaginations. Uh, the even the second or the, not even probably the third best Indiana Jones. But it was. De- but I definitely didn't hate on Dial of Destiny. Yeah, it was was, odd. yeah. It was. De- I thought it was an improvement over Crystal Skull, but I know other people like Mark disagree. But that's okay. It was the movie. We it wasn't. Agree. It wasn't. It was. It wasn't the. Well, yes, yeah, I've seen a lot worse. That's for sure. Madam Whip. I know. I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see here. What else we got going on? Let's start. Um, I feel, oh, Voltron. Let's see. Why do people? Oops, was this? I almost, I almost accidentally put Carrie in timeout, and I did not. I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> why? Do, why do people have to compare Snyder stuff to other stuff? Is it what he's asking? No, that's not what he's asking. Yeah, no, no. He was talking about like the um, the need to make such long movies. Mm-hmm. I guess. I just think. He, I just think he's gotten that rep. Since Justice League, that's all. So now people expect a Snyder cut for everything. That's but he's all. been doing. He's been no. He did a. There's a Snyder cut for for Watchmen. So he's been doing it since oh, Watchmen. Actually, actually, yeah, you you're right there. That's a good. He's point. been doing it forever. <laughs> this that's he's the one director I know that always has his cut. But I'm like, it's your movie. <laughs> well, the director directs, but they're not the one who's in the edit, no, when the comes, editing. No, but when it comes when it comes to his property, you know, like Sucker Punch or Rebel Moon, that even why are there director's cuts of those? Because they're not the one who's cutting the film and editing it. But it's there. And movie. so so no, look, if you shoot X amount of footage and somebody else comes in and they cut it down in the way that they edit it, it can change the yeah, presentation. And how the movie is, so the, and it doesn't. It, even though it was the director who shot all the stuff and yeah, lined up stuff, it may not be the same movie that they envisioned. So the director's cut is then going around and go, okay, what's what was your vision? Show then us this, be, right? Then he needs to hire good editors. <laughs> well, sometimes it's done by the studio. The directors don't necessarily have a say in that. Sometimes, yeah. you no, know, like I get it with the the Supermans, the Justice League. I get it with those. Those I get it. Those are all you know studio executives. I didn't even know that girl from Sucker Punch was Australian. I just found that out like a few weeks ago. Emily Browning. Yeah, I was watching an Aussie show on one of our Aussies, on one of our Aussie, <laughs> and she's the main lead in it. I'm like, why is she pretending to be Australian? But she was. And you know she sings as well, right? No, I did not know that either. You watched Sucker Punch, the opening scene with the abusive father and watching her get taken. It's playing to a rendition of Sweet Dreams that she's singing. Fair enough. That's how Snyder found her, through audio auditions. Yeah, the story was a little... Boy, watch the, uh, the the classic Snyder talk here, but watch the uh, extended cut. That's now, what we were just talking about, though. It was like yeah. the, the cuts. So with like, the Netflix thing, it is a little different. So this is a Netflix thing, not a Snyder thing. They gave him carte blanche, and he made eight hours worth of film. It's up to them how they release it. They can release it as TV show. They can release it in parts. But what they wanted to do, just because they they paid for Zack Snyder, was get some legs from it. So they decided after it was made and finished, let's re- let's release it in two parts and make PG thirteen parts of it since it's an R rated film. And instead of releasing the Zack Snyder one first and then those second, they did the parts first. You know, I do a little weekend editing, Mark. I just recently took six minutes out of Goodfellas. <laughs> I just heard that you just took out a bunch of Goodfellas. What? Was it the yeah, vice scene? Minutes. Was it the head in the vice scene? No, that's Casino. Oh, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, for this one, one hundred percent of it is is the uh, studio decision because of the era that Zack Snyder comes from. It was an era of selling physical media, where your goal was to sell a movie ticket and then sell physical media, offering something that you didn't get in the theater. 
And uh, that and Zach was just good at it because, like someone pointed out, he's a long-winded director storyteller, mm -hmm. so he can give you that really easily. But it does create like the best director for that for that that circumstance where you want to watch it in the theater and then you want to see what more there is to it. And if anybody ever wants to play a game, Mark and I try to. Uh, work quotes exactly. from the other guys into <laughs> yeah. conversations as much as possible. Yeah, so if you ever want to play with us, like just let us know. Yeah, and, and to uh, Sucker Punch's point, a lot of people haven't seen that one, but there's in the director's cut, you realize what they took out was the context of the high rollers, like the entire like pivot scene that creates the bridge between the, uh, the illusion, the fantasy, and the reality is what they took out of it. It's absolutely wild. I enjoyed I Sucker Punch. I, I, know a lot of, I, know, I know a lot of people didn't, but I actually enjoyed it. Scott Glenn was awesome. The worst man on YouTube is here. Simple Simon. <laughs> hey, Simon. Brian LCS. Hey, he's my favorite Simon from Australia. Coco's here. Coco. Ugh. Does anybody, Does anybody Bro, want to no. punch out and come back in? Because I'm hearing the buzzing. I don't know if it's coming from mine or honestly, I think it's coming from Madam. It it's whenever she's on live streams, honestly. I watch a lot of YouTube and I'm I've identified it. Are you being serious right now? I'm being dead serious. Are you being serious right now? Okay, so I just muted her and uh yeah, it did, it did take the buzz. Yeah, <laughs> it took care of it. It's the Madam Blaster uh, static. I wasn't gonna call oh. her out. Wait, no. no, he just no. unmuted her. And I, I do, yeah, yeah, I I'm right. Yeah, her. okay. It Madam. is what it is. Ah. Madam, I, I here's what you go. Sorry. No, 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 no. Hold on. You don't no. have to leave. Listen here's to the you... audio guy here. Do you, you can do one. You can do a couple different things. Okay. One is you can try turning the volume down on the speakers. Two is you can <laughs> turn them a little, turn them away from the more angled away from the microphone, so that so that way they're not near the microphone. Or three, you put on a set of cans. Mm. You mean the Bluetooth, the audio, the um, AirPods? Just head, headphones in general. Yeah. Is what to, but I don't hear so, you, so you're not I, using I, the speakers. I just got some. I turn. I just turned the volume down. Does that help? Yeah, I'm not hearing buzzing already. Because I, now I can't hear you guys at all, though. So. Oh well, that's. <laughs> Carrie, wow, well, he's done the research. You can you can move the speaker away. I really have. Like, I, I watch way more now. YouTube than anyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can move the speaker further away from the microphone and have it up, but it's fine. Because what, what it is? I'm on my phone. Oh, <laughs> ah, okay, that explains a lot. It's a um, okay. I, I yeah, I'm, you, I'm yeah, not hearing the buzz anymore work. since you just tapped the volume down just a hair. I'm. It it's sounds a phone fine rock. to me. Not, you know what? It's I'm sorry. Buzzing. I'm not used to everybody having using everything on their phone. No more buzzing. I, I love Rob. He goes no. from like super techie to grandpa <laughs> Simpson like that on a dime. I think I have God, AirPods. I think God I have damn it! No, it's already fixed. Well, I don't. I don't hear it. Yeah, it's but. a lot better now. Whatever you did with your volume. I really feel bad. I'm sorry. No, it's no, not. you're good. I wasn't. I only called it out because of the, because I I don't know. You're because, a stalker, you're you got it. We'll say because, you don't because have Mark was because Mark was willing to fall on the sword, even though it wasn't him. <laughs> yeah, I was just I just in, in, assumed it was him because a I, I heard it more when he was excited talking, and b it's happened in the past. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Rob is my uh, audio guy. As a matter of fact, I owe him the checks in the mail, Rob. Yeah, but, uh, get here eventually. John is in the chat. Atlanta, we want to so. say hey to him. Uh, we didn't we didn't dive into Rebel Moon Talk other than say that. Uh, we didn't watch it. I'm waiting for the, the the full extended cut, the actual movie to release. I'm not ruining it by watching a two hour long trailer. So, yeah, yeah, we have to talk about other things coming out. Yeah, I mean, maybe Mark, I will get that check when you get your Christmas card. Yeah, <laughs> Atlanta Post Office. At least not me Well, as as we heard for even from our uh, great. Postmaster General was before Congress this uh, or Senate this uh, this week saying, "Yeah, we hope we can fix it." Was he bitching about stamp prices? No, 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 no. He was there to explain and answer for the horrible on-time delivery rate coming out of Atlanta and how because the senators were calling him out, congressmen 
and everything because people were getting you know medications and stuff were coming like late or there was a whole bunch of veterans that had uh, tests, you know samples that were sent through the mail for testing that had gone bad and so they weren't able to get their uh, medical tests done and such and uh he just basically said yeah i hope that we can fix it these wow. things are important and we need to fix them Freaking the what happened, brother? The postmaster. Oh, sorry. Am I the only one who thinks the postmaster general has facial hair like Rob? I just picture it in my head. I just, I picture no, not no. I, this is this at, is at a, a monocle. Uh, well, maybe the monocle because he is a Donald Trump. But, uh, I, I picture him like Jeff Ross, the comedian. I still, I still oh, with the uh, with the get up, yeah. <laughs> no, like general he's he's the word dress like Gaddafi or something one day and. Prince, the name. <laughs> You're just describing the Monopoly guy, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, no. He, he has no well, facial hair, but he is bald. Glasses. He's got yeah, a monocle. We, we always pictured him with a monocle, but wasn't that a Mandela effect thing? Yeah, yeah it does, he doesn't have a monocle. No, he had a monocle, but that it's was Mr. before uh, the, Mr. It, the New World Order glitched the Matrix we live in. So <laughs> they took away his monocle. He got lazy eye surgery. That's how it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, he fin he finally best. got those railroads and could afford the surgery. He absolutely yeah. did at one point because I'm looking at some old versions of him like from the chance card and stuff. Drawings. There you go. Thank you very much. No Mandela effect here, boy. <laughs> Man, I just read Absolute Power is going to be 15 issues. RP my bank account. I've read the Absolute Power lead-in already, and I think you'll be happy with it. I don't think the main body of Absolute Power that's written by Mark Wade mm -hmm. and illustrated by Dan Mora is going to be 15 issues, but I think when you include, when you put the event together, it might be. 15 issues would run that that over a year versus a summer event. They're kind of out of that format right now. This is our first, first trip back to a proper summer event since 2019, really. All right. There you go. But uh, yeah, I don't have the check on, right cool. here. Left it in the back. There we go. In including time. Uh, yeah, that's not that's not Family bad. Gang. That's super duper light, to be honest with you. I'll see y'all later. I'm gonna. Oh, now the stream's gonna go stuff. downhill. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, now you're on your own for figuring out. Uh, Hold on, Becker. That sound come from. Becker, how do you feel about Mark Wade and Dan Mora ushering in an event where Amanda Waller is the big bad guy? You can uh, maybe call me and I'll tell you about it. All right, I'll talk to you in a little bit. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I haven't even picked up my books this week. Come on, bro. <laughs> it's Friday. <laughs> I'm always amazed how us comic nerds manage to get beautiful women on our favorite YouTuber channel. <laughs> I say the same yeah. thing about Ross's yeah. beard. You know how we do that? We invite them. <laughs> what is everybody currently reading? I'm currently reading the internet. Oh, wait. I mean, just, I, just read, uh, the new, I just read the new issue of Ghost Rider. You know, we have the hood is the host of the Spirit of Vengeance right now. Issue 2 dropped this week. I just read that this morning. Uh, mm -hmm. I got this week's... Most of this week's stuff I haven't read yet just because of my schedule. Today is it. Today's like day one of like my actual uh, break now that Masters run is over. That's why I'm wearing the flamingos early. It puts me in the right headspace to relax. I've only had three books to pick up this week, really. I haven't had night. Were they great shows? No, I didn't have I didn't pick up any there was no ratios for me to pick up. The only one I would have picked up would have been um Miles Morales, but my shop didn't have any. But I was able to pick one up. Uh actually Derek because Derek Chu did the cover, so I was able to go directly to his website and it was like a reasonable price versus like everywhere else online and eBay. So I was like, Okay, I'll let me pick up that ratio, but it was that Nightwing and um I don't even remember what the third book was. Are you reading? Are you pulling Wonder Woman right now? I'm not saying that because Madam's there, but it's just a top book on my stack, and it's. I'm not like I'm not the biggest Wonder Woman fan. I enjoy her in book book, but it's it's not my favorite book, and I say this all the time. It's not my favorite book that comes out, but it is definitely the best book coming out of any publisher right now. 
No, I don't read um, most. You know, DC. I really want to pick up Batman, Detective Comics, Nightwing. Yeah. Yeah, that so like when it comes and Batman to and Robin. Right now, I've been picking up Batman and Robin because I've actually been enjoying it. It's been fun. Yeah, uh, Simone de Mayo is still doing the art. I don't pay attention to that. Is it anime wild looking? I don't but not like a classic anime style. Like I, I it's, love. Simone it's de not Mayo been dis- it. it's not been distracting. Yeah, is it? Has it been the same artist all the way through? I can't even tell you that. Okay, fine. Then be that way. I'm sorry. Keep your secrets. I'm sorry. Keep your secrets. <laughs> Which book is it again? Batman and Robin. Batman, Batman and Robin. Robin with Joshua Williamson and Simone de Mayo, but I don't know because like they have that classic get a get a badass. Carrie, order. Carrie is answering for me. She says, "Yep," and it's Simone de Mayo. There we go. Simone de Mayo is phenomenal. Very unique. Oh, morning, uh, works Shack. great with sci-fi stuff. Like uh, Simone did. We only find them when they're dead. With uh, who was it that did Immortal Hulk? Al Ewing. Yeah, Al Ewing, and that was amazing. I first discovered Simone DeMeo because I'm a Power Ranger fan, so Simone cut his teeth on the Beyond the Grid story that was like right after the Shattered Grid event. It was, it was You're like, reading Mojo Loser Rangers? No, I'm reading Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I just discovered that title the other day. You've never heard of Power Rangers before? Not Power Rangers, the Loser Rangers. Is that a real thing? <laughs> A real thing, yeah. It's like gone for quite a few issues now. I didn't did not even know. Yeah. The immortal one is entered the chat. What is going on, Biggie? Link is incoming in case you want to hop on, brother. I like saying brother when I talk to him. He reminds me of Paul Cogan. <laughs> brother. It's coming your way, brother. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, exactly. The interplay with father and son has been more has been fun and I like some of the stuff back and forth with Robin and Flatline. So, do they have the uh, Damien's in school angle still going? Yep. Matter Most fact, importantly, matter do fact, they Flatline's use, now going to school with him. <laughs> do they still use edit? Have they used editor notes to kind of timestamp when this story is taking place? Not that I recall, but if you run into one, let me know. I'm curious. Yeah, I mean, it's, def- it's definitely not in the middle of the current Batman continuity, but and that's fine. I, I'm happy with that. So, I do need to read. Oh man, I tell you, this is the one. That, where is it? Is it here? This is the one I'm. I'm. I need to find the time to read. Was this uh, steampunk Battlestar Galactica, 1880? Oh. This is what I'm. I'm here. I'll make it big for Sam. I mean, no, no, that was a thing. Yeah, look at that. Steampunk Battlestar Galactica, 1880. Hmm. What company did it? Um, let me put this back here. Like this IDW was. My goodness, why is it so? Oh, dynamite! Dynamite! Oh, okay. Nice. This is a, this is the trade collects volumes or issues one through six. That's a cool concept. It's like the future, but not. It's it's like yeah, like steampunk. What is it? Steampunk Battlestar Galactica, eighteen eighty. Well, let me make you bigger. I want to see what some of that design looks like. Looks like Mister Freeze up there. It looks like and cyborg. Cyborg, yeah. Robot man. So, there he is. Yep. There's some. Let me get you some of the art inside here. The immortal one. What's that? Mm-hmm. So, so it's have, really loud where I'm at. I'm gonna have to head off because I interrupted a movie to come on here. And what I'm movie? Getting, um. I'm a bit. Uh. Oh my god! I've gone blank at the title. Caught you in your lie. Caught you in the lie. Got him. <laughs> no, it's got that um, Sydney Sweeney in it. Um, oh, I, I, we should let you go then. On Amazon. Yeah. Oh, Sydney that's Sweeney stupid everything. love story rom com crap. No, 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 no. It's a thriller. It's it's very like Black Swan, uh, where she's like trying to make the best of something. And Speaking she's like of a Sydney of Sweeney and Black Swan. Rumors and rumblings saying that she could be the next black cat, that she's in talks with uh, MCU. Have to look somebody to, look to join the MCU. I would take her out of that and put her... 
I, I said this on Wednesday. I think she should be, she'll be a perfect power girl. Why? Because of her assets. <laughs> Is it called Pretty Things, Bo? No, um, here we go. Immaculate. Immaculate. Oh, that's the one with the nun, right? Hey? That's where she's like a nun? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's not it. Sorry. Fucking hell. What Scotty, watch Amazing Spider Man 2. Nocturne. Nocturne. Sorry, I picked the wrong film. That's the one we're watching. Nocturne. Nocturne. Got you. Yeah, it's a Bloom. It's a Bloomhouse movie. Yeah. I'm catching a few lies during this conversation. Got oh, it. shut the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's what happens when you talk to Australia. Den of thieves and yeah. There is there is one thing I want to ask before before I do go. Criminal <laughs> Island. Are anyone Seinfeld fans? No. No. Uh, we have no. Right here. Man, you got the last episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm just happened this week, and if you're a Seinfeld fan, you've got to watch that because they fully like like do the ending there. Um, you know what? None of you care. I'm going. Bye bye. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you hopping on, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then come back later because if it's anything like Mad Spidey streams, you'll be here in about five hours. So I'll come back. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> You're so kind-hearted, people. Well, what are you gonna do? Ah. <laughs> You know, uh, I watched. I watched. A, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Cool. Uh, I watched a fascinating video last night. It's, uh, have y'all ever heard of Brian McKay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Beyond Wednesdays. Brian's yeah. awesome. Beyond Wednesday. Yeah. So, did y'all watch his show? Actually, let me start from the beginning. Okay. So, my boy GT Key left a comment in my chat saying hey biggie i left a comment on um something 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 uh five nights ago about the about the youtube drama and i'm like well, well that's fascinating i don't know what the hell he's talking about so i was watching my stream and the drama is to understand all of this because i don't think any of us are aware of that even well, I'm sorry. I, I'm, it's a story. It's I'm starting from the beginning because it gets to. Okay, uh, got you, got you. Okay. Um. So I went and watched the video from five days ago from the channel that GT Key referred to, and um, I don't I don't think I've ever seen much of the guy. I guess he was on Tales of the Flip Squad or some shit. Yeah, he's been, uh, he, he's been from like the 2017 to 2019 era. Like their content was real big. Like he was like with Simple yeah. Man and stuff like that, and had like the uh, the vlog page. So I'm scouring the video, wondering what what I have to do with it. Right? I'm like, what the fuck do I have to do with this? This makes no sense. <laughs> and uh, I see like one comment that says, uh, "Oh, Sticky Goose is the guy that." Um, he never he he deletes a bunch of comments and he uh, attacked Biggie Shack or some shit. And one of the comments that was it wasn't even on live chat. They have like shit scrolling on the bottom. So I'm just like, okay, that's I guess that's what I have to do with it. And then he was talking. They were talking about Sticky Goose. They were talking about CBCSI. I was just I was just wondering if y'all knew about it or seen it. I it was like new to news to me. And then of course Sticky Goose's video about the the five different types of YouTubers. And the the Brian McKay guy was like like uh, very into Sticky Goose. He was just like, "Oh, I love this Sticky Goose guy, man. This is really good video." And everybody in his comments would say, "Man, that guy is trash. What are you talking about? He's horrible." And uh, he likes uh, economics and comics. And Sticky Goose was like bagging on Bueller and Reggie collects, and it was just like, "What in the hell?" And it, and it seemed like every one of the five YouTubers that uh, Sticky Goose was talking, referring to, like that's that's the only type of people there are, were people that were like have some kind of angle of making money or some kind of um, some kind of shilling, some kind of shilling meaning like they have something to sell or they're uh, they're producing in some way uh, economically. 
It's like that's the only thing that his his little brain can process. So that that's what I got for you. I just start bringing it up. Interesting. I don't know. Well, that, 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 there you that, go. that raises the question. Is everybody on YouTube there for the money? Because there is no money in YouTube, really. Yeah. What's, no, what's that's money what I, in YouTube? I, I, a, well, he goes, yeah, if you're going to say there's only five different type of YouTubers, what about the people that just do it to just do it? Like, none of us are making money. Like, who the fuck's making money? Yeah, you know, even he even said like Comic Tom and Jim. I mean, there's the upper echelons of the millions of people or the, the channels that have uh, I don't even know their name. Comic Tropes and Yellow Flash. And then he talked about the drama channels, and then he talked about uh, new comic book day channels, and it just seemed like half educated on a lot of the shit, and not even really making a lot of sense to me, but uh, he left out I, like I the normal the normal fucking people that don't, you saw that too? Yeah, he, there's there's like there was, there was no section for people that just do it because they just want to collect comic books which for, is interesting. Or for, or for but that's how his brain to learn. He tried to, so he tried to yeah, generalize and put everybody into categories. So I, I, it looks like he, what is going on House of X Entertainment? What's up? Hope you guys are doing good today. Uh, yeah, I just looked at his channel. He made a video type five types of comic book YouTubers, which just gauging from the comments in the chat, a lot of the people that watch Sticky Goose are kind of scratching their head at this one. Like the what are you doing kind of comments and you're better than this kind of comments and kind of thing. Like, uh, like one person said cough, obvious grifter, cough. Like There's a lot of those kind of comments. But uh, yeah, me personally, I just don't, I think, engage not necessarily engaging in it because I mean, it gets brought up around me enough, but I don't understand the allure of dramatizing, hanging out on comic book, YouTube content. I don't understand. Yeah, I, I'm just waiting for Thoreau to torch his ass. Cause I, I, I thought about making a video on Thoreau, but I personally don't mind anybody on YouTube. I think everybody's okay. And it's all right. They can do whatever the hell they want. But to like, I've never seen anybody really go at Thoreau like that. So I'm, I'm kind of expecting Thoreau to like smoke his ass. But we'll oh, he see. mentioned he he mentioned channels by he name. Mention, in the video. Oh yeah, he mentioned about ten or twelve channels, and half of them made no sense. But you know, uh, there's only a few that might actually say something back to him. I might I might do a video because it was it was so stupid. So you said he mentioned Reggie as well because Reggie doesn't even YouTube anymore, does he? Yeah, he didn't know that. He didn't know Reggie's out. But that's the point. That's that's his dad pass. It's like Jerno's dad pass. Why are you bringing up Jerno? Like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy, bro? He's a maniac. That's, that's his mo. His mo is to take things at, and he only knows a certain little thing about it, and then he expands upon that little bit that he knows. So it sounds like he got like uh, he probably got. Like this is me just speculating. I I don't I don't have a problem with Sticky Goose because I don't see your mic is about in the air, Sticky Goose. Can barely hear you when you talk. But uh, I, I would venture to guess, judging from how he's hit conversations here recently, making the cringe ass content, that he probably saw some peak views from some of these cringe ass videos and That's decided exactly it. to. Uh, Double down. He's got, he's probably he's got views could, now. People are looking at his stuff now. But that's the per, that's the first problem. The first problem is entertaining it. So the best thing to do with someone like Sticky Goose is ignore him. Don't What's leave that? a comment. Don't do anything, and just ignore him. <laughs> yeah, that's going to work. Just, and no, it, it works. <laughs> he, he he it doesn't. Appears. It doesn't work because saying that, like saying that, is not incorrect. But that doesn't work is also in is correct. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> Like that isn't how that isn't how the internet works, bud. Well, the uh, algorithm... you can watch something just for pure uh, shock value, but you don't have to be a fan of it. Like uh, it was just weird how the Brian McKay guy was like, "Oh, I love this stuff," and he does the fucking well, uh, drama Brian shit refer- too. Was Brian referring to the five channels thing? Because he might, you know, Brian. Just because Brian has good takes on stuff doesn't mean he. Has to not like drama. He could enjoy drama talk too, you know. Yeah, no, yeah. He says he has a drama show every week. That was part of his drama show, I guess. Yeah. Like he doesn't. I don't know nothing about that guy. I barely know Sticky. Yeah, it's there just that, that, um, people liking drama. To be fair, Biggie, you you uh, do a lot of like community dialogue too, like whether it's positive or negative. Not saying, yeah, I do. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with I it. I do, like, but I don't. Are, 
You don't bash people. I don't want to. I definitely don't do that. I try to put my perspective on, like, my opinion from being here for a while and the way shit's going and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, like, I don't want anybody to get ran off or make them feel like they're doing anything wrong unless they really are. And yeah. this, this might be the first case where it's really true. Like, somebody's really doing something bad enough to where they need to get ran the fuck off. Like, I don't know. I'm, like, I'm, pretty- ran off. I'm with Marcus on this one. I ain't mad at Sicky. Let him do his thing. We ain't got to care. You, some people yeah. like there's some people out there that measure their success with the amount of haters that they have, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like, yeah, Sticky Goose is yeah. just he's monopolizing on the hate, on yeah. you know, because you're gonna get more views with with um, negative stuff. Yeah, and he exactly. just, he, angle, just he just gave free marketing to at least five channels. You said he named. Yeah. He, he just oh no! It. it was like it was like every group there was like three or four people. I got I'm gonna say one more thing before I go in the house, but okay. So the funny, <laughs> yeah. sorry the the fun the the funniest part of the video was uh, Jim Mint left a comment that got pinned, and it was uh, that's funny coming from a guy that has a background that looks the way it is because it looks just like Jim Mint with the omnis and the statues and the slab. So. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks, guys. We are Legion. See y'all later. Call Take back in if you want, man. We'll be here. Hi, baby. Look at that, Mr. Let's Wellborn. go. Let's, Let's go. Yes, picking up that Austin LeMay print and the, yeah. the comics curing cancer, which there are a few left. Hey, Kyle. Hi, hi. How's it going, dude? Uh, is Izzy? Hey, Kyle. What's up? I I tried I tried ignoring Mark and and he didn't go away. It does. No, no, work. that's it. Doesn't work. Mark. <laughs> Not with he's, me, he's like a I'll leech. Slide in, I'll slide in. He'll just stick me. on you. He'll he'll just stick on you and never he'll never leave. But it's a good leech. It's the kind we'll of have conversations with gifts. If you want to ignore me, <laughs> what I mean what I mean about ignoring someone is that don't feed into the hate. So whenever you you hit a whenever you hit a thumbs up or a thumbs down, you're feeding to it. Whenever you leave a comment, you're feeding to it. Yeah. YouTube likes that stuff. Yeah, Carrie, and I completely understand this sentiment. Maybe it's upsetting that we have these videos that seemingly bash each other, but oh my God, like welcome to the real world. Not to not like attacking your comment there, Carrie, but if people are so sensitive that that's not a content issue, that's the person being upset issue. Like like that like if something sucks, it sucks. What are you gonna do about it? Like how do you respond to it? How do you react to it? That's that's on you. Like any like that's on that's that's on the individual. Like we gotta gotta you know what I mean? You can't stop it. It ain't a, it ain't limited to YouTube, it ain't limited to anything. That's just that's just life. You only keep on nine of those big card oh, only nine of those Austin LeMay prints left benefiting comics curing cancer. The link there you can pick one J- up. Jigs gave me Jigs uh gifted me one of those. Yes, yeah, he, he bought three and then yeah. passed out. <laughs> well, if you if you thought if you were holding on, I waiting to pick one up, I get that. There's only nine <laughs> remaining, so they so you might want to make sure you order yours today. Get your nine today. We'll wait. Go ahead. I don't know about your Applebee's wall, Marcus, but all the Applebee's walls I've seen they have like the random photo of John Wayne. You have your random photo of John Wayne somewhere. <laughs> I'll have to go into the Applebee's to see because I don't think I ever remember seeing John Wayne in the Applebee's over here. <laughs> we, yeah, we, we, we mentioned it just a little bit ago. <laughs> Yo, it split the community, didn't it? <laughs> I'm excited for it as I get to watch a kid's movie that uh, I'm looking forward to watching. I probably, I, I think I'm going to skip this one. Uh, Stephanie, I'm like this close to buying you a phone stand and sending Thank you. It to you. <laughs> like, or, or I'm here, sorry, here, I have to make it worse. I have ADHD. <laughs> it makes me really fidgety. So I'm how's, the, how's this? How's this, madam? Why don't you sculpt one a phone stand? Wouldn't that be cool? No, I don't want to sculpt <laughs> a phone stand. You could do it like a hand and just how, have how hand. boring would that be? Ugh. <laughs> Straight lines. I hate straight lines. So, like, I have this one where you can literally just bend it into any shape that, that you want. You put it around your neck. Uh, that's I have put it around my neck. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have like a tripod, but it broke, and, and so now I just have the ring thing with the. Oh, with the whole I, got a, thing. I got an old charger, and it just works just fine. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although I don't use my. 
phone to YouTube. So there you are. There he goes again. Okay. Oh, instead, instead it holds up my post-its. And it, so I have them at my, at my ready. Whenever somebody wins something, I can label who wins it. Ah, okay, that makes sense. I got, I got this. Which is charging my phone. in any shape, you say. Cliff, <laughs> Cliff, Cliff, Cliff. Cliff. Where is Cliff anyway? He don't miss Cliff an came out of, yeah, he came out of nowhere yesterday. Well, Cliff does that. That's, that's the Cliff great. way. He was great. Cliff just pops out of nowhere. Well, that's right. That's right. Cliff is just like first, that makes him a fan. How, yeah. So, like the point that I made, really, the most important point that this Transformers One film in no way slows down or speeds up the next installment in the adult franchise. That one's still geared and aimed and targeted for next franchise. summer. I want to see that adult franchise Transformers. <laughs> well, when I say adult, I don't mean R. I know what you mean. Rob. Like, I like you're going to have an R fetishes. R-rated Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, this... I, I, you call I, it a I fetish, what, I call it a healthy appetite. But, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I agree. So what, my, my thing with it is I do understand and I will... I was shocked by the trailer as well because the way that like, and they never said it was or wasn't for kids, but the way it was like promoted, like Transformers One, we got Chris Hemsworth, we're doing Orion, we're doing all the, and like all the diehards got excited, you know, all the fans got excited, and then the trailer comes out like, yo, wait, this is just straight up a kids movie, yo, you just blindsided me, so I I, I get it, I completely get you it. Use I think the you use the upset. title of Transformers One. So it's trying to hone into your love for for G1, right? So people's love for yeah. G1. When you, yes, I think it is. They're trying to catch capitalize. I didn't even make that. that connection, but now I mean it. It, you're absolutely right. Right. So you're trying to capitalize on people's love of G1. And then when you see this and you see, how, first of all, how they look, it's not that it's just a kid's movie. It's just, it just, it feels like it was done. Did it's, you watch the trailer? I did. So you saw times. how they you saw how they look before they have the Matrix, and then Ugh, after, right? It's just, there's too much comedy in it. Oh, that, that well, that's a separate point now. Let's go back to the one you made before that. I agree. The <laughs> look the first, before I saw the trailer, I saw the shot of Orion and D sitting there next to each other. It's kind of relaxing. I'm like, yo, look at their faces, the way that their yeah. their armor is shaped. I'm like, oh, that's that's completely not what I was expecting. It did. They already look have kids Transformers. But that then, exist uh, already. But then, well, this is in the actual movie universe. But anyways, but then when I watched the trailer and I'm like, okay, this is, this is like, I knew it was a Ryan Pack stuff, but it didn't even dawn on me. Like they wanted a visual difference. And then you see in the trailer where they get, they get imbued with the matrix. And then you see how that changes their aesthetic to what's more familiar. But do they, but they, but it, by the, by that trailer, it looks like they all get a certain type of matrix. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I never they, heard of that before. They get the spark, you know, they, they were given the spark by the quintessent, the ability to transform their just sentient metal organisms. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they were like, we're not even able to transform. So you assume others were already able to. Yeah. And you know from reading the Marvel stuff, it isn't something that you just do from birth kind of thing. You do have to you have to grow into it, be able to do it kind of thing. So this but, this one I might have to skip. And I'm not a big fan. And at, at I'll the let same you know time, what goes on with it. Don't worry. The other the other the other thing about it is September is not a good month for movies. How dare you say something? I'm saying thing? that I'm saying that because it's true. Historically speaking, September is where they dump the bad movies. Is there a reasoning behind that? Because the summer movie season's over, and they just people are starting money. to go back to school and stuff like that. It's just hard to get people out of that. People are busy. Like yeah. it's in America, it's a busy time for folks. Yeah, it's just not that. That did not. When I saw September, it said to me. It also said, "I don't know about this." So we'll see. You know, I wish it. I wish it's good. So you're saying it's September said, said, "I don't know what you heard about me." <laughs> no, all right. I don't know where you're going. <laughs> I, I, the <laughs> reference went over my head too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In my head, it was completely different. Never mind. Moving on. <laughs> I'll go back to my own world where things. Honky dory. I feel like they're just making it to make a cartoon out of it. Everything like, like it feels like the same concept. Dory. We're making a movie so that this eventually becomes a a weekly cartoon series. So, uh, uh, yeah, I can I can definitely see that for sure. Because there's always been a running Transformer cartoon series for like 
a long, long time now. Yeah. So to be clear, in September 2017, the movie It came out, which is actually like a ridiculously successful film. Mm. I just went year by year okay. in the past. It took me to get to 2017 before one, one. Mm. notable film was in there. And there's other films that listed, like American Made with Tom Cruise came out, but that's not like the success story that it is or something. Wow. Yeah, where the real life story. It was, it, I remember. I remember it. I was yeah. that's, that's how far it is already. Been a few days since that movie came out. Yeah, it was cool. I enjoyed it. And I then, just watched, and then uh, I thought about the when I went from the movie God, thinking of the Oak Ridge Boys. Yeah, my baby, she's Oak American Ridge. made. Yeah. Let's see. We got geek out with Roscoe in the chat. Oh, that dude is amazing. Send in the link for my main yeah. man pots and pans. Let's get check in with him. What the hell was that? What was oh you just did oh. hearts people, and then it people, did people with iPhones have some weird I have magic thing. abilities. What the hell? <laughs> she puts them up. Mine doesn't do it. It's and a it's another iPhone. gimmick for people to go buy an iPhone. It's not an iPhone because I can't do it. It wouldn't be great if you could turn them off. <laughs> What's really sad is when you're at a family meeting talking about poor grandpa died and you accidentally put a thumbs up and fireworks oh, go off. Yeah, it's been spot on. Like this is this is an injection of pure cash into the franchise. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Even even with Rise of the Beasts coming out in the uh the legendary it's going to be yeah. down in history books as the year of flops like the biggest movies like where they just had so many films come out just flop after flop after flop no matter how good or bad they were everything under performance well, save, right? save for two movies yeah I'm even then more. transformers rise of the beast as a whole as like uh with the whole overview i'm sure did uh did people pretty well because of how much is tied in with transformers it's a successful franchise, even if you don't release films to boost the excitement. My favorite Transformers was Avengers Mech Strike. Mech Strike, yeah, the comic. That was dope. And then my actual favorite Transformers was uh, what was that King Grimlock series. Mm. That was very beautifully get, drawn. Get his origin. Yeah, I just I loved it for the art. I I haven't I don't know I fell off of Transformers when I was a kid and Beast Wars came out. You didn't think to check out the uh, current Energon Universe stuff that Daniel Warren Johnson is doing? I uh, no, I didn't know that that was a thing until you just Holy said potatoes. it. Potatoes, yeah. Daniel Warren Johnson is writing Transformers. We're only on like issue seven or eight, eight, mm -hmm. seven. We're only on issue seven. That's the guy who did uh, Murder Falcon, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. He, okay. he, he writes and draws the first six, and he's cool. going to continue writing uh, at least through 12, we know. But uh, was it, he or, was it in Jorge Jurassic Corona? League? Yeah. Well, no, no. He did the covers for Jurassic League so that okay. they could stamp his name on it. Juan Gedeon did Jurassic League, whose style is very reminiscent to uh, D Dub, but. They wanted. They needed some. They needed some name recognition to help push that series because yeah. Juan is kind of a newcomer. But Juan, Juan did his damn thing. It was. It was uh, if, fun you, book. if you accept the premise as something that you would be into, the book delivers. Juan is a cool dude. He keeps tagging me in his posts. You can't make him stop. No. Have you thought about a restraining order? No, he was, he I, 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 shopping at Roscoe, which that that threw me off with the bad Acetron thing being in the trailer. Like, so is this a kids' movie or not? Like, what are we doing? On Gideon, met him in person at a con, and then he just started tagging me and everything. Yeah, we were getting a storm today, and it's like uh, lightning and thundering pretty hard. It only took like three lightning bolts this to get very, very police firing. <laughs> Let's see. Not for me. I'm, very, I'm um, very pro thunderstorm. I love it when it does. It washes the pollen down and back, and I tend to have a decent a, day. Little thunderbolt and lightning. So, did anybody yeah. see the photo of Spawn and Batman? I did. I did. I was shocked to find out that this is actually happening. It's a DC animated film. What is it? Spawn Batman, the animated uh, film. Yeah, you know they did that one shot. 
here recently. I think they're leaning into that. Yep, moving on. Thanks. <laughs> Actually, they did the, the you, are they going to base it off the Frank Miller or are they going to base it off the one shot that they came out? That's the real question. I think it's going to be off the one shot just because it's more modern and it'll help people go back and like participate with that because there's plenty of issues still sitting around that's for sure yeah <laughs> unless the one in 1000 what was that <laughs> i never read to a power bomb holy Super potatoes oh so good so dude. so when it comes to dana warren johnson kyle you have two different kind of people people that will say murder falcon is his best work and people that'll say do a power bomb in his best work and the only way that those two were figured out is which one you read first, kind of thing. Okay. I read Murder Falcon. It was really yeah, good. I'm just saying that's how good do a power bomb is. Like it's it's amazing. So it looks like it started 2023 for his run. And then for do a power bomb, yeah. No, 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 Transformers. No, Transformers. No, yeah, Transformers I'm... last year. Do a power bomb was the year before that. It like started in 22 and ended in 23. I remember seven, it came out at the years. same time as uh, Crimson Cage, and I was reading Crimson Cage instead. Crimson Cage, I thought that was uh, no. I'm thinking Crimson Cage was already out. Uh, Hell is a squared circle was coming out at the same time was... as the Power Bomb from Aftershock. It was the oversized ones. So. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember there being three like wrestling books all at the same time. Yeah, because I was picking up Hell is a Squared Circle, and people were recommending me to. Uh, the Crimson Cage one that had come out not long before that, because I hadn't, okay. I still haven't read that one yet. I'm just gonna look at new releases. I'm having trouble finding the Transformers one. I get the T Dub says he gives the Eds to do a power bomb. Both it and Murder Falcon are great, but I think Falcon meanders on slightly too long. Interesting. Yeah. You go back uh, to extremities or space mullet, and you can see the meandering nature of some of his stories, and you can see how he's tightened up over time. So that's definitely a fair assessment. Taylor, have you, it, but Taylor, Taylor's see Crimson Cage. Stuff. Crimson Cage was like really dark. Yeah, who I forget who wrote that one. I don't remember. Oh, statue time. I'm making a stand out of clay now. Well, I just realized something too. I don't See? know why. I just there you go. Running. Done. But uh, you. you made a stand out of clay. <laughs> it See? seems so obvious now that you say it. <laughs> she was making the statue while the phone was on the statue. Like, okay, let me just get this. That's why we. Just, <laughs> that's why the phone kept moving. John Lee's. We were part John of, Lee's. We yeah. were part of the, the process. <laughs> It was very Shakespearean how it was written. <laughs> um, who did Assassination? That was a really good book too. Is that two words or one word? Well, you do ass ass. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Is it called Assassination or assassin two words? Two words. Two words. Okay. Yeah. Assassination. It was a uh, uh, Kyle Starks did it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I got distracted. I'm trying to find the Transformers. So who's not going to Heroes Con? Yeah, okay. Obviously. So we're going to have like a really sad stream together or something? <laughs> no, because you'll be uh, participating in the stream of those that are at Heroes Con. That's actually, I've thought about that. Like, dude, everybody is going to be like, I'm going to stream Heroes Con. I'm going to do. Mm. And I think, uh, I think what's going to happen is a lot of people are going to get there and get to be participating too much in the con to be doing it. We're going to be all streaming mm. at the same time. It's like, why no, no. one's on? Why is think, no one on the streams? Why I is think no one every, on the Because they're doing their own stream. I think everybody's going to want to, is what I'm saying. I know Chris, you know, the comic vet, he's going to get there and he's going to make a beeline trip. Like, I think his his priority number one is to just do the walkthrough because how he, he likes to post videos that Kanzi goes to of just walking every aisle kind of thing. Dude, Chip Gettler had a really good walkthrough stream. Well, this isn't a stream. Chris will film and like just put music to it, and he, like he's he's done that for a while. I know, like 
he'll probably do that again. So if you're not there and you just kind of want to get a like a good view of the layout and most of the all, if not just ridiculously most of the booths and everything, Chris tends to do that like first off, right off the bat. You know, that's just he does that for all the cons he goes to. Mm. But uh as far as live streaming them, Chip is the only person I know that successfully live streams Heroes Con or other places. Mm. That's when I realized how popular he was. He couldn't even like walk through aisles without people putting him on their shoulders and cheering like the end of Rudy. Wait, this is a Transformers book? This looks so good. I think I think that's why I've said I'll be hesitating to do an outback while like everybody's gonna be at heroes. I'm gonna be doing it by myself pretty much. No, oh, you could have the all Aussie version. Well, half the Aussies are gonna be over there. Well, that's true. Maybe you should be over here. Just come to Heroes Con, bro. Jesus. Yeah. Problem yeah, solved. No. I'm we reading gotta get Kyle some new wheels for his rollerblade so he can come to Heroes. Honestly, if, if you I were to jigs and you can put your name in, Mad Spidey. <laughs> I'm sure he would have no problem with an airfare from Australia. Mad Spidey's <laughs> airfare is not the issue. It's not the it's the worst, it's the absolute worst time of year for me to uh to take off so Got it. he was gonna go in lee's uh suitcase but it didn't work out yeah, lee no did. that'd be the other way around I, I would be putting him in his own suitcase and then i'll take his ticket <laughs> <laughs> and lee will get a video out of it yeah exactly So Mark, I, I, have, send... I have nothing I have nothing saved for spending money either, so that, that would be useless. When did Transformers go to Skybound? With Transformers issue number one. So that's the thing with Daniel Warren Johnson. So uh IDW dropped the bag and Image came in like they were waiting their whole life and bought the IP for Transformers and G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe has continued its numbering and just switched to Image. And issue 301 is the first issue at Image, continuing the story and even brought back Larry Hama. So what Skybound has done is created an entire Transformers universe under Image, under Skybound, that includes Transformers and G.I. Joe. Joshua Williamson is writing Duke and Cobra Commander, which are uh -huh. not canon to anything other than Skybound. They call okay. it the Inner John universe. So you have Transformers... G.I. Joe, and then an original title called Void Rivals that ushered it all in. I remember and, Void Rivals, yeah. Yeah, and dude, it is fantastic. So you're getting to reintroduce yourself to these characters on a brand new canon with, uh, so no one's this safe. They made that very apparent with issue one of Transformers. No one is safe. The characters you know and love are going to be shaken and switched up. You're going to have to find new loves. It's so Daniel Warren Johnson. It, I don't have a good camera. Perfect. No, you just got to hold it still. Like you no, it's, gotta... a, it's, it's a shitty camera. It's not going to focus. It no, doesn't have autofocus. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, but what's cool, like if you look at some of the pages, you know you have those classic shots in any Transformer comics where you see like them transforming. It'll be like four drawings right beside each other going through the stages. There's one where it's just Megatron just like as a wreck in, in like a... You should stop spoiling it because I'm telling you everything is like oh damn moments. But what's cool with it Dan came Warren out Johnson, 2023. <laughs> what is it? I don't understand what you're saying. What do you mean? I, this isn't spoiling it to me. This is how I consume content. By not by not. Are you reading it? Yeah. Oh okay. I thought you were just looking at looking at pictures and stuff. No, like I bought I bought issue one and I'm okay. reading it online. <laughs> my fault, it's fam. My fault, fam. It's really cool. <laughs> But yeah, no, the way he does transforming is just still shots. It's like you caught them in a second. So you'll see them like halfway transformer, like parts hanging mm -hmm. out or coming out and stuff. It's it's beautiful, dude. It's amazing. Yeah, I'm liking it. <clears throat> Coco, it's his visa issue. He's a com he's on the comic book terrorist watch list. <laughs> Probably. But yeah, and you'll, no, I, I... you'll see with issue two how they use uh, how how it's connected like like duke for example is just a five issue mm -hmm. mini series cobra commander is just a five issue mini series that mm -hmm. brings context and adds like expansion to the inner john world that they're all sharing and I then uh, they're doing them. okay because i 
I kind of like took a little break from reading comics in general, and I tried catching up on all the shit that I already had. And yep. uh, I remember them losing their license. I just didn't realize that that's what they did with it. So thank you yeah, for you're sharing. Playing, you're playing catch up, man. I would, uh, yeah. I would first and foremost tackle the Energon universe, which isn't a lot to read, but it's 100% pure quality. And and check out Ghost Machine ASAP, as there's only issue ones out right now. Also being put out by Image, the uh, Ghost Machine universe. That was the one with Jeff Johns, right? Yeah, where he's been sniping all the top tier talent and signing him exclusive with his company. And Not gonna lie, I'm, I'm reading uh, Jeff Johns's Spider Man right now, and it's pretty damn good. I don't remember Jeff Johns Spider Man. Didn't he do Spider Man? Maybe I'm yeah. tripping. Hold on. Yeah, I think you're tripping, bro. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who's Spider-Man in my reading? Taylor says Skybound just needs to acquire the rights to He-Man and complete the trifecta. So the uh, success of the Energon universe is directly responsible for the uh, the rush to print, unfortunately, low-quality Thundercats that is out right now. Dynamite's like, we let's recreate that. And uh, it didn't live up to the high expectations. But they sold to number ones. They sold a lot. All right, save. Sorry, I was writing a contract while we were doing this. <laughs> Sounds well, wrong with being productive. Okay. Oh, nothing like nothing like work writing uh, legal language at six o'clock in the morning. Sorry, I'm reading Chip Zdarsky's Spider Man. There you go. He's and I'm reading that. and I'm reading Jeff Johns's Flash. There you go. That's where they bring back Barry Allen, Flash Rebirth story era. Yeah, dude, not I'm the so not the Rebirth imprint, but the actual title of the story. I'm so far behind. I'm like reading like old compendiums. That happens. That's a good way to do it, though. What is this? And the uh, what's that word, Rob? Nacelle. Nacelle. The nacelle verse. What is that? I don't. Know. I usually hear near nacelle in reference to Star Trek, so maybe yeah. it has something to do with that. I don't know. T. Bizzle said, "I actually enjoyed the Thundercats pass on the first it passed the first issue." I'm glad it's picking up. Glad it, well, if it is picking up, because to be fair, C. Bizzle, you enjoy 99% of what you consume. Well, oh, Mike, Mike and Mice from Mars. Okay, yeah, they all those 90s cartoons. They they did the 80s one, Save He Man, but now they're moving on to the 90s. I believe we're getting like Biker Mice, and if I'm not mistaken, Street Sharks was one as well. They're really, uh, they're really pushing the cartoon stuff. It's, it's the fad. Star well, Trek, you know, those things have a, they have a certain nostalgia vibe, and as we know, nostalgia is an expensive drug. It is. <laughs> <laughs> you related to that one, huh? Exactly. That's what I thought when I heard Nacell. So, perfect. <laughs> Nostalgia is an expensive drug for sure. Everybody wants their, their glory years of their childhood back, you know, with those yeah. great toys. Well, it makes, you, it makes you sit there and f remember those things and you like that feeling. So you're so you forget for a moment the the realities of the world and think, oh, well, shit, owning that will give me that piece of joy. And then you own it and you go, shit, I spent how much money on that? <laughs> <sighs> That's, that's the story how much, with me how and much Legos. Shit do I have? Crap. What am I going to do with all this? It's been an uphill battle trying to keep Legos out of this house. <laughs> I never had them as a kid. So Legos? Legos. Oh, God. I've never, I never had them as a kid. I never had them as a kid. I never cared to have them, never wanted oh. them. And uh, my, my wife is drawn to Legos. And of course, we have kids. And my, my childhood is not their childhood. And I don't know. 
There's so Legos. much out there. Legos, Legos are so great, except I'm a big advocate of the Legos that were just like the two by fours. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. Is there's know, the Legos that were like when I was a kid, and then there's the required Legos that are creativity today. It yeah, required so when me I to like them, make my own stuff. Yeah, it was just a. I just had a giant big bag. Matter of fact, it was a denim bag that Lego made. You just pop, put all your stuff in, <laughs> and you could pull a cinch sack, and bam, you had a big old sack of bag Legos. You dropped it on the ground, it spread out, and bam, you could sort through all your Legos, build whatever you want. We couldn't have certain toys like masks or transformers. We built them out of Legos. And you had very few kits. The few kits you had were like maybe the city stuff, but it wasn't that big of a deal. You didn't build them to be models because we had model kits for building something that you're going to build and put on display permanently. But now Lego is so much in the licensed space that it's pretty much kit. Not only are they expensive, but they're pretty much just kits that the kids put together. And then it's that's so it. It's it is. It has robbed them from their imagination that I, I enjoyed yeah. when I was playing. Legos. I brought my I son a, a diagram or a, a you know a book. To yeah, follow oh, to I remember buying something. when my son was young, buying him, going out and having to look really hard just to find generic Legos, and found a bunch of them and got them for him, and he almost never played with them. All he ever did instead was play with or was wanting to build the kits. He would build the kits with grandpa and they would build it and they'd set them on a shelf and that was it. And they never touch it again. I mean, it's, I, I, I bet if you buy them like a standard model car kit, it'll just rack their brain. Can like, you find those you anymore? And they're yeah, so expensive yeah, you can, too. The Lego well, we kits have, are so expensive. We have hobby stores and also uh, uh, Ollie's has a handful of them. Last time I went, as I, don't well. know, I don't know what an Ollie's is, but the discount bargain barn. Yeah, I don't. We don't know what that is. Well, that's because you're in California. They jack prices up. They don't use words like discount. <laughs> All right. I think the trash is supposed to come today, and I'm debating whether or not I should roll my trash out. As so, well, you're, or not. well, you're dressed like that, or you put a robe on. <laughs> you put a robe. You put a robe on to go walk out, take the trash out. A robe on, but keep the crown, right? Yeah. A tiara. It's a tiara. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Just go out and <laughs> wing it. Go for it. It's quick. Uh, 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 <laughs> wheeling the trash. Even Wonder Woman's got to take the trash out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what leftovers are you about to work on? Rice Krispie treats. Nice. Did you make them last week? Yes. I got to cut this one. I made two batches. We just finished the first oh. one. Oh, so isn't that batch, though, for tomorrow? What's tomorrow? Four twenty. No, this is this is normal normal Rice Krispie treats. Of every no, no, but when you, <laughs> afterwards when you get the munchies, man, Rice Krispie treats. Oh, okay, got gotcha. <laughs> you. If you ain't gonna be at work till ten o'clock, we know this about you now. Where you at? Where you at? Yeah, my trash day is today, actually too. It's a, I took it out. Had to take it out last night. My trash day is also today. <laughs> Look at that. I have two trash days. Just a full fine. Why? I'll tell you why. Because you're recycling. Because I'm or so you're, far out. Or, or your stuff comes on two different days. It comes two different days, but I'm so far out. We have a lot of horse property around here, so there's no recycling. But instead, they have, they have like trash pickup twice a week. Is it is it trash, or is one of them like yard waste and stuff? No, it's just all trash. Huh. <laughs> There's no special bucket. It's just Although I, I suppose you guys can just dump it all in the Grand Canyon. So I don't know. We just they're anti-recyclable here. Yeah, Probably that's anti-recyclable. <laughs> yeah, you know it's Arizona. Yeah, what can you do? They probably want to build a wall out of it. That would be the wall that the Mexicans wouldn't climb. Is the wall of trash? We need a wall for the Californians who are flooding over here. Oh, now you're worried about us? Instead. Uh huh. Yeah, because it's don't, cheaper over don't there. Don't Californiaize my my Arizona. Yeah, you're you're allowed it's to go to California. You're not allowed to vote California. I don't understand Arizona. what this concept is. Like, what we're we're not the we're not a problem. Mm, your state says otherwise. We're the solution, I, I, Rob. I think you're conflating you with the greater idea of California. You, Rob, are not a problem. People, if people, the fact Rob, that you're welcome here. Like, the fact well, that housing here. housing here. Housing, pri housing prices are up everywhere in this country. It ain't because Californians are moving out of California. 
I don't see that. You're, you're just talking about a one issue again. This is a this is a no. This is issue. this is the blame that we get. We get blamed for everybody else's housing prices going up. It's like really, come on. There's not that many of us leaving that are causing the entire country's prices to go up. There's not enough of us. No, I think it's more of a concept thing that you're you're trying to reduce down to an issue thing. California is a shithole is the concept. I'm not saying agree or disagree with it. Just on a base level, California is a shithole as a concept. And if everyone's leaving California because it's a shithole and you're going somewhere else, don't continue to vote the way that you did in California that ran it into the ground in the new place you go to. That's the concept that everyone is saying in Texas. That's exactly what that's exactly Arizona. what they're saying. And Arizona is don't don't California yeah. rise Texas, Arizona, Arizona. There's a great migration of illegal aliens to places and people in those places leaving to go farther inland. And then they're going there and just like continuing to push the same policies that turn their state into a place they no longer desire. Wait, y'all don't y'all don't want to still pay five dollars and fifty cents for gas when it's cheap. That's y'all's cheap gas price in California. Yeah, right. Really, it's five thirty here. It's five seventy five up here the other day. Yeah, we, I'm paying five seventy five. All right, I'm, I'm at paying five fifty three. Now. They're pay they're because there's a couple of different things that go on right now. One is obviously we always have higher. We have ga higher gas taxes, yeah. um, which we help, which is a big piece of it. But the other thing <laughs> is that the fucking oil, the oil industry has been has figured out how to manipulate California's gas prices because California came up with this brilliant idea that we have to have a separate summer blend from a winter blend of gas. <laughs> and so Again, don't, don't go voting in other states. So in the spring. Oh, this was, I don't, this was a legislature this is, thing. This wasn't, yeah. this wasn't like the California voters doing it. No. Uh, and so in the, when that happens in the spring and in the fall, th there's a transition from one type of fuel to the other type of fuel. So <laughs> there's the, tra the travel fuel. <laughs> so, so all of a sudden there becomes a decrease in availability for a period of time in mm -hmm. certain fuel and then at the same time it always seems to be that multiple refineries go down for routine maintenance so there's less refineries making fuel simul at the same time they're switching the gas at the so so all of a sudden the supply becomes short and then of course we add on there the normal things with gas prices because oh no there's conflict in the middle east let's jack up the prices some more and of course the own the rent in a gas station is a little bit higher here than it is say in arizona rent and what else i think it was like four the, the years expense ago. owning owning a gas station of operating it the rent of the property yeah. that you're on it costs a little bit more yeah. than the arizona so all those things going in unfortunately it costs a lot and what do we do uh, we say well i don't want rail i don't want any of that stuff let me drive my car 12 and a half hours to go to work each day yeah we're a bunch of idiots. What can we say? <laughs> There's uh, we voted for uh, an extra gas tax to help out schools like five years ago, and I don't know what happened with that. Well, then, then the great thing is they put all the they have all the gas taxes that are supposed to go to fix the roads, but then you have all the electric. Now we have so many electric cars and stuff that don't consume get that aren't consuming gas and paying those taxes. So now they want to add <laughs> toll roads and stuff to fix the yeah. roads. Oh yeah, my yeah, Justin yeah, Birch is here to out. write us a sternly written letter. Uh, like us, we got congestion pricing. Justin. It's ridiculous. Congestion pricing on your taxes this year. What was that? Without without getting into details, did you notice any differences on your taxes this year being a New Yorker? Yeah, I got more money. You got did more you? money, or you had to pay yeah. more money. No, I, I remember I don't. I live in an apartment, so I get a refund. Oh fuck you! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that and and I did put everything from YouTube in there. Oh, did you? Yeah. Did you Helped LLC? Did you LLC your channel? It just makes sense. It does. We briefly mentioned that the other day. For yeah. me, it just seems like a lot of work because it's so much unknown territory. So everything I charge it on, on a certain account. So I have an account for anything that's related to the YouTube channel, but that also includes all my comic books, all my conventions, everything that's related to the channel yeah. can, can be it can be put in there. Yeah. So, so I literally put everything. Literally everything goes into that one account. 
and I keep it separate. And then I, all I have to do at the end of the year is just give you it know. To you. So for context, DJ, think of how much bigger a return Izzy would have got had it not been this year of taxes. Yeah. So I've ever, ever since they changed the taxes, I've just, my taxes went dramatically higher. Yeah. The amount of taxes I pay in a year. So there are people that would love to freaking make in a year. <laughs> Yeah, so it's just that's what happens when you live in an apartment and you rent. Izzy, are you like in the heart of New York City? Where are you? I'm in the Bronx, so the hard Bronx. enough. Yeah, the only problem with living in this in, in the apartment is well, you get that ben- you get some benefit there now. You, unfortunately, you don't get the equity build up over time. Yeah, no equity. But so. Izzy, I want to ask you. Yeah. I'm in Arizona, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm not there in New York. I can't see New York. But is New York like going to like hell in a handbasket? Absolutely. Big time. Big time. Is it? Yeah, that's actually true. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to hear it from the Yeah, it's from a resident. I was I was literally just talking to one of my coworkers about all the, the, the stupid stuff that's happening. So it's it's also the government trying to get as much money out of us in some way, in other words, congestion pricing or this whole you know, um tickets and street cleaning and I got a I got a ticket for being in a no standing zone when I was parked in a regular standing. Little well, you like were that. parked. You were. So how could they give you a ticket for no standing? You were parked there. That's the point. Then say no it's parking. Not, it, it was a regular parking spot. Anyway, I have to go to a meeting. I might stop by in a few minutes. So, au revoir. Enjoy your meeting. Bye, Izzy. Bye. That's true of all large cities. Yeah, I do think that a lot of large cities are in rough shape right now. I, I've never heard that term, no standing. I know, huh? You have to slide on your ass through Yeah, we things. usually call in California we're called no <laughs> You got a worm. Right? You got a worm over. Yeah, just do the worm straight through. <laughs> Good morning, Perry. I just sent you a, a link to hop on if you want. Taxman bit me over this year. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, financially prepared, but I'm waiting to get mine back. See what uh, see what I owe. I finally just decided I gave up on them tr- repealing the stupid freaking tax changes they did, f- <laughs> and so I've just had to take the take the hit and take more out of my paycheck. And my God, it's just abysmal. But yeah. Rob, think, think, of all, Rob. Like, think of all the firemen and like the the social services and everything that that, that you can enjoy now. No, no, no. I get an aircraft carrier. <laughs> Wait, what? I want the USS Rob fat stacks. <laughs> that, 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 and I want that carrier to come off the coast to go park itself in the middle of the Red Sea and tell all the motherfuckers, Hi, I'm Rob Fat Stacks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, the size of the IRS I'm sure that would do it. That would solve a lot of the world's problems, Rob. <laughs> That's right. Oh, DJ says the no standing means you can't leave your car, oh, car idle. idle. Oh, got it. Ah, okay. Thank you. Fortunately, DJ also pays a lot of taxes. He's also getting an aircraft carrier, so uh, <laughs> it will be the Fat Stacks and DJ Links aircraft carriers. I don't know how much of it is getting an aircraft carrier as, as much as you just adopted a bunch of people that you don't get to see. Your family just got bigger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, it, yeah, well... I don't really have any ambitions it's, of owning or something like that. It's it's well, it's it's a running joke with me that you don't. What do you get with all your taxes? You don't get, you know, you don't have health care. You don't have medical. You don't have medical. You don't have all these things. But fuck it, I got thirteen aircraft carriers. What have you got? What have you got? Yeah. <laughs> I hey, can park an Rob, air. Our country here. can park an air force off any coast we choose. Rob, when you uh, when you move over here, you can visit one of your aircraft carriers. The Yorktown's right there outside Charleston. Go visit it anytime you want. I go. It's visit, actually amazing. We, we've got I've we've got one right here in Oakland that I've not active. Uh, but, I'm uh, not too far from the ones in uh, San Diego. Yep, San that's Diego true. Means a whale's vagina. But yeah. Yeah, well, Kevin, that's the USS what we need. flag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if we all get to collectively get our own aircraft carrier, that's that's the agreed upon name, hands down, right? <laughs> Gotta be. Oh, great. 
no, I, I, I do find the great irony in it. Country, country, <laughs> the year is 2062. My grandma served on the DJ stacks in the temporal <laughs> old wars. <laughs> what? <laughs> the temporal cold wars. It's just Dr. Manhattan, the, our reality there. Oh, uh, yes. Say World War Three happens and it breaks out today. What are you guys all going to do? Kiss my uh, ass I'm, goodbye. I'm in, I'm in Georgia, so we just we just chill and let problems come our way if they decide to. I'll probably go to Disneyland. That sounds very Kyle of you. I'll probably go to the roof and reenact the scene from Independence Day where I'm just looking up at the aliens, but I'm just <laughs> waiting for the bomb to drop on me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. <laughs> Goes to a place where when, they, when the bombs come, I get vaporized instantly because I don't want to survive and have to live in a fallout world. Where, yeah. Yeah. Speaking, right. speaking of fallout, that I'm TV series is like, awesome. I'd, I'd ride out whatever, whatever happens. <laughs> no, dude. I want to be vaporized instantly. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not trying to walk around without a nose. <laughs> Try to fight with. Try to fight with everybody else in an anarchy true. world for what resources remain. No. Yeah. As someone who's like really sensitive to pollen, I think not having a nose would be rough for me. I'm telling you, I'm gonna run Disneyland. That's gonna be my fortress. And I apologize to anyone that doesn't have a nose. My comments were made not to be insensitive. I was trying to get a joke across. Yeah, that's a little on the nose, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, all. How's everyone doing? <laughs> fire today. We we appreciate you with that update that they're on the prints. That was phenomenal. What's up, Justin? Yeah, eight Hello. prints left on DJ Links. That big card. Nice. Only eight left. Okay. Only eight left. Um, shout out to Stephen C. He picked up one this morning. I think after eight we. Left. Yeah. So we only got eight left, and then we're, we'll 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 be Drop sold out of those. I'm gonna buy one and ship it to Austin. I dare you. <laughs> uh, all I heard was congratulating him on his YouTube subscriber success. Wow. So that means you want one, Kyle? Uh, I probably will get one, yes. Well, you better hurry. There's only eight left. Links in the chat, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta wait. <laughs> I got to eat this pizza first. Nice. Pizza for breakfast? Pizza can't wait. I there you go. Rice Drop Krispie it again. Is it cold at least? You got no, I, there you go. I ate, I ate Rice Krispie treats first, and now I'm having some pizza. How baked are you? Are cold chicken wings next? It's not. I, I, well, I mean, I, I can be, but I'm <laughs> choosing not to. Justin, what's new with you this week, man? Uh, not a whole lot. Going away tomorrow to the 27th to um, Texas. From vacation. Oh. Okay. Cool. Is that far from yeah. you? Yes. What part of Texas y'all hitting up? San Antonio. Nice. Our buddy nice. Nick is a uh, born and raised local Texan. He, mm-hmm. he likes it down there. <laughs> yeah, he actually runs a rodeo. So if you need any like rodeo tips or anything like that, definitely hit up Nick's Kicks and Comics, formerly known as Nick's Bulls and Rodeos. Also, congratulations on 300 subscribers, Justin. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations. Wait, you have 300 subscribers? I don't even have that. Yep. You know what the trick is? He Make doesn't content. delete his content. Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. He also reviews a lot of comics. Yes. A lot of comics. Well, I just learned how to read, so. And that's even questionable california public school system baby <laughs> <laughs> mr birch how was your uh, con experience i got to sleep in till 9 30 for two days in a row so that was pretty awesome wow <laughs> that's your takeaway uh yeah <laughs> i have a three-year-old and a five-year-old do you know how awesome it was yes oh, yeah. i can understand that actually I don't know. I just wake up. Sleep thought, is like gold when you have children that age. I thought you actually conned somebody and was going to talk about it. No, but it, but Mr. Birch was out there raising some funds. Hell yeah, baby. 
Maybe our kids are yeah. the same age difference. I just noticed that. Mine are four and six right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, three and five. Yeah. You can click the link. I can highlight it, though. My, my, mine are 23 and 20. Well. <laughs> Wait, it's only $20? No, my kids. We can mark it up for you, Kyle. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm on the oh, back end right now of the site. Yeah, I can yeah. track it up the price. 20 seems reasonable. Yeah, that's right. It's only $20. That's right. Pick it up today. Only eight left, maybe seven, because Kyle's going to buy one. Did Not... Spider-Man lose his legs to cancer? Maybe. Possibly, yeah. Not but Kyle, are, are you going to? But maybe it's also an artistic choice to avoid copyright infringement. Yeah. It's, it's a character inspired by Spider-Man. Yeah, it's not, not necessarily. Spider Man has legs. Yeah. Got it. Maybe Kyle, it's an homage to paraplegics, you know. Mm. Kyle, are you going to go on a sticky goose esque rant talking about how we pressured you into buying this print? Uh, <laughs> no. Damn it. I, dude, I was talking shit about Sticky Goose like two days ago and people were defending him, and now all of a sudden everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. I'm talking shit. Hey, well, he just uh, put down that video. If, yeah, you, <laughs> if you do decide to talk shit, can you make sure you use me as the thumbnail of your video? Thanks. Perfect. Um, do you have to put your head in your hands? <laughs> much head well, well played and break the ice. Much like I talked <laughs> trash about uh, Brian LCS and how he doesn't like comics, um, Sticky okay. Goose doesn't know anything about the comic community, but he desperately wants to like be a part of it. And his way of getting a part of it is to make content that's going to aggravate the people that are in it based on his own ignorance. So, yeah. uh, I'm waiting. I, Go ahead, Justin. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I was, I was at one of the shows that he was at that he was removed from. What? Mm -hmm. what? what do you mean? You threw up air quotes. What does that mean, sir? <laughs> so he, so he, uh, I forget what it was. It, it was. Like back in February, I think he put out a video about how he he um, he essentially was set up at a show and he wanted to film and the organizers asked him not to film and said that they would call the police. Uh -huh. And that's when the video where he, um, his wife came in and sat down and explained what the um, video recording rules of West Virginia are. Uh, I was at that show and he left on his own accord the video mm. recording rules or laws laws sorry sorry because the video recording laws anywhere protected under the first amendment means you can lawfully videotape from anywhere you stand and can see in public right but if you're inside to, a convention limit, yeah that's my point limited yeah. to public a venue is owned by somebody and they're under that's like you can't come in my house that i own and video all you want. This is you're now on on my turf. Yeah. Unless so, there's yeah. expressed consent. Mm -hmm. Expressed consent. I, that's right. Same Mark doesn't know what that term means. You can't go in Walmart and videotape. I mean, you can unless they ask you not to, and then you have to abide have by to by by them. Much like he like he went into those comic shops trying to videotape. After I think that might have been the one he was kicked out of. He, <laughs> he went and tried to peddle stuff he had in his book bag to customers inside of a comic shop. And they're like, dude, what are you doing? Get out of here. And he yeah. thought that they were wrong for that. I'm like, I'm waiting for oh, his next video series. Wow. Top five YouTube comic <laughs> thumbnail faces. <laughs> yes. I th yeah. I think that'll go over well. Like, like you said, with the hands on the head, the sad, the, mm, the smile, like, Oh my God, look at all these books. I get I what like, you're, you're supposed to do stuff like that. If like your goal is, if your number one goal is view count, like, which I mean, like that's, that makes perfect sense, but it's still just funny seeing the the patterns in the. Mm -hmm. I haven't watched a single I just video of his. Mm -hmm. I, I saw the first one that I ever saw was the one I just described with him trying to bash two LCSs for kicking him out for trying to peddle merchandise that he walked in the store in his book bag with to their customers in the store. They and them asking him not to film in his in their store. And they should have yeah. threw him a beating. <laughs> I saw that, yeah. and I'm like, this this guy's content is not for me. He's not only cringy, he's madly not self aware. Yeah, yeah well, I he's can't no believe Justin he's Birch. gonna watch this and be so happy. He's no Justin Comics. I'm not They're saying not, actually, like, you're you're about that. Like, they were talking about me like, for like an hour. Seen it enough. 
Say again, Justin. I remember hearing about that too. It was strongly recommended. I got I, it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that he, has, he has he has he has one of them was funny because it was a pinned comment from the owner of the comic book store. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. And he still doesn't get it. He pins a comment like, "Look, this guy is wild and like trying to say something to me." And then like all the comments on are like, "Dude, what are you doing?" I put on his last video. In his last video, I replied the thumbs down emoji, just so that he could know that I thumbs down the video. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good point. I can tell you how many thumbs down he has. So in the top five comic book YouTubers, he has two ninety up and only six down. Let me refresh it. Because I, I have reactivated my thumbs down feature. Yeah, he's got six thumbs down on that one. Oh, you can see the thumbs down. Thing. I thought they took that out. They did. I, I backdoor reactivated it because I wanted to see how uh, how pan Disney content is getting because they're madly dishonest with their marketing. And it shows when you reactivate the thumbs down stuff. You had the me at backdoor. Snow, the Snow White uh, <laughs> movie looks terrible. Well, we haven't seen anything from Disney that's, Snow White. That's racist, Kyle. Yeah. yeah. They well, showed well, us the picture of the magical friends because they're not dwarves. <laughs> they hate little people at Disney. That um, is true. I love the aggressively little relaxing. Little people are out of jobs because of Disney now. He goes, his next video is to take a dump in a local comic store, and you won't believe their reaction. <laughs> <laughs> like for contact, Kyle, like I'll, I can I can share this so you can actually see it. So the acolyte, they're like the acolyte got the most views ever, breaking Disney records and blah blah blah. But uh, here's the reality: people went over there and looked at it. And uh, with f over 4 million subscribers on official, <laughs> yeah, yeah, here's the reality with over 10 million views, it has 190 thumbs up, 681,000 thumbs down. How many accounts do you have, Mark? <laughs> this is just my regular one. Look at that right here. Oh, no, no. I, I thought you had 681,000 accounts. <laughs> no, I just have, I have two, and my secondary one used to just be uh. Uh, like the I don't remember what it was. It was nothing on there, but it's where Finn puts toy videos now. But I have it mad private. Yeah, I like it's it called Finn's that. Billion of Toys. But good luck even finding it. It's massively private. House of X, what up? You already gave me too much information. You won't be able to find it. And if you well, do, I, I hope you subscribe to him. Well, I know. But I don't have right. it. I don't have it massively private so that people can't find it. I have it private because his goal is just to have fun posting little videos. On there's only a couple on there. All I know but, uh, is I'm I'm refreshing this big cartel site over here, and I still see a prince. What's up, Kyle? Oh shit! Sorry. No, I, well, no. I got distracted. <laughs> Steven C, your order's already packed up and everything. I just have to drop it off later. Yeah, I'll drop it off next Thursday. No, I won't. I'll drop it off today. I will kindly drop it off today. How did uh, King Kong. Kong go? How did King Kong go? King Kong went okay. Uh, it was it was a good show. My our positioning on the map was fire, but then they didn't kind of like enforce the flow rules. So originally the flow rules were going to be like IKEA with the arrows on the floor. You can mm -hmm. only whatever whatever. And um, we were positioned in the corner by the exit, but people weren't using that exit. They were going through the next front of the time hole. I go to a con, I'm going to make sure to look for arrows on the floor just in case. Now that I know that's a thing. So, and then there are two parking lots, one in the back and then one in the front. Everyone parked in the front. So there was no reason to go like past us unless you like one of those people that really want to see everything on the floor. Our room wasn't as bad as, I mean, we were in the hallway, but there was a room off to the side with a couple of vendors and people didn't even know that room existed. So that's where like three men in the basement, when they went live and they were giving away, Roger gave away two prints, I think they were in that room and the traffic was like next to nothing in that room mm. um the other thing that kind of hurt our positioning was we were in artist alley and then all the artists was just like yo your table's too far to so like chris campagna was telling this guy yo and then all the artists moved their tables closer together so we were like all the way on the end as all the artists they were like four tables just that they created one long table so that was the mega was, table yeah but we <laughs> exactly i didn't know what to do with myself i was like what the hell Shows you, that, shows you that they obviously don't respect DJ Lynx as a sponsor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, 
<laughs> I think they do. No, I, I, like on paper, it was because we kind of like flanked all the artists, right? So you had the pressable defects on one side and then us on the other side. It just was. A, and then the traffic, um, just the foot traffic, it wasn't as heavy as it was in previous years because the show was, I know Cliff said the show was closer to him, but from everybody in New York, there's a, a large New York contingent that goes to these shows and it was further for us. So it's normally it's like, let's say 45 minutes. This one was like a, a hour and 20 minutes. I got there at 40 in the morning, two hours to get back home. Wow. We appreciate you going there and repping, repping the comics curing cancer. And of course, at Heroes Con, we're going to have a much better location. <laughs> Everyone will be able to find us right smack in the middle of the floor. At booth number 1769, Heyo. Hey, good morning. <laughs> John Carter, <laughs> is dressed as Wonder Woman and sculpting. Why are we talking about Transformers? <laughs> we don't we don't call them that john <laughs> they're just formers <laughs> what was that, that that saturday night live uh thing where he goes you are a transformer yes <laughs> <laughs> hey did y'all see the uh the ryan gosling episode like in true ryan gosling fashion when he goes to snl it becomes legendary clips that the, av um, the yeah, avatar uh, well, they, they they revisited Papyrus. They Papyrus. they added, yeah, dude. This the, the second one's just as good, and then uh, <laughs> they did a Beavis and Butthead sketch, and they they were smart after doing like hair and makeup. They the cast did not see the mm -hmm. result until the sketch was running live, and it that that actress's reaction to seeing <laughs> Butthead was the best. <laughs> she died, dude. It was over with. <laughs> It was over with. SNL's been doing uh, doing some really good stuff lately, man. It, it's funny. All the skits, the ones that are really good, are the ones where the characters break character and just like start laughing and break down. Yeah, laughter's infectious. Yeah. Are they breaking character? Watch yeah, the Beavis and Butthead. In SNL? Massively. Watch because the Beavis I, and Butthead. I remember, I remember um, learning about Saturday Night Live and about the producer, uh, the creator of it. Lauren Michaels. Lauren Michaels. Lauren Michaels. Harvey yeah. Weinstein. And he was very <laughs> specific in that he you had to go by the script. And he and like that was you had to like be like it's the script or nothing, or you're not going out mm -hmm. there. Well, well yeah, they're, 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 not, they're not going off script, they're uh they're cracking up. Mm -hmm. Like if they were filming a movie or TV show, they'd have to cut to get their composure back and start delivering lines, but no, they're dying of laughter yeah. with the audience. They can't. They're, they're, they can't hold it together. Like it's too, it's too damn funny. And then like just, just seeing it happen, just, just it's like a snowball effect. Yeah, it's it's freaking funny. Scott, fast forward. I think you're behind like five minutes. And if John's <laughs> on Transformers, you might want to fast forward. You're behind like an hour. In my opinion, Simpsons and SNL stay good. Not all Simpsons aggressively relaxing. All right, yeah, not all right to know, but when you go that when you go that long, you know, you got some highs and lows for sure. Yeah, I was watching in since the mid '90s, man. I started watching for like when Chris sure. Farley was on and, and all those dudes. Um, that was dope. like I would be outside, like hanging out yeah. on the block, and I would have I to go home. When Will yeah. Ferrell was on, that was the best. Yeah. yeah, and I would I would go home like Will yeah. Ferrell and Sherry O'Terry. We my lover. are <laughs> <tell> them <laughs> my, my lover. lover. They had Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, they had, that was who was that was a Drew Barrymore episode, I think. And it was Jimmy Fallon was in the uh he was the normal guy in the hot tub with the weird mm -hmm. uh professors Ra that were <laughs> Yeah, Rachel Dratch and Will Fallon. Yeah, Rachel Dratch, it was her, not Cherry Terry. Yeah, God, mm. that was so funny. Yeah. <laughs> lover. <laughs> they wanted to go get chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Fallon. That's just what he funny. he was breaking character in that one. They he couldn't keep a straight face because Will that, kept the straight face. It just mm -hmm. no. Well, like, Jimmy, Jimmy that was Fallon a, is notorious for that. Yeah, that's his that's his whole gimmick is that he he breaks, breaks character yeah. like all the time. Yeah, because yeah. he's Will a shitty actor. House of X yes. Entertainment Inc. <laughs> House of Chandler. X, are you joining or not? Or not? 
be sure to check out their YouTube channel. They do a lot of fun content over there as well. And also hit me up on IG or email, whatever. I'll send you a uh, new member's welcome packet. Yeah, big shout out to House of X. I had the pleasure of meeting both of them in person uh, twice now. Hung out with them a couple of Saturdays ago. Fantastic cats. And did a fantastic content. stream with them. They had you on interviewing yeah. you, hanging out one evening. It was a blast. Mark, do you reveal in the welcome packet, do you reveal the, the code words and the secret key codes and stuff? Uh, you would have to get one to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Member for 30 months, Burt Family 54 Comics clocking in with the We Are Legion. What's up, Papa Steve? We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Had a poster of Church Lady on my wall. Weird flex, but pretty fun. <laughs> I remember the broccoli song. That was hilarious. The Dana Carvey broccoli. Top of my broccoli, yeah. Talking about chopping broccoli, yeah. <laughs> There's just some legendary yeah. sketches on Saturday Night Live. Absolutely legendary. <laughs> well, DJ Mark, I heard back from the place. Okay, and the verdict? Uh, well, they're sending me some more information they're like oh well in order to secure an area for a group of that size we would need to have a contract and x minimum food purchase of x yeah well, I, I, I call. yeah we had that last year that's not a problem just yeah just send stuff to me let me look just at get it. it together and get it to us so we can book yeah. asap you know, I'm, not, I'm not concerned well, about that so yeah and that also makes me wonder like uh we like if you're going to heroes con and you want to do the big meetup thing Welcome back. Please, please pay attention to the uh, the Heroes Con group chat. And if you're not in the group chat and you're going to Heroes Con and want to be added to it, let uh, let one of us know because the big meetup thing is a joint effort to make happen. Otherwise, the uh, the expense of that gets dropped on one person. The person who puts their credit card on file to secure the event. Yes. Mm -hmm. But so that that uh, the big meetup that everyone enjoyed and loved last year. Uh, you know, like it is a that place is gone, but there's a better place that's we've already place. secured yeah. the location. Well, I was we haven't say, secured it yet, but we've identified and targeted a location that is convenient to get to and can accommodate. And it's probably going to be a better establishment than we were at last time. I was going to say, there's no way that the place from last year was saying that they uh, didn't have space for us because that place was empty. The entire night. Right. Or that place is gone. Yeah. That because whole, they were that whole empty. Shopping, right. That whole, well, no, that whole, that whole strip was yeah. coming out. And somebody who lives there, I was talking to him yesterday, said that they were, they were slowly phasing that place out because they want to remodel that entire area. But from what we were being told last year by the, uh, like the people that live there, there was a paid security guy who walks that strip and everything. He said that the area right there kind of went to crap and people were dipping. So they might be, Looking, I mean, you can't just abandon that area. It's at the ground level of tall buildings, so yeah, they this might is, be trying to do some drastic to save it. This place we're looking at is an opposite direction, and is is actually surrounded by several other kind of bars and a cigar lounge and everything else. And uh, it's uh, a, it looks like a a, a beautiful facility. Um, and hey, you know, they're saying, hey, you can have this many people show up and without a reserved space, but I want a reserved space, so. Rob, do you smoke cigars? Not anymore. Oh. What's the min minimum? But, Rob? There are, but there are several people there. Oh, it's all it's two thousand dollars, <laughs> which is not a big deal for when we get that much that many people together for, for Papa Fat Stacks. When we we get well, no, no. When we get <laughs> Papa <laughs> Aircraft Carrier, when, when we when we're talking about food for forty to fifty people, that's not a you know because that doesn't count drinks. That's just like you normal know, two thousand mm -hmm. dollar minimum. You know, plus plus tax and utility or tax and tip, and I'm like, that's we did. We, that was the same thing we had last year. Last year was a two thousand dollar minimum too, and it wasn't a big deal. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of a big deal. Yeah, it's really not bad. Like if if you can get forty people who you know are going to be there to actually say, not just yes, they're going to be there, but to uh, like last year chip in once we get it booked and paid for chip in their portion that's that's not yeah. bad man where is chip 
I think that Ro- more, Roscoe more and Burke, I just have, they have, I have them sending me their menu and stuff to build up. Rob is a high roller when it comes to food. Am I right? <laughs> and we ain't going, we ain't going hungry. What's going on? Big <laughs> sis. Nothing much little bro. How are you doing? <laughs> is it lady fantastic? <laughs> mm-hmm. That's Wonder Woman. Girl. And that's Wonder Woman. Hey, what's up? So yeah. I just woke up a little, um, you guys, this new job, <laughs> this new job. I got a lot, a lot of responsibility. They gave me the responsibility of renting out the margarita machine for a day. Yes. With great power. You know, don't. They, they don't trust anybody, just anybody in the corporation to get that margarita machine. They needed somebody who would execute, and I executed. Is it because you constantly sing the song around the office? Give me one margarita. Yes. Nice. It is. You need and, to have uh, margarita but who, had, who, got the, who did they trust to secure the tequila, though? Um, the boss's wife is getting that today. <laughs> <laughs> so you weren't trusted with that. <laughs> Someday. I, tequila and I do not have a good working relationship. Let's, <laughs> we're just going to have to be. Oh. Well, you put working with tequila. That's just part of the problem right there. <laughs> it just exactly. doesn't happen. They don't mix, do they? It's like taking an elephant DNA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we, uh. When we did, uh, I went to, I was in Vegas on that New Year's Eve that Britney Spears got married. I was. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I was visiting a friend, though, um, and I got so shit-faced that night, I lost my glasses. Um, I've only lost my glasses twice in my life. Both times had to do with getting shit-faced. One time was in New Orleans, Louisiana. The other time was in Las Vegas, Nevada. I have a suggestion then. <laughs> Strap. <laughs> Instead of getting shit face drunk, maybe you only get piss face drunk. Thank you, Rob. No uh, I, I, if I had known you in my early twenties, I feel like you would have maybe able to been been able to lead me through some some t- <laughs> some petty <laughs> times. <laughs> that um, Britney Spears when she got married, she got married at um. Uh, the little white wedding chapel mm-hmm. yeah. in uh, Las Vegas. Yeah. For That's like 48 hours. Too. Yeah. That was interesting. Funny enough. That's where Justin Birch got married. Yeah. Shout out to my boy, Kevin Federline. <laughs> cool. yeah, that, was, that was a cool. Come- <laughs> Although it wasn't Kevin Federline when he, uh, who she married. She married, I think his name was like Jason Alexander or Justin. Yeah. Alexander. And she married him and then it got annulled in like 24 hours or something. Right? Pass. You'd love it. No. Did who? Oh, who said pass that? Was it you, Rob? No, it was DJ. DJ? No, DJ. Oh. DJ is off the cuff when he's uh, no, not on just, camera. It was, oh, just, it was just in comics. He went nuts. <laughs> DJ went nuts too. Um, like um, Brittany. That's why they both shaved her head that year. Ah, uh, okay. And that's when DJ that was sense. like, if Brittany can't make it, then I can't. that's true. I did shave my head and attack the the paparazzi with an umbrella. Hey, did you? You wild thing. Yeah, and I smelled like corn chips. Did you fl- Did you flash your hoo ha at them in a dress? You know she did a hoo ha flash. She did. She didn't mean to. I don't think. But she was getting into a car. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was getting into the car. Mm-hmm. You guys Always the getting into the car her. shots on paparazzi. Well, I mean. If I had paparazzi <sighs> following me, you guys would think that I'm a. I not not think, a good person. I would think nothing. I would think nothing of you at all, just like <laughs> I do now. Did I did I ever tell you guys that I was dressed up as Wonder Woman and I was out and about, um, and then I stopped at this restaurant with my friend who was taking pictures of me, and I was walking to the restaurant, and some guy in a car zooms over, parks as fast as he can, runs out of his car, and wants to take a picture with me. <laughs> it was so awesome. <laughs> That's cool. That's Justin Birch's life every day. He goes out to the con and they go, "You're fucking Justin Birch, dude! I totally want to get a picture with you. You're my favorite Wait, look, letterer." You ask people it. like, "Are you fucking Justin Birch?" And you think the people he fucks are cool or just Justin? Both. I thought this the first one. It's both actually. Oh. <laughs> Because Justin believes in self-love, so he is the guy who's fucking Justin Birch. He's got a lot of notches <laughs> in the Justin Birch belt. I am Justin Birch. 
Yeah, so you are. I'm going to hop off, guys, and get prepared for this lame-ass 10 o'clock. Who calls a meeting on a freaking Friday? You, asshole. No, it's not me. About 10 minutes, I'm going to my Romania meeting, so there you are. Yeah. Oh, no, the trash is here. I have a sculpture in Romania. Oh, no, the trash is here. I'll meet you you in Romania, Rob. Everybody enjoy the rest of your day. In the mix tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern. Take care, guys. What's happening in the mix? Uh, what's not happening Wacky, on in the wackiness mix. ensues. Tune in to find out. It's six yeah, fifty. Why is the trash already being picked up? I don't know. I don't have answers for you. Hmm. I missed it. I woke yeah, up late. The trash out. So, my par- I've got a party. Our party starting at three p.m. It's a I'm party, gonna, it's a party, it's a party. I'm DJ move. flashing his hoo ha at the next C3 exclusive print by Awesome Mamey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you call that? The roast beef exclusive. It's gonna it's just gonna be DJ spreading his legs and it's gonna be Al Pacino's face going, hoo ha <laughs> DJ mud flap <laughs> variant. <laughs> the cover flaps. Where's cover flap? And it's just <laughs> And then DJ's head in the middle. Labia, labia, DJ head. As lettered by Justin Birch. <laughs> With Justin Birch lettering. I can do it. I can't. <laughs> I want to create a meme with the alien, with the little alien coming out, and the little head of it is DJ Lynx. A DJ Lynx head. I was in Vegas when they demolished part of the desert in back in 01. Randomly. The they only imploded the rest of the, pl- the place in 04. They took down uh, Terribles, the casino. They just demolished it like last month. Well, that they place was terrible, so. Uh, it was on the way to Vegas. It was oh. uh, decommissioned during the decommission. I don't know the word for it. Uh, during the pandemic, and they no. went under. And then uh, a homeless population inhabited it. Oh, is that the, that was a place on the border? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I remember that when you when, yeah when you drive into driving from California into Nevada, it'd be it's right on the border. It's like, yes, sir. I never stopped there ever. Me neither. But uh, I stopped there when in between them demolishing it, and it was like. Everything I've ever wanted from like a post-apocalyptic scene. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was it was really like uh, surreal. I heard there are like towns in China where it's like they're not actually really towns, but these developers wanted to create towns or whatever, and this is why their housing like market is actually just like on a bubble and not real because they mm-hmm. built all these gigantic like complexes and nobody lives in them because like their rental system is absurd. Like you can't actually buy anything. You just rent for a number of years. It's ridiculous. That's what's happening to our housing market. I mean, dude, you're not um, uh, incorrect. And, and I actually, it's worse than in China. It's just like. I was just you know, I saw an way. article. I saw a video, a news report the other day. I was talking actually about the fact that like Atlanta has. Like something like eighty-five percent of the house, the homes for rent are owned by one of three companies. That they basically they've these these companies have acquired all the Black homes, Rock and then, the then they they set the the rental rates, and then nobody can. There's no free market left on it, nope. which helps just needs to drive it up. Moving toward a word that people shouldn't like. Nope. Yeah, that's the right there. Quick. All right. Oh, anyways, just thank the for that. Yeah, it's been it's been hitting some some news outlets here lately with a uh, with BlackRock. It's the company that's caught the most attention for buying up these entire neighborhoods and stuff. Yeah, all that's I know what... is I got Legion of Comics trying to convince me that I should move out to Georgia, and what I hear is you know about companies that own all the real estate or all the homes to rent, and that the mail doesn't get there for thirty fucking something days. And oh, did I say they're buying up all the homes here in Augusta? 
no, you didn't say it, but I mean, okay. the news, the news. So uh, what the news uh, is telling you, is you need to move so. fast and also thank God that they're addressing the slow mail dilemma. You know what I'm talking about? No, I'm talking about. They're getting it ready for you, Rob, is what's happening. They're prepping your landing zone. Nice. Ah, uh, well, yeah. Ladies That'll be a whole what, new conversation when it's. What's that? What's new with you this week? Twenty thirty. Oh. Uh, Twenty thirty. Write that down, Rob. I've been busy. It just um, you know, having to do my job. Oh, there's a reason not to go to Georgia. <laughs> no. Um. Oh, yeah. I, uh, Burke's not. It's there kind of anymore. stressful at my lab right now. Um. <laughs> Like, um, love you, Burke. The uh, National Cancer Institute. So, here's a problem with academia. The problem with academia is that we rely on grants. So, basically, you have to beg for our supper. And the grant institutions like the NIH or the NS, uh, NSA, or sorry, NSI, and um, the uh, NCI, National Cancer Institute, they're fickle. So what they'll do is they'll grant you money and then they'll come back later when the grant sending is like, oh, we actually overpromised too much money. So we're going to go and take money away that we promised all of you from your programs. And then now that they, they, they won't last, like you can't actually execute what you wrote a grant on. And so it's just like, this isn't honest. This isn't, this isn't transparent that like, it's like business is more honest than this. Okay. Like, just doing straight up in, in industry is more open than this shit is. And so my um, boss is like, he comes from pharmacy and, and industry. And he's like, I think we should just go public and make our own little company. And then we don't have to worry about these bullshit grants and then fucking around with us. And I'm like, Steve, I can see like, I mean, he was just in Paris, like doing um, a meeting, like a merger meeting with another scientist buddy of his to try and get some shares and it's like if you're that big i would do it industry like academia i've been in academia most of my life and i can tell you with great confidence it's broken like it's broken does that mean that it doesn't put out like it still puts out really smart individuals but it puts them in a fucking surf system like where they it's it's just fucked up it's not normal you also have the you also have the issue where like some of the problems of the grants are like they're basically they're set up where like they specify what is, so they set up what they expect the expectations to be that you do and so you yeah, have to adapt, you have to adapt your research to what they want instead of what you're trying to actually sometimes what you're actually trying to find well here's the way it is is like a lot of times is that you won't get grants unless you write a grant about really boring really safe science that nothing that it doesn't really matter but it's what people care about so you'll get money for that and what people try to do is the actual research they care about because the real rock star research the research that might make headway the research that might be a little dangerous the research that might fail as research should never gets funded and it's so like you guys are just a bunch of fucking pussies like i'm so, <laughs> just like I'm, I'm i'm sick of it um, it's a political game. It's a good old boy system. And it's all about what they think is popular at the time. And it's like, if you've got great science, you may not ever get it reviewed because the five reviewers don't think it's cool. You know, what's interesting is Justin Birch and I were just talking about this the other day, and he just said those exact same things. I bet to he me. did. He's an insightful motherfucker. It's true. Yeah. So he said Stan Sakai like 30 times in his description of the same problem. <laughs> okay, got it. Academia yeah, right. Stan S Sakai is that's a Well, he was blaming Stan Sakai for the pro for the problem where the grants weren't actually funding science that mattered. It's true. Stan Sakai is the sole reason academia has not progressed and I think that if we get rid of Stan no we can't get rid of him. Well, yeah, but that's like that with all all disciplines of science, right? Like it has to be cool in order to be feel safe. Like it'll make money or be worth it. Like underwater. But uh, that's the thing. Um, underwater it was exploration never... is like limited to shipwrecks almost because shipwrecks are cool. Kind yeah, of. Yeah. But you know? like, here's the thing is that academia and science is supposed to be about research and, and 
learning new things and expanding our universe through yeah. knowledge. But it and requires, it money, requires that. money. That's why it's such a slow and moving. And so process. when you say that, when you yeah. get to these big institutions, it never ends up about research and it always ends about ends up with money. And so then you don't really discover anything that fucking interesting. It's just a bunch of bullshit science. That's not really that helpful. Well, if we're being honest with each other, like I can tell you about this spider goat, right? So we know that there is some give and take here. John Romita senior, by the way. No, so no, no, freckles. you're talking about a goat with, we don't have to get into the weeds about this. Spider. We don't have to get into the weeds about the spider goat. I'm just saying there is some cool stuff that happens. It's just unfortunate the slow moving pace at which it all happens. And it could happen a lot faster if they were more risky Science, with their yeah. finances, but right. Yeah. So because take some because chances, have some fun. Let's discover some shit guys. That so back in the, like when we had the space program and things like that, this That's is when money. we were wanting to do these. And you know, it was the whole venture with the atom bomb. That's a, yeah. Unfortunately that had real world implications, but if you can get that, those people, just like the DNA, the double helix was discovered just after, you know, that shit. So it's like a lot of great things. And that's not happened anymore. Shout out to oh, the microscope. You know what? <laughs> um, it just reminded me. Oh, Rob's heading to his meeting. It is 10 a.m. Justin, they keep stealing your uh, smoke bomb thing. I like that I've become a trend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're the the OG Nightcrawler. So if you win a uh, an award, are we all gonna win an award? Me? Who are you talking uh, yes, to? Yes, I, I will you thank know, all of you. Thank you. Cool. Please do it individually. We don't want to be like and thank my YouTube pals. Like, don't do it like that's that's cheap. But mostly yeah. thank, mostly thank me. Oh, yeah. yeah, we need individual names. Yeah, and if you could say something personally about me encouraging you in your calligraphy, mm -hmm. that would that would go nice. Maybe if you could say something about academia being broken and thanking me for that. <laughs> yeah, take, take yeah. just have a Native American lady go up to accept the word on your yes. behalf and just talk about academia being broken. <laughs> cool, Marlon Brando. Maybe some tears. Some fake yeah. tears. <laughs> AR is fine. Says aggressively if you need to address him, you know. Shareholders want their money. You dang right, Canadian survivalist. It's it's all about the money, and unfortunately, when it becomes about that, things get mm, values change. One hundred percent on the same yeah. topic of shareholders wanting their money. What do y'all think about the Joker two trailer? To what? Never I seen didn't it. See it yet. So I think, oh, is it supposed to be like a musical style, right? Well, before, yeah. like, like yeah, they released the first trailer last week, and you really got to watch it to uh, kind of frame some context to it. Your opinion is going to shift one way or the other. No matter what, it's not going to stay where it was, whether you're for it or against it. So I saw the first Joker, and I thought mm -hmm. it was an excellent movie. Yeah, it's a phenomenal film. But, you know, it may be for slightly different reasons than other people, but I thought it was an amazing movie. Um, I love Joaquin Phoenix. Mm -hmm. he's, Kyle, he's did, you, did you watch, first off, did you watch the first Joker movie, Kyle? Yes. Did you see the trailer for the second one yet? No. I really liked the first one, though. Yeah. Like, uh, it made me feel it made me feel uncomfortable in like a good very, way. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it very delivered sad. on its intention. Yeah. It definitely did. Well, yeah, I so what I thought Joker was was just like a testament to how much the system fails. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that's that's valid. Like, I, it, was, it was meant to, you know. I yes, it was a great insight. Like, like, no, why Joker was failed. Off the rails. Right? Joker was failed, and mm -hmm. we have a class A street level villain because he got failed every time, and and that's what you see, and and. He, he basically at the end shows us our gross failure by slaughtering, you know, the, the talk Live show on television. Yeah. Yeah. The extreme yeah. conclusion of that. Yeah. yeah. That was, it was wild. I uh, thought it was well-made like, film, but it was, it was painful. Kyle, are you capable it was of like, uh, like muting your mic and checking the trailer out for Joker 2? I, I really, really want to get your take on it, to be honest with you. Sure. 
because for those that don't know, Kyle Kyle is a movie guy in the in, in his own perspective. Like he's he's participated in some films. Uh, not talking about the snuff films. We'll leave those out of the discussion. But, uh, he, he, Mark. No, we don't want to talk about Kyle snuff films. That's for later <laughs> stream. I have but, some uh, filmography that is not appropriate. That is very true. Yes. Yep. And then uh, <laughs> he had some filmography of some films that people might have seen and not realize that he was there participating as extras and stuff. So he he's a lover of film. And he's also, I would say, a, a weird individual. So uh, that's my that's his best quality about him. It's his uh, like me and Kyle love. It's it's actually shit. a compliment. Like I'm yeah. not. Yeah. yeah. So me and Kyle love giving each other shit about the way that we watch the same things because we watch them so differently and can pull stuff yes. out of them so differently. And that's that's what's fun about not just comic books but movies as well. You know, is yeah. is how vastly different we all can watch the same thing. And uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, with the Joker, and different, completely different opinions of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So with the Joker two being prefaced as a musical, that's really hit people differently. One thing that. I called back on, especially after seeing the trailer is the first one has so many quiet scenes where just music's playing and you're watching Arthur alone, like just doing like the weird contorting and dancing and stuff and, and watching and, him observe people. Yeah. But you know, I was just silent. There was no dialogue. Yeah. It was just like the, uh, the music you'd have like that classical music playing, like when he would go into those moments of like extreme isolation, almost where he's trying to process these feelings and he's completely processing them in an unhealthy manner that kept compounding into the inevitable conclusion of that film with His Joker. Two, into madness. Yeah. So with Joker two, now that you insert this feeling that he has, and he states it in the trailer, he says, what we're all not talking about and what we should all be focusing on is I'm not alone anymore. So like if you take those same moments of extreme isolation in the way that he was processing those emotions and just insert Harley Quinn where he's not alone anymore and you still give him those moments of like descent, this is what it'll look like without him having to descend by himself. And I think that's what these musical these musical moments of the movie are going to deliver is him descending with a partner this time. Mm -hmm. And I think if that's what they do like this, this has Oscar nominations painted all over it already. It's like the perception of love through two mad minds. Right. And then. The yeah. actual, you know. And what's cool. What's going to be cool is if like they can tackle it in such a nuanced detailed way of how like, that isolation drags you down in the wrong direction. How like that codependency of an unhealthy, volatile, extreme version of it. You can just, not only are you descending, you're pushing each other down and dragging each other along the way, you know, mm -hmm. I think it'll be cool. And I also like, there, I have some thoughts like, you know, I don't, what, you know, like the big twist with the first one is a lot of the stuff we saw was all in his head the whole time. It didn't really happen. What if Harley's not a an inmate with him? What if it it is his doctor, and he just we're just seeing her how he sees her as a, as his equal, as his partner, as his love versus his doctor that's treating him. Yeah, I mean, it's could all be part of his head, or she could be another mentally ill person on the street. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Either or. It'd be it would be interesting. I'm definitely gonna see it. Um, simply because the first one, um was really i thought really powerful scott needs a blow up doll harley is a 400 pound prison guard named chet <laughs> <laughs> shout out the weird science yeah chet, Ooh, <laughs> chet. <laughs> chet. oh yeah i love that movie Big pile yeah. of shit yeah. <laughs> man i turned him out yeah scott needs a blow up doll oh you mean another for the collection <laughs> He hoards everything. Have you guys seen the real dolls and like the stories of the men that like fucking fall in love with real dolls and like have them as wives and shit? Oh my God, no. It's I think I was in middle school back when HBO still did like Thursday night, like the, the real sex show and they like segmented those when they were first uh, coming out and they had one of those crazy Weird. guys on there. It's like, this is my wife. There's more than one. <laughs> the camera goes <laughs> in there. 
It's like I like to do her hair, and she looks so pretty, and we talk she, to each other. She's, I remember, I remember seeing she's her just sitting in the before the furries or whatever. She's thing. sitting what in the she's sitting in the chair face. or on the couch just with this face. <laughs> <laughs> she's interested in everything I tell her. Like <laughs> she cares so much about me. I'll like dress her up in her in, in her nightgown. <laughs> <laughs> we sleep together. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> in the mail, it's a bit muddy. I don't get that reference. Mm. Unless it's a junkyard Joe package. Mm. Muddy. Muddy. I have to give up OA to afford a real doll. I like I like the fact that you've checked the price on them though. <laughs> Email, what is the muddy reference? I don't get it. Look at Kyle just studying this thing. He's just drawn into it. <laughs> I might have to leave because I'm not. I can't hear it right. I'll, I'll leave and come back. Hold on. What can you not? You don't have a cell phone. No, I, but I, it's just better in my headset. I'll see you guys in a few. Yep. Swampy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now I get it. Cool. He. What he's referring to is the new merch. Oops. I've got the uh, not swamp thing merch that got posted. I love this stuff. I love this this logo. This design is fantastic. It's not a, a logo. It works good as a, a shirt design. You know, like everything doesn't have to be a logo. You get a cool design in there. Boom! It's a little swamp style with hashtag not swamp thing on it. Yeah, it's super cool. I gotta knock the head out of the list. Yeah, with an A. Swamp Fang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do have to get in there and uh I think I already did take the hat off. I did a test uh test run with one of the hats because the uh, hats are actually embroidered, they're stitched, and you can only use up to so many colors, it just doesn't come out crisp enough for me to want people to you spend money on it and then not right, be man. happy with what it came out. I'm editing a video where I painstakingly explain beyond a shadow of a doubt that Joker takes place in the Halle Berry Catwoman universe. <laughs> AR, Swamp you are dying. special man. Swamp dying. You are special man. Let's see uh, what the Joker choose like dislike ratio is. Huh? I have the holy crap, thirty-one million views in this trailer. Good God. Okay, yeah, people are excited for it. Eight hundred and ninety-four thousand thumbs up, and only twenty-five down. Ooh. So it's it's gotten a very positive response by the internet. I uh, I reactivated my dislike counter on YouTube. I'm my How YouTube. How do you reactivate like, it? I'll I'll message you. Uh, like uh, the the. Uh, my YouTube looks like it was before it was bitchified, before they thought mm. people didn't want to know feelings. Before yeah. feelings, before they before they assigned feelings for us, right, right. <laughs> they didn't want to. Get us, we don't want. What's to crazy is if it's you, if what it is. It's corporations trying to protect their properties because if you put out a video, you can still see how many dislikes you get. If some, if the internet comes for you and wants to be mean to you, you still get to see how many numbers it is but nobody else can. So what it is is when Disney drops an Acolyte trailer, they don't want the world to see that the world hates this. They want to be able to say, we dropped this and it got this many views. Oh, they want to protect That's the fact that it didn't, even if it, like they wanted to get good right, reviews, yeah. but if it doesn't, it's They don't protected. want that snowball to start rolling. You know, the people that see like, yeah. yo, this has like, 10, this has a hundred times more dislikes. I wonder why everyone dislikes this. And then they start thinking and looking for answers and discovering things. They don't want that hive mind to uh, take over stuff. And YouTube's participating in uh, hive mind steering is, public opinion. Can be dangerous. It's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah. yeah. But it's, yeah. I, it's I don't really thing. usually think it's a good thing. It's just a thing. It's not good or bad. Yeah, it's just hive mind. Yeah. It can, it can work both ways. Good, but. Yeah. Well, I think it's, as with anything, the negativity stands out a lot more easily. You know what I mean? I just think of the Borg, man. The fucking Borg. 
I try not to they think gave of the hive mind a bad rap. Yeah. Like, I can't remember just, the hive mind having a good rap now that you're really thinking about it. They, they don't. They <laughs> it doesn't. just doesn't. It's not a good, not a good place. Justin, what's some of the more recent reads for you this week, man? Actually, I'm right here. Oh, it actually said, because I've been, uh, actually, yeah, I read, um, so with some of the ones you got. Yep. I just realized they put them in a different spot and they usually have them in. I'm reading uh, Batman the Imposter. I'm almost done with that one. That's pretty good. One of the few. Andrea Sorrentino's art in that is fantastic for yeah. one. I love Sorrentino. Oh. Yeah, have you have you finished it yet? No, I'm not finished. I'm on. I'm reading. I'm reading the third issue. Um, okay, so you're you're today. well past the part. Like some of the, I think some of the most notable parts of that series was kind of highlighting how uh, Batman gets around so well. You know, he he plants motorcycles here and there, on, like subways. He hooks up lines through the city so that he can repel. Like I thought that was genius to kind of like set the method for him to get around so fast. He home alone traps the Gotham yeah. City. Yeah, <laughs> to work in his favor. Yeah, that's how yeah, that you was do. a good one. And who wrote that? Was that Tomlin? No, this is uh, Mattson Tomlin. Yeah, sorry, Tomlin. Mattson yeah, Tomlin. I think it's said Tom. I think I thinking Tom Taylor. No, no, Tomlin. No, Tomlin. So that, that book was heavily, uh, heavily tied to the release of the Batman. You can tell from the art style, and they talk about it in some articles early on. But yeah, I, I enjoyed it a whole lot. What else you got over there? What else you packing? He's got a lot of books, man. Yeah, he reads yeah. shit. I, it's gone down a little bit, though. I used to read like 30 comics in like spam two weeks. I had like, so I have a lot of time in my hands. So I have a job yet. Um, but I've been trying to dwindle it down because I've been applying to jobs. I don't want to have like 30 books from the library. I returned a certain time and have to also work. Yeah, yeah. When you say books, you're referring to like collected volumes too, aren't you? Yeah. 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 Not even. These, I, I've been trying to get into my collection too. Yeah. Of copies like this of uh, Robin and Batman by Jeff Lemire. Again, I'm on the third and final issue today, but that's been really good. I think I only read issue one of that one. Yeah. Beautiful artwork in it, though. That's the uh, guy who just the guy who did the art in that is the guy who just did a. Uh, uh, it's called Buy Me Com Buy Me Toys and Comics. It's a shop over in Indiana. They did uh, special covers for the Ghost Machine stuff. A beautiful art. Uh, I don't want to go to work. And don't go. Call out. I'm not going to call out. I'll probably just work remotely and then go to the party. I just pictured you at home with a PlayStation controller splitting atoms. That's exactly, <laughs> that's exactly what I do. That's exactly how I do my job. Ordering margarita machines and shit. Yeah, it's kind of sad, man. It's kind of sad to see, like, I busted my ass so hard in a lab for so long. And got treated like a really shitty got all these publications and then i come to a job where it's really a lot easier i get one and a half times like i get 50 percent more pay um and it's ex so much less stressful it's it's disheartening because it's like uh you can't do science really and have a good time because <laughs> it's just not it's not fun <laughs> we could have told you that as early as middle school <laughs> um i uh i love science it's the people that make it uh the problem i think we realize that usually it's that's the case with anything no. what else you got justin top read of the last two weeks what stands out the most in your memory i mean it's a reread but i'm getting back into um sin city oh nice that's yeah. a goodie dude i haven't read that since like the early 2000s it's good and that's but when I read it too. The early I probably read it in about oh four, oh five. And then and I, I, re I remember burning through it when I first started working at the LCS. It was my my first job, and uh, seeing all those spines lined up on the shelf with the connecting spines and stuff, I'm like, I want to check this out. It was it was wild. Like, yeah, was a good experience. Yeah. Gritty. 
Um, have you seen the movie, Justin? No, that's why I'm rereading it. It's to oh. refresh my memory so I can watch the movie right after. I think it's like, amazing. Yeah, yeah, you gotta you gotta do like a post or something with your thought comparisons on them. Then oh, Mickey Rourke's performance, well. just yeah, Mickey Rourke steals the show for sure. He does usually anytime he's in a movie. He's such a good actor. Yeah, um, I feel bad for him, you know, because he does have so many like personal life problems. He's like haunted, but he's a br he's a brilliant actor. Yeah. To be fair, he I looks like, like a I like Elijah Wood him. in there too. I thought that was great to see. Oh. No, E-Man, we've Frodo. got Justin Birch, the letterer, Justin Comics, the comic reader reviewer, and then we have the other Justin Comics who can clean and pressure comics. And you can find mm -hmm. his link in the description. The Justin Three of Comics are never allowed to be in the... Has changed Three of us are uh, never allowed to be in the same place at once. No, you can't cross the street. I feel like a portal's going to open or something. It will. That's the thing. And Satan will come out. <laughs> That made me miss Department of Truth, man. That that book needs to get back on. It's is coming it, back, it I believe, in like June or July. I saw this list. So yeah, it would be whatever the most recent list were. I believe June. Because they haven't June. released July yet. You know, I'm so ready for that to come back. Out of all the James Tynan stuff, like that has, hands down, has been like my favorite. I enjoyed Was Nice it? House on the Lake a lot. And we're getting a, a sequel to that as well. It's like Mediocre House on the Farm or something. <laughs> but uh, we are definitely getting a sequel to Nice House coming from DC as well. Has that officially been announced? Yes. <sighs> Damn it. Here it is. Why are you planning on lettering it? <laughs> I Curi don't curious know. Question. Okay. I mean, you're allowed to say if you're going to work on something, right? Oh, wait, wait. I, I get what you're saying. I'll send you the the link to the article that officially announces it, so you can you can speak on it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to work. I just want to buy. I'm wondering so what Justin is saying is that he's going to be lettering Nice House sequel, but he's not allowed to tell anyone that until the embargo of talking about it is lifted. I guess. Oh. Can I show you something I got? Sure, go for it. It's fire. Ready. I'm going to show you some fire. Put some smoky bear putting out the fire. That was Dave oh my God. I'm going through the chat to get the link. And it's, it's, been, it's called Nice House by the Sea. And it was announced. Uh, what day is this? What day of the week am I looking at? Tuesday. This uh, past I'm, Tuesday? Yeah, this past Tuesday. Again, I'll I'll forge you the... Uh, I've even got... There's even art for it that they're showing in the article. I don't know what else to show you. I just sent it to you. Oh, already. okay. Well, well, in that case, I'm actually working on the second issue as we. Yeah, look. Yeah, uh, I'm working on issue two now. There we go. That's why you didn't answer me when I asked you what you were working on. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's issue two. What are you showing us, Lady Fantastic? Oh, well, I just showed you. It's just Smokey the Bear. I was looking down trying to find that link. I was trying to tell you not to get into fucking forest fires and shit. Oh, that's super dope. It looks like you got to shove a shovel up Bambi's ass. He's gonna put he's gonna knock Bambi the fuck out and bury him. It looks like him and little Yogi are going home to have dinner. Got one, yeah. son. Let's go. Guess on the first day. So very cute, very cute. Anyways, it's gonna be nice house by the season. It's gonna be twelve issues. Cribbing a term from TV and perhaps TV's current prediction for spinning limited series into multiple anthology style seasons versus the first book, which found a group of friends trapped in a house at the end of the world with an otherworldly being who tricked them into being there, obstinately to save them. The next book finds a group of strangers in a house by the sea by their own choice. The people in this house do not like each other, shared Tynan via a press release provided by Atomic Book Club. They don't want to spend time with each other. There have been some weak bonds that have formed over time, but none of them are particularly affectionate toward each other. This <laughs> is a house of strangers' intention, much more than a house of friendship, where we're going to see a way that guilt, boredom, and loneliness has twisted each of them. 
The cast is brought there by a character named Justin. Max. That's it. The portal's opening now. The character named Max. He knows each of the people involved. The, <laughs> so they don't know each other. Max offers to save them from the end of the world, and they all accept because they think they're best of the best. They include the doctor, the writer, the historian, the actor, the artist, the priest, the scientist, the singer, and the politician. And last but not least, Justin. Okay. The mathematician. Yeah, him too. And like our lake house, everyone in a nice house by the sea accepted the deaths of all their friends, family, and loved ones. <laughs> they accept the eradication of the human race, and they're selected as the last humans that will ever exist. It's a truth some of them think they can live with, but the way they are living with it is by never, ever looking at it. Sounds good. Sounds like how billionaires think. Yeah. Don't look at it. Just don't. No. I cannot wait for this book. I'm hoping that it does not have delays like the first nice house on the lake. Yeah, that mid that mid series break, man, that that ruins the momentum of its release so much. And then they feel like they have to give you like that issue seven is such a throwaway issue. Because like, let's just review what y'all read the last six issues. Like, yo, we have when we have does questions. issue when does issue one come out? Why did why did you say that? God, I just closed it. <laughs> Nice house on the lake to head see this summer. I don't I don't have a date sitting in front of me yet, but it says the summer. I can try to look at solicitations, I guess. Uh, I think I, I'm only asking because it seems like they're trying to work ahead. Oh, that's good. Which is a new concept for me. <laughs> Okay, pretty sure you guys put my I put my Marvel cards in these. It's listed on League of Comic Geeks already too, Justin, with the A cover. July twenty fourth, twenty twenty four. So we're uh, what? It's April. We're like three months out. Yeah, so it's uh, the credits are writer James Tiny the fourth, artist Alvaro Martinez Bueno, colorist Jordi Belair, and letterer and world design. I hate how that your company does that, bro. Uh, so it's I've requested, I've requested to be credited as AW's Dustin Birch, and uh, they did for like five issues on house of slaughter and then they just default back to the old way in the most recent issue. <laughs> so I, I don't know. <laughs> What's up, Durs? Durs? Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of crappy they do that. Durs alert. When, the biggest is... X-Men fan in the chat, Durs. Is he? No. I thought he was the biggest Fallout fan. No, Halo. He He's not an X Men fan, but he uh, has been very impressed What's and started to buy X Men products after watching the show. So I've nice, there we go. that means a show Hell. well done. Show yeah, well I told done. him Hell has frozen over the day Durs is into X Men because he I, mean, like I think that's a high water mark for a successful movie show or something when it makes you want more, it sends you out to. Dive deeper into the fandom. I always love hearing that. X Men's about the only thing Marvel's got going good for them right now. That's coming from a Marvel head. Wow. Hey, this is coming from a Mar Marvel head. Oh. X Men fan too. Coming, it's coming from a quality head. Yeah. Coming everyone from goes bitch. through. Everyone goes through the same stages. I went through them too. I just went through them a lot sooner than a lot of people. I'm like, yo, this sucks. I don't I say. Suck. I mean, it hurts me. Like. I'm and not then, a, like, like that's then why I, I don't hold out, I hold out hope. I continue to spend money, time, and effort, and stuff. Then I get to the point where I'm jaded, and that's where it's I'm at a now. shitty relationship. Jaded. It's like you're mm -hmm. with a lover that doesn't give a I fuck. Still fuck about I still love them. Yeah, you yeah. you still love the characters. You love the they be hitting me, and, and I still love them, bitch. Like I don't care I, how much they I beat can, me. I can I can change him. 
I know. <laughs> change. Can change. Yeah, oh like it, it makes sense. You want to hold out hope and everything, and we all we all hang I'm in. Sure, we'll have time. kids with the change. No. Marvel is still killing it with the Ultimate Universe. Just saying nothing compared to that. Yo, the I think they're crushing it with the, this new Ghost Rider run. We're only two issues in. I'm I'm I read Who's issue writing. Two. Uh, Benjamin Percy's still on it, so there's no reason it shouldn't be fantastic. We just switched, like, Johnny Blaze had the spirit ripped from him by Mephisto, and uh, he looked for a new host, and he got uh, the, the Hood, which is a, a fun character not used too often. But, uh, like, the second issue was really fun. I'm a Ghost Rider fan, and, like, I love me, I love me some Hulk, Ghost Rider, and Silver Surfer when it comes to Marvel. Like, those are things, like, I, when it comes out, I'll, I'll always try it. Always. Well, Hulk, I'm, just, I'm not a fair weather fan. Because we want to hurt you, Eman. So we had a meeting and we said, look, guys, let's not talk about Cobra Commander. So Eman's world will be hurt. That book and is not overlooked by me. I, I it's in like I haven't read this week's issue yet, man. Today's my today's my first day free from the uh craziness of my master's run. That's why I'm I'm like I'm gonna put on a comfy shirt. I'm gonna wake up early like I, I normally would and just get ready for my day and rock and roll into it but yeah I'm, I'm massively excited to do some car line reading the wife's at work so i'll be going to pick up monkers and uh finn and i'll be going to catch up on this week's pool list and i'm just excited for the day excited for the weekend i'm excited to hear what kyle has to say about the joker too hey i distracted and watched two videos uh, i'm surprised if you didn't do that i wouldn't think you're really kyle <laughs> uh yeah, Are the they whole just doing... universe is on fire. We were we were talking about that earlier with Kyle. So yeah, yeah. Are we? Not on this channel. Are is it just cover songs? Like what are what's? So like... that's that's what uh, that's what we're not sure about yet. So like what I'm not sure about. I've heard someone say that that that's one of their they're in for the musical, but mm -hmm. they had heard that they're going to be using like modern cover song. Modern. I was I was told that there's only like one original song and that's it. Yeah, like so, that's. I think you're hearing the same thing I heard. Then okay, that's cool. uh, I don't know. It seems okay. Uh, it still has the same like creepy vibe that How the first one was. It look, though, yeah, like, yeah, it looks. It looks. <laughs> it's insane. They're. It's like a really dark tone. Um, very empty spaces. I don't know. The 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 director is really good, but I don't. I don't know. It, it, mental health is like a really touchy topic. Yeah, I think they so, handle it uniquely too. Yeah, it's definitely. I would say unique is the way to yeah. do it. Um, because I, I, I'm not going to discern that much from a trailer. Um, it looks and, on brand with the first one to me, and that's yes. the biggest thing. Like, I really feel like if you like the first one, this one should 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 do it justice, and then I think it will probably even elevate it. I don't think it's going to come off as like Broadway or anything, um, but I don't know. The casting's good. Like I think Lady Gaga is a good singer. I don't know if she's a good actor, actress. She is a good actress. She is. She's a damn good actress. She. Well, is. I didn't like her. I didn't like her in anything that I've seen. Her. Oh, for context, what have you seen her in? So I would I would say she did pretty decent for American Horror Story, which is early on. But I think the... she fucking killed it in A Star Is Born. Yeah, she's kind of like a baby Barbara her. Streisand, dude. I didn't like A Star Is Born, but wow. that's here, just... I don't. So you're telling me that California Kyle over here with the four day old Rice Krispie treats wasn't into the country music emotional drama Star Is Born film? Correct. I like the Shocker. original. Shocker. I thought it was amazing. Shocker. I don't know. I didn't like the casting. I don't That's think Bradley fair, yeah. Cooper is good at singing. And he's good at acting, huh? He's he's okay at acting, yeah. Yeah. Just okay. He's at good at acting. Have y'all seen him like he's not on my I, he was good in Limitless. I thought Limitless was Limitless, amazing. American Limitless Hustle. Was great, yes. American uh. Hustle was cr cringe to me. He lost like he damaged his body doing that film. Which film are you Limitless. you're talking about where he's the That's FBI agent American Hustler? How did he damage his body? What did he do? Didn't he like lose a bunch of weight and like screw no, his thing? Just, no, he was just a standard FBI agent yeah. on uh I'm Christian Bale's a different movie. Remember? Christian Bale the mechanic was the guy who was 
Hold on, yeah, I'm thinking Christian of a different Bell movie. Christian fucked himself up. Christian Bell goes full method. Christian Bell is in The Machinist, dude. He fucked himself up. Yeah, he, he yeah. gained some weight for American Hustle, and you also had uh, Katniss Everdeen in that one and Lois Lane in American Hustle as well. Right. I'm mixing him up with a different guy. Maybe I got the wrong movie. Name. Matthew, Matthew McConaughey is who I just mixed him up with. Matthew McConaughey. Oh, yeah. For Dallas, Dallas Fires Dallas Club. Dallas Fires Club, Club yes. That's, that's a was. damn good movie. I still love him in Dazed and Confused. That Whenever people say Jared Leto can't act, I'm like, oh, pump the brakes. You're talking about Oscar winning Jared Leto? Like, go watch, go watch anything other than a comic book movie with him in it, and he's phenomenal. He's creepy. Requiem for a dream. Requiem for a dream. Dallas Buyers Club. Uh, Jared Leto is very like his uh, eyes I, are just like so fucking big. And you know his like, brother's his drummer, right? Like he's, he's so fucking cool, man. Do you remember my so-called life? That show, I was obsessed with him. So he was like Jordan Jordan Catalano, I think was his name in the show. But like Claire Danes' character was obsessed with him, and all he would do is make these looks with his big droopy eyes, like. <laughs> nice and she would just be like oh, oh, oh i can't begin to tell y'all how excited i am for him to be starring in tron aries because y'all um, remember y'all remember his role oh. in blade runner 2049 like just like that stagnant like like even kill business dude like I, if he brings that energy to a program like dude he's about to fucking kill this I feel like though, like I'm not trying to hate. Uh oh, hold on. Let me let's here we go. Spew your hate. Let's get it. I'm not trying to hate, but if but, we were to put Christian but, Bale and Jared Leto like side by side, I feel like Christian Bale has insurmountably more talent than Jared. Absolutely. I don't, oh, think, absolutely. That's, I don't think that's the hot take at all. Okay, good then get off my balls. Do you remember Empire of the Sun with Christian Bale? I loved that movie. Yeah, you know, when he showed up, he's like, I just want to I just want to eat. That's how <laughs> he got the, him on the aircraft carrier. Spielberg discovered him then, and that's how he got famous. That was his big his big ticket. That's the when I first met him prestige. and first saw him. And I was so I loved blown away that movie. by his acting skills in that movie. Yeah, yeah. he was really and good. He was so young. That yeah. was wild. And in Newsies. Have you guys seen Newsies wasn't, with him? It wasn't Empire of the Sun after American Psycho? No. no. Empire of the Sun, he's a little boy. He's, he's, a, he's a kid. Puberty. He's like 10. Oh. No, he's got to be like I'm like thinking of a different 12. one. Where's the, where the POW? What's the what's the Christian Bale movie where is the POW that uh, finally gets know, rescued by the end of it? He's like about. ninety pounds. And, yeah, like when they when they finally rescue him and get him onto the aircraft carrier and he's finally safe, done traveling. He's like ninety pounds, like in real life. Like it's scary because you watch him in the movie lose real weight. And you're like, this is insane. Yeah, I heard for the when he did the machinist or the mechanist, I heard he was machinist, eating like an yeah. apple. Yeah, an apple or like two a, a an raw apple egg. Day. Yeah, it was nothing and like cigarettes. It was like a cigarette. Jesus. appetite. He <laughs> was eating cigarettes? No. And smoking oh, apples? Smoking apples? Smoking <laughs> tobacco oh, through apples. Yeah. Apple cigarettes is all you ate. Uh, that reminds me of high school. Yeah. If you're you, did us, <laughs> you did a lot of crazy shit in high school. We all did. No, I didn't do shit in high school. I did all my crazy stuff in college. Same. I, I was like, I was. In yeah, yeah, I was I was an observer in high school. Yeah, and then I I, I decided to take place in the um, debauchery in college. I was, was like, more Let's accessible. Go. Let's try it. I didn't have to so go I was like home 20 years afterwards. Old. The first time I ever tried pot, I was twenty years old, and I was at a party and was like, a part, we were drinking or whatever, and they were in a room, and like I was so buzzed at this point, and then they apparently somebody had a water bong, and they were all taking it, and they were like, all you gotta do, because I was like, how do you work? What is this? They're like, all you gotta do is just put your mouth over it and breathe in. That's all you gotta do, and then like so I did that, and then I was like, I feel bubbles rushing to my head, and then like we went to we drove to raising canes because like. You get stoned and you get the munchies. And yeah. I couldn't find the box that you fucking talk into. 
I was so stoked. <laughs> <laughs> I put it inside the box. So okay. I just drove up and it's like four of us. And I was like, and they're like, it'll be, you know, 17, 16. And I'm like, no, that's it. I couldn't find your box. I'm going to need four Texas toasts, you know, like three. Stat. Yeah. They were just like, <laughs> I, can't, I couldn't find their box. That's amazing. <laughs> the uh, with the the first time uh, that I ever like smoked out of a bong, yeah, it was uh, I didn't understand <laughs> the concept behind it, and Me like you either. you would you would hear them like do bubbles, right? Yeah, so the I bubbles. figure like I figure the same thing as like blowing bubbles in your milk, bro. So <laughs> I I take the bong and I just blow oh, into no. it. Oh my god. <laughs> And and everything just goes everywhere. There's Bro, water everywhere. Really <laughs> and then they gave and me then instructions. Uh, they said breathe uh, in. Yeah. <laughs> those instructions. I just wanted to make bubble noises. So, <laughs> so uh, when I was born, Ar, um, my mom had to have a C-section, and like they tried to have me naturally and use the cup or whatever, like the mm -hmm. suction cup to get me out or whatever. But apparently, like that made my head massive. And my mom's best friend, who worked with her, her name, his name was Donnie, and he called me headquarters for like the first month of my life. <laughs> hey, look, little headquarters. <laughs> my head was so you big. don't make fun of newborn babies. <laughs> hey, I think they it's fine. Like, they, they, they all look Dawn. like aliens, anyways. The they do. The, uh, POW one, rescue Dawn. Okay, that's that's yeah. it. Because the um. Empire of the Sun is old school, 80s. And John Malkovich was in it. Yeah. There's a, there's, I I love a good John cast. Malkovich. He's awesome. Yeah, he's great. He's he's oddball, but I love it. That's oh, his best so qualities. Bad. Oh, yeah. Crazy. Just like uh, Goldblum. I love Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, he and the fly will always be amazing for me. No, oh, Cronenberg. That's weird shit. Cronenberg got weird shit. Video drum. I never saw the new one with uh, Robert Pattinson. He did. It was like Cosmopolitan or something like that. I haven't seen that. I I've not. I don't think I've ever seen a movie with Robin Pat Robert Pattinson Pattinson in it. Oh, you like, never watched Twilight? He's no. he's pretty he's he's pretty fun to look at. I, think. I never saw Twilight. I never read Twilight. That I never man. saw Harry Potter. I was forced to read the first Harry Potter, and it wasn't my, my favorite. I've I haven't seen, seen any Potter. of the Harry Potter films either. My wife I've and Monkey them. Monkey loves them. Yeah, my a lot monkey, of like, my brother read all the Harry Potter books, loved it, um, saw all the movies, but it was like it was too kiddy. It was too kiddy what for me have? for that shit. Uh, what up, Kevin? Good morning, everybody. Okay, you're clocking in from work. Oh hell! At the show, dope. Do -do -do. Yeah, real time Do -do -do. entertainment tonight. Wow! Uh, real time, inter yeah, real time, Bill yeah. Mar. Yeah, you're a real time. I love that show. This is, a, you know, this is one of the questions I actually had. Is if I, even though I'm, I don't have any subscribers, can I still do a membership? Because one of the things I could provide is like concert access, behind the scenes, you know, things like that. Oh, uh, could you do a Patreon? I'm not sure. You can set up a Patreon. Yeah. Do you get yeah, to but I, I wouldn't even want to charge people. The reason why is I only have 230, 230, 230, 230 subs, so I could actually invite everybody and not worry about it. <laughs> I, I think you can uh, you can set up a membership tier now at 500 subscribers to, uh, despite the uh, watch hours or something. Really? I think so. They you changed the rules. The threshold. Yeah, they yeah. lowered the threshold, but with Patreon, with YouTube, there has to be a minimum charge of 99 cents. And uh, I think with Patreon, you can set up a Patreon with free access. Interesting. All right. I'm going to have to look into that then. Yeah, that's probably the right route. So hey, man, how's everyone doing? I'm sorry? E-Man asked if you're in Southern California. Yeah, man. I'm in, uh, if, you, if you're anywhere near Manhattan Beach area, look me up, man. I'll buy you ice cream. <laughs> no sprinkles. He means like no sprinkles. I'm there. He's he's north 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 Cal. Oh, uh, E-Man is. Yeah. E man's in the bay. Ooh, E-Man, you're so basic. Do you get to meet Bill Maher? 
Yeah. I I think yeah. the first time I saw him, I saw him in that movie, um, like Amazon Girls from Outer Space yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, and the that was the first tonight. introduction I got to him. So it's so weird now to see him like be all serious and stuff, you know. Well, now, hey, like, like everyone else, sometimes you have to do things you're not proud of to get into the business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <wow. laughs> but we usually don't talk about stuff like that. <laughs> Should I do? I'll just stare at you, my college shit. The production value on the stream is HBO quality. <laughs> Perfect. There you have it. <laughs> Mm. So everyone reading everything uh, that they were trying to get a hold of this Wednesday? I still got to pick a read. I'm going to catch up in the car line picking up the kids today. Perfect. I'm, I'm reading watched, Transformers. Um, Sweet. I'm, man, that's like one of my favorite. That whole Energon thing is just awesome. Yeah, that's what we just introduced Kyle to it this morning. He was playing catch up. I said, focus on that and Ghost Machine and you'll be happy. Energon and Ghost Yeah, you kind of can't go wrong with those two. Yeah, the, easily the two best quality as a whole things happening in comics. So this is what I've been doing, Mark. Um, I got the Dune number two. I cheated, like you said, and, and got it. Uh, I bought it. Um, you watched and, it first. Yeah, I did. Um, but I've been pairing it, so I've been watching it as an, a single unit, one and two. Like, and I've done it. Probably going to do it again today, and this will be like my third time. But I'm taking it in as a single Villeneuve uh, piece, and um, that when you do it that way, I mean, it's 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 the best. It's the it's best. A masterpiece. It's literally a cinematic masterpiece. It's the best version of Dune that we've got. Um, not necessarily. The most accurate. Yeah, um, I don't think his exclusion of certain aspects of it means that they're not there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel the same way because I think Lord of the Rings, like you can't include everything with extremely dense material. You just can't. So stylistically, you're going to have to make some choices that were not going to make everybody happy. And I think, you know, Villeneuve did what he could. And, you know, little assholes like me who want to see the men tats are just not going to fucking see it. You get the men tats. <laughs> we, get, we get multiple men tats. We get you two. Get, yeah, that's multiple by definition. You get the hard And there, but you, I mean, <laughs> if you read the book, you're just like, okay, everybody's a fucking men tat. Paul's a men tat. Duncan well, is not being a men tat. That that is if fucking Paul is too a man to no, he, he was he was trained by him, but he's not. Yes, he is. Read the fucking book. In the well, I've, I've like dove, I've dove deep into this, like and I, I admittedly I'll have not read it, but that, that was the he's that was the way that he was described. <laughs> Even the way he describes himself in parts of it is that's his um, unique quality is that he's a mentat who's got Benny Jesuit training who indulges in the spice, and that makes him like ideally um, aligned yeah to for sea shit the golden path or whatever yeah the golden shower in your butt. the golden shower <laughs> how the, <laughs> it doesn't make any time? sense yeah just refer back to your video number two Pee into Holding my butthole. Okay, now it makes more sense. Okay. The Puff Daddy <laughs> special. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dev, what are you doing? Production setup? Stage setup? Right now, I'm, um, yeah, we're uh, doing, um, hold on real quick. <laughs> Production. Yeah, we're doing a setup for today's show. And we do a live show. So uh, I'm electric for today. Normally, I, I kind of bounce around and do different tasks. So uh, tomorrow, I'll be on the head audio over at the Shrine Auditorium. Yeah. So are uh, you today like a tech I am uh, an assistant there's... electric. Okay. Gotcha. So you're electric. Um, yeah. Do you know people that are like handlers that have to like deal with the talent? Oh, God, yeah. Because those people are saints. <laughs> uh yeah and they get paid pretty good for that very reason because they know they have to deal with it uh, with the how should i say the, the ego bullshit. of the talent not the talent they're dealing with ego yeah yeah yes you have to I cater to it 
And but there's some of them are so weird, but like you really have to be a special person to be able to have people be cool with you at that. I don't know. I just hate just saying hi to some people. No, I totally agree. You know, I've come across so many people that do so many different types of personal assistant type jobs. I was hoping to be a little clearer than it is right now. I'm actually on the on the third story roof of the CBS Television City. And I was going to show you the Hollywood sign, Griffith Park Observatory and all that, but it's fucking foggy. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. But now yeah, you're in the heart of uh, Hollywood right now. You're, you're in it. I have a friend that lives up in the hills over there. But yeah, fuck, can't let you see. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I tried. Uh, so yeah, I, I end up. Depending on what my job is at the time and who hires me dictates exactly not only my position, but it, del it uh, uh, allocates and delegates my approach to the position because there's times when I'm not dealing with any talent. I'm nowhere near. So it's like, you know, fuck them. And there's times when I have to deal directly with them and I'm like, okay, full diplomacy. <laughs> you know, Went from yeah, it's to always great to meet you. <laughs> Yeah. I think the most successful talent or or whatever assistant has to be Leslie Hedlund, right? She went from Harvey Weinstein's assistant to running Star Wars Disney almost. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, that. that's... Yeah, I really wonder. It, it goes to show you how many masks these people put, you know, put on and how... How much... How little much most people truly know how most people truly are. Because, yeah. again, what we see in a media thing that's portrayed as an individual is not the individual that they truly are. No. It's just a show. It's part of who. I well, I mean, it, and I tell people all the time. They cry and say that Star Wars saved her life. <laughs> like, you heard well, again, who's, who's the most famous person you've met? Uh, pretty much you name it, I've worked with them. Probably us, I guess. The five of us. Nothing Lewis? <laughs> Yeah, Daniel, I, I work with everyone. Yeah, about to say, yes. you yes. with I, that's a person I've yet to meet. I'm dying to meet Justin. Um, <laughs> I got all kinds of shit. I need him to sign. Have you to meet Momoa yet? Yeah, I actually worked with him in the beginning of the year before the Late Late Show went away. We did a couple of uh, skits out here in front in the street. Oh, yeah, so we did good. that. Good. And then the one that he did over in SoFi. Yeah, access um, to a lot of folks. That's awesome. Have you heard so of Noel cool. Kastler? Why have I heard that name? So he was a handler, and he was he did uh, the. He was a fluffer. No, he was a uh, handler, and he handled the Trump family during the uh, Apprentice Celebrity Series. Oh wow! That and was wild. He has a lot of stories. He's got his own YouTube and he has got a lot of stories about behind the scenes stuff. And this was before he was president and stuff. And yeah. When he was a WWE superstar. Yeah. Whoa. Back WWE when he had Hall of Famer. Yeah. Hall of Famer. <laughs> Hall of Famer? Back when rappers thought he, he was cool. I hope not. I think they still think he's cool, but well, yeah, I'm just shy of like 35 years in the industry, so I I I still want to retain my ability to work, so I don't want to yeah. divulge too much. <laughs> and as worry. many as NDAs have I signed in my life, I still got to keep that type of shit in my head. You do, yeah, yeah, you do. So he's out of the business now, right? Um, he he doesn't owe any you know secrecy to anybody because he's no longer right. paid by. But yeah, he 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 tells his stories, and they're they are uh, very. Interesting. I'll put his name in the. Um, you guys can go check him out. Um, if you type in that name, no Noel Kassler and uh, like Trump, he'll on YouTube. You'll uh, you'll get some stories. Yeah, I've definitely oh, I set that. up a couple of Trump things, and the shit that I even saw there is like, oh fuck, I'm, am I the only one seeing this shit? No, no, <laughs> he's. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Noel Kessler said that, like, they had people basically that he would be on, like, speed so much that, like, he would have explosive diarrhea and he would just, like, shit himself. And that they had people that would go and have to take him and, like, get cleaned up because he would stink so fucking bad. And oh. that, like, his kids were awful that, you know, it was just, yeah. And it's like, oh, my God, dude. 
That and is, the exact WWE opposite is true. Hall of Famer. I've met some some gems that are just like, holy shit. You know, I guess you don't like your whole personification of you hasn't gotten to you. You know what right. I mean? So Shatner was just here last week and he is still just a fucking gem to work with. He was the first person I ever put a, a lav, a, a mic, a independent microphone that you clip onto your type tie. Those are lavs. Uh, he's the first person I ever loved up about 20, about 20 years ago. And uh, he knew it. So he was fucking with me. And he, <laughs> he's still the same fucking playful, fun guy to this day. And yeah. here's a guy that can still yeah. be a dick. He could be an asshole. He could sit there and, and bloat himself up with his own ego of all these decades of who he is. You know what I mean? But he isn't. That's not who he is. Yeah. So it's yeah. so fucking cool to deal with shit like that. Kevin, you can love me up any day. Yeah. <laughs> you know who seems yeah, cool? Well, is the Have you ever Yeah, for Miscus, you're not that far away. You know, at some point, yeah. we got to hook up. Got Dude, at some point. Away. At some point, I want to like actually like get back into acting. So, oh, get back you can, into you acting. Can start by acting like a good person on YouTube. <laughs> ah, okay. Have okay. You ever, I, see, Kevin, I see the route. Kevin, have yeah, you ever um, met Glenn Close? <laughs> um, why don't you move you know, the timeline okay. forward a little bit, lady? The complete uh, disclosure. I really don't know many names of many actors because my hangup has always been this. They don't know me. Okay. So I kind of don't go out of my way to know them unless they, I have to directly work with them. Okay. You know, so it's so weird when people are like, da, 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 da. I'm like, okay, if I see them, I'm sure I'd, oh yeah, I work with them. Kevin walks into the room. You don't what know were you, me. What were you saying, Mark? Do I need to move myself closer? I said, move the time, the timeline up a little bit. Like oh, okay. Glenn like, Close is like tuckered out in the early 2000s. He's really. fucking talented as fuck. Still, I like. Oh her. no, no, yeah. no argument there. No argument there at all. Um, but I probably, I'm sure I have every award show that you guys have ever really seen. The Ville. In, oh yeah, in, I know who that is. In yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. I worked. Yeah, in the devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, she was the one I that know exactly. The bunny about. Rabbit in Fatal Attractions. Yeah, yeah. That that's yeah. I worked with that person. Pretty cool. She's crazy talented. Um, did Caroline ever work with and, and down to earth. Oh. That's actually one of those down to earth kind of people. Yeah. Well, she's a big advocate for mental health um, because her sister was really sick. She's just cool. Seems really cool. Just a good person. But, you know, I don't know. You never really know until you, until you come into like you, you know, you, you don't know people until you have to work with them. Right. DJ yeah. Said, Did no. You ever work with Charo? C H A R R O. Charo. Uh, now he was, that's, I've that's worked really hard back in the timeline. So when, when I came in the industry, I, I got in in 1989. One of the first people I did get to work with was uh, Johnny Carson, and I worked oh, with him for a little while. So uh, one of the guests that was on the show was Charles. However, I did the install and I did the out. I didn't get to work the show. Oh, uh, get your so. ass on here, Rat King, Rat King of NYC. Gosh, he can't. For you talk about somebody with an attention span that we need to work on. Is he verse? I love you, brother. Your focus game a little out of whack. <laughs> we need to get you focused. It's no jigs, but yeah, he's still going. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Man. Wow. Speaking of jigs, is he still going on? Did he finally quit? I don't know, but he's he was, was cracking that me was, up. That was epic, was, wasn't it? I was there when he, passed, when he passed out. Kyle and, he was, and I were both there. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I, was I, was there. I feel like back we bonded and, during that time. And then <laughs> Steph Stephanie and I are like, oh, we're going to go since he's like asleep. <laughs> well, that's what was funny as hell is you, you two were there and trying to keep it going. And then all of a sudden I felt, oh, these two feel very awkward. I could tell. They, they don't know how to escape. They feel like they're captives. <laughs> I'm like... Oh, and this is gonna Perry be interesting. Let's see how they get out of this. <laughs> Perry wrote it out like a champ. Perry started singing, and I'm like, and, "What's going and on?" Activating the Alexa in the room. Yeah, I, I, when I turned it back on, I noticed people were were, were messing with his Alexa. 
Which I guess you can't draw on his face or do anything, but you can, I guess you can mess well, with him. Well, they were trying to get the Alexa to uh, <laughs> to wake him up. Turn what I thought was funny is the arms and stuff. And he, he asked Alexa, "Hey Alexa, can you can you give me some alcohol?" And she's like, "No." <laughs> I'm like, and now you know you've been drinking way too much when Alexa tells him, refuses <laughs> Alexa. to give you alcohol. That was awesome. So I gotta ask Steph, how long you've been working on that piece? Uh, a couple months actually. So when you um, when you finish, how long does a piece normally take? A couple months. So I've actually I've been slacking on this one. This one should have been finished, I think maybe a week ago. And I just need to finish it up and get it to the foundry and just get after it. But sometimes I get in, in um, you know, slumps where you're just not creative, you know, or you just don't want to work on your, your art or whatever, your piece, even though it's like my job now. So I don't know. You ever try throwing? No, I hate that. I hate that so much. That's just, that, I, that I don't was like my to forte. I hold that much, you know? I want the freedom to make whatever. Sure. And throwing your you are you're confined to that circle. I used to love throwing. Throwing was awesome. All right, did you make big stuff? Oh, yeah. The, the last thing I made was about 4 feet tall. Nice. And uh, I used a whole 25 uh, pound piece of clay wow it was uh i made a lamp and uh i couldn't finish it it was my last year in uh, school so i just gave it to the i told my teacher to give it to the his best student successive students so oh that's nice yeah so but i miss it tall, watching so you, you work to... made me miss it go ahead watching you work makes me miss it then you should be doing it yeah soon soon i got a backyard so hopefully soon well, you would, if you if you miss it, then you have a passion for it. Then you should be doing it. You know. Yeah, there's it's it, there's a lot to be said for eating a half a bag of mushrooms and just hanging out with a wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about it like that. <laughs> oh, hey, yeah, you get creative. <laughs> it doesn't mean it's keepable. It just means it's creative. It doesn't mean it's good art. <laughs> right. <laughs> I saw um, one where it was like a chick at a kiln, and her cat was on her shoulder. And the cat was like putting its paw in and like oh. warping it. And the person like kept it based on the cat, like warping it and tapping it. That was cute. That I'm is cute. You, my, my brother, um, my brother was a, an artist too. He was a sculptor and he did a lot of throwing as well. And he, my, my grandpa had a farm in Oklahoma with a lot of clay and he dug into the side of the, the side of the creek bed, a whole kiln. He no, dug it out and no. it was clay. That's and cool. then they use that clay to create pots and stuff. And oh. then he stayed there for 24 hours and fired that kiln and did like a raku fire. Oh, oh. Sorry, guys. I was uh, on another tab. Sorry. Got some sorry. weirdos on here. A man's gone. I just thought that'd be interesting for you. Show Boy, your emotions. That e -man. Oh. Uh, it's one of them digital weirdo oh. things. <laughs> I was born in it. It's feeding information directly to his brain. That's awesome. Yeah. What's up, House of X? How you guys doing over there? Oh, that sounded like a rat. Back on Instagram, House of X. What kind of rat, what kind of rat talks like that? <laughs> Spoof rat? The, the way Izzy said that, it sounded like he was about to get down with like a bar or two. Just like... Just chilling. Mob deep. Just don't, don't. Well, I, can't, I can't talk too loud here. I'm in the office, as you could probably tell. Yeah. I'm the officer. have to be under control to some degree. <laughs> yeah, I can't scream. Your, your green screen skills are improving. It's, it's, look, watch, watch how cool this gets. Look, look, I could do this. Ooh, I, I could even grab things from what the you, green screen. Uh, I, want speak, I want to speak for everyone real quick when we say we prefer you in an office setting, Izzy. <laughs> <laughs> For many reasons. <laughs> I wonder why. Well, no, this was the, this was brings the... you a sense of respect and uh, an air of. Uh... You can only you can only escalate to a six instead of the usual eight in the uh, the every now and then nine and ten. Keeps you in keeps you in line. Yeah, we we are in New York still. That's not like it's not going to happen. Yeah, that's why you're at a stagnant six. But at the same time, it's you know the the office is not as crowded today, so. Got it. Because it's we work. We mostly work hybrid. Well, we so. can look forward to those days. 
<clears throat> you're not, you're not gonna you're not gonna get me on the Friday at often on the office. Or yeah, I was gonna say. To have you. Oh, like, I'm I'm never in the office on Fridays. Yeah, yeah. This is the this is probably the first time in maybe. Uh, five years. You're on. You're just on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm never in the office. Period. Well, look at you. <laughs> I don't have a job. <laughs> y'all can y'all can come wrestle jobs. You could you could be in an office and not have a job. It's still possible. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I mean, believe it or not, it actually still is possible. I was hanging out on Jig's Kingdom for like uh, six hours while I was at work yesterday, just grooming dogs. Oh, dude, did you see Jig's pass out? Yeah. yeah. yeah dude, I I how many there. times? There. <laughs> my wife I, called me. It's... I answer my phone for my wife. Caught for like 10 minutes, and I go back to look, and it's just him asleep. <laughs> he passed out that fast. <laughs> Did you see where Perry was activating his Alexa? Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> oh my goodness, that sounds hilarious. Legion, I love yeah, I that. that guy. I love those. <clears throat> I think Comic Journey took it down though, right? YouTube wouldn't oh. upload a stream that long after it goes. There's a there's like a 12 hour limit on like a live stream that it won't process and upload to stay after yeah. that. I so thought there was want, some controversy. We were talking about that, that that might not be true anymore or whatever. But when I went to go look to see if the stream was on. Well, uh, the last time today, Jigs it's got... Like it's not, you can't play it. Last time Jigs got dinged and he was on uh, YouTube jail, it was because that YouTube had contacted him and said, look, every time you do these long streams, we're having uh, difficulties going through the, the material and then uploading it so we don't know what you're doing so we're just going to hold you in the suspended animation until we deem that everything is going to be cool <laughs> after we've gone through shit. and he's like what the fuck does that mean <laughs> well, give, give it some time we might let you start again so they activated him and one of the first fucking things he does within a week is he does a 24-hour stream they told him <laughs> don't do streams over six hours i thought they so like one of the long streams so but every he stream he's done has been over six hours. The first year that we did comics carrying cancer, it was a 24-hour event, and we knew going into it from looking into it that at the 12-hour mark, we had to kill and switch. Yeah. But never knew never knew it was for them to do uh, reviewing, because that is a lot for them to review. Absolutely. Um, but the, there's a solution to that. They can get off people's they, dick and just upload the content. Good. They, they right, you know... Go. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Process. Oh boy! <clears throat> Did you get a claim or a strike, TJ? There's a massive, massive difference. A claim is nothing. Everybody. Yeah, gets exactly. A, a strike is is a strike. It only means nothing. Yeah. What's a claim? A claim uh, is when you can't get monetized or something. No. If you do a video and something in your video is owned by somewhere else, you show a clip. You play a song and it's owned by copyright somewhere else. They get first dibs at any income that happens on that stream. They that get pivot. first claim at it. Yeah. And YouTube has a nice built-in feature where if something gets copyright claimed, like after it uploads, it'll already segment the part that's copyright claimed. And you can with one button click it and it'll remove that, that segment yeah. out of your video. Or you can leave it up and see if the other person will ever even see the claim. And review it and say they can keep it or not or whatever. Yeah. Most of the time, it just means that uh, it will automatically get sent to who owns it. Well, that's what happened to the wrestling video. You remember the wrestling videos I posted the other day? All those wrestling videos ended up getting it, like the WrestleMania stuff. So I just got, I just took it off. Or you can just leave it there. It doesn't hurt your channel. I mean, it's cool content for your yeah, viewers. But, but I want my, I want, I want some kind of change in my wallet. Well, whether you take it off or leave it there, you don't get any change in your wallet. It doesn't affect you positively. It only takes away from your viewership by you taking it down. I wish I had that problem. Yeah, I would have no idea. <laughs> I wish we had your problems. What's your problem? You don't want my problems? What's Emil's problem? Oh yeah, Emil's mental, problem physical, or spiritual one. Uh, investing in shampoo because he has those beautiful fucking locks. That's a problem. Exactly. I want his problems. I got. I, I saw Kevin's hair last night for the first time. I was like, oh, that's right, gorgeous too. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. 
me and Katie have competition. <laughs> So uh, I found that if I put uh, clothespins and a couple <clears throat> other things in my hair, then I can write off as a work tool for work. Because <laughs> I have to utilize those things for things on the on set. So there you yeah. go. I wish I could yeah. do that. Like my I got clothes. a big red circle with an X. Call it what you want. Well, we'll call it a big red circle with an X, and it has nothing to do with YouTube. He's then. an X Men. Yeah. He is an X Men. You're an X Men now. There you go. I got a mail call. Can I share a mail call? I got a Please mail do. call. Mail call. Mail call. Here's mail a mail call. that never fails. It makes me I got want to wag my. So as soon as I saw those uh, logos on a shirt, I was like, I want one. I Look want at one. Look at that knife. Yeah, that's it's, a knife. Uh, that's <laughs> knife. It's a Smith and Wesson first response. If we can. That's a first Damn. response stabber. Or that's what that is. <laughs> Is that blade double sided? No. Oh. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, he did the wrong as side. I, as soon as I saw the logo, I was like, "All right." Oh, Mark, this is the, the swampy. Yeah, this is the swamp. Look, Two, uh, look what came in. Oh, wow, oh damn. damn! Two weeks in a row, someone damn. shows off a T-shirt from Legion and of Comics. Look you at like, that. Know that is uh, officially not Swamp Thing. It's Swamp Thang. It's Swamp Thang. I thought I, he gets a different name every week, doesn't he? That's the important yeah. part, Izzy. Okay, yeah. just making sure. That's yeah. badass. Very important that Villain we keep the name fluid. <laughs> Swim Think Taylor. Swim Mark. Thing. That's it for this week. Swim Think. Yeah, that's a really cool shirt design. Mm -hmm. You can find it at legionofcomics.shop. Put it on, put it on, put it on, put it on. <laughs> I need some. I need some setup music, Izzy. Okay. I can't hear that. I'm taking out my head. But... Ooh, yeah. Oh, ooh, oh, oh, baby. Hey, I'm weird. Look at that. Check out the tat. Oh, yeah. All right, this is not weird at all. Well, <laughs> what air is actually Let me turn up the light. <laughs> he needs to braid, he needs to braid to that armpit light. hair. That's what he needs to do. Yeah. Fabulous hair. Look at that. Look at that. Smooth. Little, 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 little. <laughs> little. Mm -hmm. What you call him, little? Oh, oh, we got a lighting backlight. Oh, yeah. What is going on? Oh, oh, we're yeah. excited for side light. I don't know. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. There it goes. Yeah. yeah. Legion of Comics. You guys are fucking weird. <laughs> Most awesomeness. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we definitely got to get that one. <laughs> Looking fierce. Do it like this. Do like. Do like Uncle Rico. Hey, let's see some blue, some blue steel. <laughs> How old is that reference now? Uh, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. 3, 24. Really? Damn. I don't know. When did Zoolander what, come Blue, Blue Steel? Blue Steel, The that was like early 2000s. Yeah, it's yeah, 23 early. years old. Nailed it. But they made Jeez. the second Zoolander, <laughs> I think, in 2018, maybe? Yeah, the one, the, that no one, the one no one saw. I didn't see it. Hmm. <laughs> Wait, you warned us about read along. So what? We can't read comics online. Is that what you're saying? No, you can't. You know, like those things are copyrighted and they sell audiobooks. So why do you think you could read published copyrighted material on a live stream on a recording? Like you can't sit there and read read Harry Potter aloud. Like you're gonna let me make content <clears throat> reading a book so people can listen to me and read it. Like, they, they charge for that. But they don't charge to read to to have someone read a comic book. Uh, I guess because it's copyrighted. Well, I'm, he's not talking about a comic book. He's talking about a published book that oh. sold through Amazon Books. Oh, okay. it depends yeah. if it's you know a, it's a real book, <laughs> public it's domain good. at this point. <laughs> well, it just released this year, so it's got a ways to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was thinking about doing like a comic book reading. False. You could read aloud. Yeah, you, it depends. Read. If you're doing a read-through kind of thing, of course you can read little little segments, things here and there. You can't do a read-through or a read-along. 
And uh, it also depends on what you're reading. So John, John's comic book wanted to do a series on like how he does uh, the Omni X Men. He was going to go through the Harry Potter stuff, and uh, YouTube's like, <laughs> no, you're not. Uh, <laughs> all right, um, I'm gonna. Put Ooh, in Instagram doesn't I care. A, I had a yeah, game. Instagram, ah, Instagram, Instagram don't care. Okay, maybe I'll do. Instagram don't care about my feelings. All right. Yeah, I used to do a show called Thespian Theater, and that's what we used to do is voice act a bunch of show, um, <laughs> books. And, uh, theater. Yeah, that, that went away you know, after just a few, just for the very reason of what you're talking about. Now, how you get around it is if you improvise, throw extra words in here and there, and you can get around that type of shit. Kevin, you might be more familiar with this. You've been in this space a while. The people that do like... Uh, the explained or walking through comic stories and stuff, even when they're like going through and like recapping comic stories and explaining them in grave detail, showing pages, they take the words out digitally. Word bubbles. Right. Yes, they like, do. Yeah. Yeah. As long as again, if, if you're not showing full content, if you obscure it, as long as you're not full of, like you were saying before, making them the money off of the content, and showing the full content, then there can't be any dispute. You're, uh, you're now re revamping it to yours as long as it's tailored, meaning you're not utilizing their full content for your monetization. Yep. You have to omit stuff. Damn, I had an idea. Okay. Did it hurt? Oh, yeah, that's yeah, cool. a lot. Beginner's lucky, man. Beginner's I uh, lucky. got consent from the people from Barbaric before I did my series, and they just. There you go. Showing full comics. Now, now that know. might be okay by, let's say, hypothetically, you know, like I, one of the first read I ever did was a Canto read. So I got the okay by David uh, Boer um, and, and company, essentially, back back in 2019 when it launched. However, if any of the investors of IDW didn't like it at any point, they could have pulled it. It doesn't matter if David wrote it and if it was his thing that he was publishing, it was going through another publisher and all that, and they're entitled to the you know certain rights. And now that's so, been optioned and stuff for like an animated series for years. I wonder if that ever actually gets made, if that content is still up, if it might get affected differently down the road if they try to do something with the property you know more people involved more people's money more yeah who knows everything's always now, something to change on platforms like this this is the first time i've actually divulged this information so um that whole westbrook thing that's um that's what's his name tell me out scott we work with uh well, over on AFV, we work with uh, Alfonso, and then he used to work with uh, who's Westbrook. That's what so who owns Westbrook? Carlton? <clears throat> uh, yeah, but who's on Westbrook? Uh, who, Carlton used to work with uh, these guys started together. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. So who is the other guy? Will Smith. Will Smith. Will Smith. Thanks. Oh, my God. God. <laughs> One of the guys I'm working so, with. So will smith and them worked together way back when in 89 when i got in i i worked fresh prince of bel-air so uh on occasion so one of the seasons that it ended i remember talking to this guy so i still work with alfonso today i end up telling him about canto he in turn ended up talking to will i end up giving a book to him uh then i end up finding shortly after that the thing got optioned so yeah. I don't know. It, it might all have been coincidental, but it was very coincidental. I don't believe in coincidences. So I uh, I know that one of the things that was really hindering that whole thing from going in is uh, Will kind of fucked himself as far as <laughs> being able to get money from people that would normally give him money because of how he acted out during the awards. Yeah, well, to be fair, that phrase you just uttered is true on so many levels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Straight murdered. <laughs> oh, man. Hollywood is so weird. Oh, my God, it is. It's full of freaks. No offense, Kevin. We love you. Oh, hey, no, I'm part of them. <laughs> You're a lovable one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People I that, that. Like, 
it's cool to be weird, but when you're weird and that weird harms other people, that's when it gets to be like not cool. Yeah, no, I agree. I totally agree. But I am curious to see where development goes from here, because as in any option thing, you know, that it's going to come up to where the lease on that thing goes away. You know, and I know I've explained this before to people, but, you know, what people don't understand is if, if you're given, let's say, a billion dollars for a year to go ahead and produce movies, how many do you think you can do? A billion to produce? One. Like three? Maybe. I can make a billion movies. So so let's so let's say that let's let's eyeball it and say we can do twenty. All right. So let's say our our, our budget's like you know relatively small, and we can do twenty million uh, twenty movies in one year with a bill. Time well, how many movies do you think? How many seconds. stories do you one think second. get optioned in a year? Oh, a lot. A lot. Well yeah. over a hundred to secure any story that you may want to develop in the future, and you hold that for anywhere from two to five years. So when people talk about well, got options, right? I mean, the the the, the percentage of it getting developed is, is rather brilliant. minuscule. Well, what does it mean when YouTube hits you with a copyright plus one? That means that you got a claim. That means that at least one person has recognized something in your content that belongs to them legally. So you dodge a strike on that one. You just got a claim. And it's about that option thing. I point that out most notably with Mark Miller's Miller World stuff because you know he's he's got like three Kingsman movies and he's got another movie like our Miller movie. He's got two kick-ass movies. You know, like the dude has so many movies. He's got American Jesus on Netflix, Super Crooks on Netflix, Jupiter's Legacy on Netflix, and they're actively working on Magic Order on Netflix. But out of all of those comics. They have numerous volumes and it will become something. His most profitable original content is Nemesis, which is one of his huh. earliest ones. Never been made, never been anything. And because that he had that, that light bulb that came on, because it keeps getting picked up by somebody and they do nothing with it. Picked up by somebody, they do nothing with it. And it stays in someone's possession and it keeps moving. And he keeps getting paid for it over and over. Yeah. And that's what made him think, if I wrote Nemesis today and not almost 20 years ago, what would I have done differently with it? Hell, let's do it. So Nemesis Reloaded is not volume two. It's scrapping the first one and just altering it and redoing it if he were to do it today. And it blossomed into the whole Miller world being connected and stuff. So, uh, that oh, that's what really the new was. It was just uh, if reloaded. Yeah, reloaded is a volume one. It starts, it starts with a forward by Mark explaining this. Like, that's where I got all this. He wrote a letter to the readers about why there's a nemesis reloaded. And by the end of it, you see the bigger picture that leads into big game and everything. But uh, I still need to read that. The, the first narration bubbles that you get is like, you might be familiar with this story, but everything you told was a lie. This is how it really went. And like the, uh, the backers that fund nemesis and the original one are no longer backers. It's, it's the fraternity from wanted, you know, that trained him and he starts tying stuff in and it's just, Oh my god, it's so good, oh, dude. dude. That sounds pretty dope, actually. Yeah, top top three shits going on in comics, you know, like Ghost Machine, Inner John, Miller World. Like it's just firing on all cylinders. Great I'm, stuff. I'm I'm two of three with that, so cool. Yeah, I like how he tied all that stuff together when he did that uh that last one. You know, god, I mean it was like, oh that was brilliant. Yeah, it was amazing. Fucking hit girl traveling through time on a dead chrono, not body. Like, let's go. That is so, insane. So let me answer this. So in order to jump into big game, read it what, all first. We read have to read it all. No, you like, don't have to read, you don't it, have to read it all. To. You don't it, have to read anything, but I'm telling you right now, read it all. Not like skip, skip kick ass because you've seen the movie. Skip wanted because you've seen the movie and you know enough about it because you don't have to have the story. It's just the familiarity with the material. Yeah. I, right. I would, I would agree with that. Yeah, even in, in all sincerity, all you have to do is just look up the Miller World books and go to like League of Comic Geeks and read the synopsis on what they mean. Because just as long as you're familiar with what they are, you don't need the character details. You don't need the plot anything. It's just Correct. if you know who they are. If you know, if you know, Eggsy worked for the Kingsmen and it's a secret organization fighting secret terrorists kind of thing. If you know yeah. Hit Girl and Kick Ass, if you know like. Oh, she's an assassin. She's just an assassin that runs around with no powers. That's that's all you need to know. You Ambassadors. Know I mean? you, you know they exist. <clears throat> oh, okay, okay. 
Yeah. Because because it's what? It's Nemesis, it's kick ass, Kingsman. It's practically everything. No, it's not practically everything. Well, it's and and, <laughs> and the new little uh, vampire league that in there. Yeah. So you have Nightclub, Magic Order, uh, Superior, Starlight, Kick Ass, Kingsman, Jupiter. Oh, I got Rated, Starlight. Huck. You got the Ambassadors. The Ambassadors, like you have oh. it all. Wanted, Nemesis, like you, it's all of it. Uh, Reborn. Yeah. It's literally all of oh, it. Oh, like Reborn too. Oh, have you read okay. that? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the Miller yeah, World. Capullo, it's the crisis. Yeah. It's crisis on Miller World. That's what that it, is. Yeah, it is so good. Yes, <laughs> it is okay. crisis. It's what we crisis got a thirty-month member milestone from the comic vet. A good portion of my life has been a legionnaire. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thirty months strong. <laughs> uh, Miller's so nice okay. Team. So uh, I'm I'm interested in big game, and you're, I've read Nemesis. I've watched Kingsman. I've watched Wanted. I've watched Kick Ass. <laughs> Do I Prono need? Knox, that's another one you need. Okay. All right. Uh, and then the Prodigy, Prodigy with Ellison Crane. You need that one. I don't know what that one is. I've never heard I know, of that one. But you, you need it. He's, a, he's I can you tell you right it. now. <laughs> Ellison Kane is the smartest man on the planet. No, like, right, he's just the smartest man on the planet. Okay. Boom. <clears throat> this, whole, this whole chunk in the middle back here is just all Miller World. As y'all you know, went on that that tirade trying to read it all. Damn. And I'm still just, going. I've got uh I've got the final volume of the first kick ass because they did the Dave, uh, what is it, Dave Lewinsky years, Lewinsky years, which is the stuff we know. But then there was a second kick ass, it was a black chick after that. And then they did the Hit Girl Columbia era stuff. But uh, it's the last OG kick ass stuff with JRJR. Then I got Starlight right there, which that oh, RIP him in the nursing home. <laughs> that was rough. So you do need to go back and read all of them. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I'm it helps. It only helps. Recognizing it only helps. them is more important than knowing them, if that makes sense. All right. Because so then, like the, the characters that you're already familiar with are the most important ones, kind of oh, thing. Okay. Hit Girl, Kick Ass, uh, Wanted, like uh Jupiter's you know, Legacy. Remember, like if Never I were you, I if you have to read anything, you need to read Wanted to understand why this world exists, what this world is. Because the basis of the actual wanted comic books and the movie is mad, mad different. Like it's so the basis of the comics is superheroes are real. They existed. Like are your classic superheroes, Superman, Batman, them like those kind of heroes actually existed. And then one day the super villains got together for the first time ever and decided if we secretly team up and attack them all at once, we would actually have a shot at winning. And they do. They did. They won so good that they erased the existence of superheroes out of the zeitgeist of society. And then they faded back into the shadows where they control everything about the world. They don't have to be maniacal bad guys that want to take over the world. They already have it. They, the world can be whatever they want it to be. And that's the world of wanted. Like Wesley gets hired, uh, gets brought into the fraternity, which in the movie, it's just super assassins. In the comics, it's actual comic book super villains. So Wesley is who trained Nemesis. Wesley is who brought Nemesis in to uh to the big game. And the big game, they, they're having to come back out because you know we've we've operated for decades in this world with no superheroes, but the natural shifting of society is for good to push back against evil. And we're seeing a problem. There's this kid in in Philadelphia that's uh putting on this green suit going out fighting crime creating a wave of people wanting to do good kick-ass sparked the first superheroes since they were uh, eradicated so they're the big game is having to come back out and shut it all back down but there's more than they thought you got huck out there running do boy you got the magic order operating you got the the night shift you got all these people that have independently popped up just been exceptionally good people they don't want that trend to continue they don't want them to connect they want to eradicate them all immediately before the the second coming of the heroes arrive and that's what big game is them going and eradicating everyone it's so Mark, fucking good dude it is so fucking good mark and sell ice to an eskimo dude just keep saying words like that <laughs> <coughs> Mark can sell an iPhone to the Amish. It's nuts. 
Well, they deserve to know what the weather's going to be tomorrow also, E-Man. I have no interest in uh, the Millerverse. Well, we know that. We know that, Kyle. It's because he steals Northern California's water and Arizona's oh my gosh. energy. That's why. <laughs> so Both him that's and Kevin. Maybe we're stealing I found our it, resources. I, I found it, Enron. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got to jump. I got a meeting to get to you guys. All right. Cool. Yeah. They need to. I got to get going. I appreciate you. You stay well and talk to you guys soon. Dude, thanks for hopping on. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Izzy's pretty up to speed with Miller World stuff. What do you think of it? I didn't finish the last issue, but I love I love big game. I like I'm Jinx a, World I, I, better. I'm what a is huge that? Nemesis fan. I love Nemesis. Yeah, Jinx, Jinx World. I can't wait. Jinx World, that that's Bendis, isn't it? It's Bendis. Yeah. Yeah. I prefer yeah, Nemesis Miller. Reborn is coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I prefer Miller. It's just to me, Miller's better. I just got done placing an order from a quote. Ooh. Dope. Yeah, it's not dope, but it's fucking done. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Justin. All right, dude. I gotta bounce. I gotta go fucking be a responsible citizen for a few hours until I cannot be. Good luck with that. I got yeah, 30 I minutes before I leave to go pick up Monkey. All right. Well, have fun. Be safe. Take care, y'all. Appreciate you hopping on, Caroline. <laughs> Tell me about the uh, world you were just talking about, you, Kyle. No, nah, I was just making a joke. Oh, it's Jinx, Jinx World. It's by Brian Michael Bendis. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of. I don't know. It's not very. It's a, it's it's isn't it mostly crime noir? Yeah, and it's kind of all over the place too. But it's Bendis. It's a lot of talking. Yes, that's what Miller does. Miller does talking, but not to the same extent as Bendis. Okay. Which is what I like about Miller. It's like Bendis is like okay, it's way too much talking. I love y'all read Acts of Vengeance. Grids. Yeah, but yeah, I'm sure you love Bendis' work, Justin. It just makes your life a lot. But don't you get paid regardless of the same how many letters? You get paid by the letter. No, I get paid page. by the page. page well, so does yeah. it matter? Do you want less letters? You want? How about you get yes. paid for a silence <laughs> issue? Get paid for a silent issue. My favorite pages or my favorite pages are the double page uh the double <laughs> page splash pages, like yeah. the double page spreads, uh that only have like one caption box at the top left. The Those rollover the from the last page and just yeah. yep. that one caption box. Yep. Totally worth it, right? Those are my favorites. Every penny. <laughs> Izzy, what's the next convention you have in your area or just slated in general? What's slated right now, which I may or may not go, will be... What, I was about to say, what's the next comic convention that us taxpayers are going to fund you to go to? Um, Fan Expo. Fan Expo. Because... <laughs> um, it's gonna Seems be, fitting. Um, Ghost Machine Crew is going to be there. Oh, nice. So that's going to be cool. Um Adam Kubert's going to be there. Which which one is this? Which location? This is the Philly one, which is a really cool show. I like that one a lot. So, so that's cool. Um, is there any? I don't even want to say this online because then people will bother you. <laughs> bother me. I'm going to ask you anyways. I'll ignore them anyway. So, is there a possibility that I can send you my uh, my? Uh, I have the ash can from NYCC. Oh. Okay. And it's signed nine times over, but it was signed before Ivan was officially announced. Let me let me get the official word that I'm going. And then yeah, we'll talk. yeah, yeah. Because I, 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 dude, you know I love Ivan because despite Bendis dropping the ball on Superman, Ivan carried the torch with the art. Mm. Well, I have to double check because again, the, most of the crew's there, but I don't know if their whole crew's going to be yeah. there. Yeah. 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 We could definitely talk. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I, I, just, I just hate to be that guy. I'm more, I'm more in the lines is when you do it all. When someone does it all the time, it's like, dude, you know, I do want to enjoy the show. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's why, I, that's why it kind of bothers because you got to carry around someone else's property, and that's always going to be in the back of your mind, kind of thing. And mm -hmm. 
yeah, I don't have an I don't have an issue like that if it's if it's something I do. But I'm planning to go. My main objective is to see Andy Andy Kubert. He'll be at Heroes Con. Well, he's going to be in Fan Expo. If I get him in Fan Expo, I probably get him less of a line because that's the thing about Fan Expo. A lot of the people that go to Fan Expo don't really go for the comic side of things. They go for a lot mm-hmm. of the cosplaying and all that stuff. So that means the artist won't be as crowded. So it ends up being easier for me to like get a book signed or something because I really want I really want my X Men to get signed, my two sixty six to get signed. So that's that's my objective. But besides that, that's pretty much it. Wait, Andy Kubert's going to be at Heroes Con? No, Adam, Adam, Adam. Adam. Andy, oh. Andy's going to be in Fan Expo. Got my hopes up. Yeah, we're going to get out. What was it? The Marvel preview books? Is that what you've been? Getting massive signatures on is that the series? Marvel presents. Marvel presents. Man, those yeah. things are the like they're you get like four different writers, four different artists. Like mm-hmm. those things are yeah. I I have this one pulled aside uh, that I'm sending into CDC for the Walt Simonson signing. So oh, cool. yeah. Why don't you just get him to I'm sign in with Heroes? Because I already I already got the remark. I was one of the first 20 people to get the remark. <laughs> there you go. Woo-hoo. How many signatures you have there already? On that one, there's only two. And who are they again? Uh, Claremont and uh, Klaus Jansen. Okay. So you just need the artist. You got the inker and you got the writer. Yep. But, but I you mean, don't there's, have there's... the letter. I'm, I'm disappointed. Well, hold on. I got to look up to see who lettered it. The competition, who cares? Stan Sakai, ah, no, uh, <laughs> imagine, imagine he looks it up. It's like Ringo, it. Ringo award winning Stan Sakai. Okay, so I mean, I still need to get Al Milgram, uh, Doug Mensch. Um, Al Milgram goes to a lot of shows, I know, yeah. Uh, so I could have. I probably, in hindsight, should have sent this in to the Wolverine signing because then that I could have gotten been two. The easiest. Yeah, that would have been. Could have gotten two names knocked off of that list. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's okay. Yeah, it lo- looks like there's only out of people who are still alive and doing signings. One, two, <laughs> three. That's the real thing. Why now, in all seriousness, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted. To, I've been pushing that topic for wine, cheese, and comics, please. I want to talk about like what happens after creators die. You know, like like in what aspect? The same thing that everything that happens to everybody after they die. I mean, I feel like George Perez had it really nice. He had like a tribute shit done, but like oh, other okay. creators, they pass away and nothing happens. Mostly, and it's just most creators, nothing happens. Yeah, I think you got to think of the caliber, though, man. That's like. I mean, yeah. the creator of Dragon Ball Z, like, he, he, he there's a bunch true. of new content. He changed no, society as a whole. Yeah, but that's Are a, you saying that there weren't any tributes for Toriyama? There was. I was a, yeah. Okay. I Justin was, was say, about to get heated okay. for the first time ever. <laughs> yeah, I was, like, was going to say, were we even ready on the internet <laughs> that week? Is that what it okay. was? Is that so why recently, you see recently, recently. No, no, no. As far as creators that passed away, mm-hmm. uh, to do the comparison, right? Um, yes, MD Bright. How yeah. old are MD Bright. Uh, oh, that was that... last week, right? Yeah, that was last week. He's the last. He's the last known creator that passed away. How much? How much do you give to someone like that? Well, know. first off, Kyle, can you name some of his work? What? What? <laughs> no. What's not? I don't, one of those I don't books? know who MD Bright is. I saw a headline, and that's it. Well, I'm saying this is, but that this is that's the the measurement of how of how much of a fanfare is is raised you, after they die. But be fair, if you told me Toriyama, I wouldn't know that he did Dragon Ball Z because I, I just I wouldn't, didn't know I wouldn't that. Either, but, but I wouldn't his either, fan but base would. Of, millions of yes. people do. His I'm, I'm not would. one of them. Yeah. It's like with George Perez when when he passed away. I knew that, but. Countless I knew of his there. work. I just didn't associate it with. Yeah, yeah, that, that's know. super fair. But that's what I'm saying. That's how that's how it's measured. Is yeah. how many people are familiar. Correct. 
Yeah. So, like, so, what's the distinction then? Why do some people get like this crazy fan pair and some people the, don't? And it, they're still it's influential. The iconic status because mm-hmm. of the footprint that their work created while they were alive measures yeah. okay. the fanfare after they die. Right. So, the Tope, George Perez, Neil Adams, those guys. Upper there was once this German leader that left huge footprints in society while he was a leader, and mm-hmm. the negativity fanfare still proceeds to this day. I don't think society will ever stop talking cash money shit about that horrible individual who led Germany in the 1940s. Oh, okay. you're talking about, about Otto what, Van Bismarck. That what, guy. What about that yeah. very <laughs> famous Heisman Trophy winner that just recently passed away? I thought you were going to say Herschel star. Walker. That he was, you know, he was the star, he was one of the stars of the Naked Gun series. Orenthal, James Simpson, may he rest in peace. <laughs> While you turn off your camera <laughs> to show, uh... <laughs> that is a photo portraying his innocence. People, Nicole's killer still out there. Jesus, I hope well, he's found. To be honest, they they just didn't prove that he did it. <laughs> no, I think that they did. <laughs> Let's be real. I, think the glove, they, I think they did. The glove unfortunately, did not fix, the, for the the way the, uh, the court the system. Gloves. What a wild <laughs> life! OJ did it. <laughs> But let's what have those tribute shows. Happened. Let's 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 pay tribute to what he's done in sports. You know the uh, the uh, shop that he held at gunpoint at the collector shop. I believe it was a hotel room. I thought yeah. it was a collector shop that he was trying to get some of his stuff back from. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was the one that he got arrested for. The guy that had his yeah. in the hotel room and you ran into the dude in the room. No, no, no. The dude Vegas. owned a collector. It was like. Something collectibles. It was like a collectible shop. Yeah, some of his collectibles. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I met that guy before all that stuff happened, and he's a freaking dick. Um, <laughs> that, that is a very weird claim to fame. Just yeah. <laughs> I went into his store as a little kid, and and like he like wouldn't let me touch anything, but I was like trying to like buy. He didn't, want the he, didn't he didn't understand. I had I came in there. I had two hundred dollars in my pocket. I was trying to get a jersey. He I touched the jersey. He told me not to touch the jersey. And I looked at him and said, "Screw you!" And I left. <laughs> to, be, to be clear, I was one thousand percent right. He he busted in on the guy in his Las Vegas hotel room where he had the collectibles in his hotel room. But he was he was a owner of a collectible. Yeah, shop, yeah. Correct? It's it's the guy you're talking about. But cool. yeah, OJ yeah. OJ went to his. His hotel uh, room, to get his hotel room where the uh, stolen item supposedly included photos of his children, game footballs, and other 800 or so collectibles. Some of the items stolen allegedly had nothing to do with Simpson. So the guy had tons of stolen merch that was gotcha. in his hotel room, which he was probably trying to figure out how to clean them up a bit before moving them. Mm-hmm. Well, or I've, just storing them in a the hotel room instead of in his, his shop. I, uh, I have some follow-up questions. Yes. Doesn't everybody? One, Kyle, what jersey were you trying to buy? Uh, it was a Kobe Bryant jersey, and I okay, needed not it. What for, I was, not what I, I was expecting. It, but, uh, well, so there's a story behind. It. I needed it for an audition where I had to like get a basketball jersey, no, and I liked this, Kobe at the time. Palace Station, just a, a, just a jersey, right? This wasn't okay. like a signed jersey. Or anything <laughs> like that. No, anything either. <laughs> I was a little kid. It was not signed. I had two hundred dollars in my pocket. Store eating rice crispy treats, a... grabbing Kobe jerseys. It was just <laughs> a Kobe jersey. It wasn't signed. It was just a, jer- a regular jersey, right? It was on a freaking one of those circular things with What's the it? hangers. Okay, so how like old? A... How old were you? And like were your? Name? And were your fingers covered in Cheeto or Dorito dust? <laughs> I cannot burger. answer the second one because I'm not sure. <laughs> That was like seven oh, he or knows eight. The answer. But he, he cannot, knows the answer. cannot, cannot confidently say no. <laughs> yeah, I can either confirm or deny those claims. <laughs> There's a chance there was Dorito dust on my hands. <laughs> I cannot confirm or deny. I mean, if you had to put like a percentage on, like, it looked like odd... a shithead little kid walking into a store and touching things. <laughs> he's walking so. in. He's walking in. He's just going like, 
<laughs> oh, look, football. <laughs> What's Babe Ruth? Huh? Baby Ruth? <laughs> Signed by some girl. I didn't know pigs can sign. <laughs> it's a reference to the Babe, the pig movie. Yes, and, and mine was a reference to the Sandlot. Fair enough. Ah, oh, Sandlot. I love that movie. Talk about nostalgia. I lo absolutely love that movie. <laughs> fun movie. It's a fun movie. Mm -hmm. You're killing me, Smalls. Mm. Oh, man. That's all. So I pour my apple juice and then I add a big... Uh... I'm still trying Swig to admit the to the store, and the guy says, he's like, you're a jerk. He's like, you have filthy fingers, and you want to touch my this jersey. <laughs> oh, I mean. And then right after, he, like... right after he leaves, OJ walks in. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. I was trying to buy an OJ Simpson signed football or something. <laughs> Is this stolen? No, but it was just kind of shitty. I had a shitty experience with him. Mm -hmm. And it's because I was alone. I, was, I had already... Go ahead. It, it was so impactful that you still remember it. Yes. To this day. So yes I, I I, that's, like, that's me being serious and, and it, legitimizing it for you. Because like, yeah, I was a kid, dude. It, it hit me different. It scarred his life. <laughs> <laughs> it was the turn of his, of his life. Like This is the moment I knew. I had gone into the store earlier with my dad. He didn't give me shit with my dad. Then I go in with money to buy the thing that I saw in the store, and he gives me shit, and he lost out on the sale. Well, that's because you didn't show him the money. But like walking, holding it up. But Look, like, I need, okay. I need this. I need this. There was a time that I got really shitty service at a uh, uh, a restaurant because McDonald's. the. <laughs> yeah, sure. No, it was uh, it was that Guy Fury. It was his uh hamburger shop or whatever. Oh, that, uh, that was delicious. In Vegas, um, the food was okay. You uh, seen that guy? Of course, the food's okay. You don't dress the... like that if you're not good at what you do. <laughs> as far as I know, he's good at eating food. <laughs> Hey, so. <laughs> he seems to have a history for that, doesn't he? Yeah, he has shows where he just goes around the world and eats, or the country and eats food. And, he's, and he I'd screams. Him, I would love to have that job. It worked yes, out for all too. those guys. Anthony Bourdain, Guy Pieri. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, it was me and my friends. We were like early 20s. We didn't look like we had money or anything, right? And we walk into a store and we just get like god-awful service. And then at the time, I had blown a bunch of money on uh, uh, gambling, so I had like a high tier uh, card. And I put the card down. I go, "Hey, can I use my celebration dinner uh, for this?" And then the dude, the waiter, just snapped, and he's like, uh, "Oh yeah, you got it, sir." And then like started being polite and shit. And I was like, "Whoa, this is like night and day," uh, oh, because that's... I was like a, a high roller at the casino or whatever. That's um, not what I thought you meant by snapped. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> my my adjectives are not uh, serving purpose or giving credence to the the relevance of the story. Uh, the anyways, he started treating us nice for like the last like five minutes, but like to that point, he like hadn't even like filled up our waters. School, we reached out. <laughs> <laughs> J-Med. I had a fist fight with Guy Fieri, but we were cool now. We're cool now. <laughs> um, and that was a lie about the spending a bunch of money. I was part of a rewards program, and they gave me free like status in a casino. That's cool. Yeah. I'm not irresponsible with my money. I buy it. I spend it all on comic books. <laughs> That's not irresponsible at all. Maybe. Oh man, do you, <laughs> do you know what I just started in a convention, and it's it's a thing now. 
I'm uh, totally falling down the the Lorcana rabbit hole. Donating oh, proceeds no. to comment screen cancer. <laughs> Lorcana? I know the people game's people actually kind of fun. Lorcana thing. Yeah, I just don't like Disney anymore. They alienated me too much. What'd they do to you? Ruined my childhood. Can you elaborate on that? Ugh. I haven't heard him mention you one time. I got older and wiser, and then I understood what capitalism is, and then I just lost like the nostalgia factor. Break, like, I break feel... it down a little bit for me, man. That's so I went to. I was like such a big Disney fan. I would go to the D twenty three convention, which yeah. just like specifically oh, Disney. Big. Um, and it was right before they launched uh, Disney Plus, and I'm like walking around, and it's just like, I don't know, it, it just seemed disingenuous. Oh, they were presenting their own convention. It wasn't for the fans. It was just was marketing. Stakeholders. Yeah, basically. Yeah, it mm-hmm. was. Here's right. what we have coming up. Like, I don't know. I got it, like money we're about to make. You want a piece? Yeah, that's what it felt like. And like even when we were signing up for Disney Plus, it was like weird. They like we went to like a little section and you'd like pay I think we paid like hundred and fifty bucks and they gave us three years of Disney Plus for like the intro offer or something like that. I don't remember. It might have been eighty dollars. I cannot sure. tell you how excited I was for that to launch with the Star Wars stuff and everything and yeah. watching the countdown ticker and everything, and it's just crazy how much it's changed for me personally in those short few years, like, like literally lost the magic, lost the magic for the Disney stuff, lost the magic for the MCU stuff, lost the magic for the star Wars stuff. I just, I got nothing left in the tank for this. Them. I, still, I still hope for good stuff. And when I hear it's good, I check it out and I can still en- enjoy some stuff here and there, but you just bummer. star Wars, star Wars novels still have me. Um, but yeah, I pretty much sent, share that same sentiment and like lost the the magic, the nostalgic factor. The, yeah, the older stuff still has it for me. No, nothing that was like old is like devalued in any way. Like I can still watch Moana a thousand times and never not sing along and grin. I love that movie. That's what you consider old, though. No, no, I was trying to use a more recent one closer to like the the timestamp I gave you with the launch of D plus. Gotcha. That was that was not too many years before the D plus mm-hmm. era, but it was that was like their last like a uh, big animation one, you know, like kids movie animation one. What they're what they're known for, what they built their company on. I liked Inside Out. Was that Disney? I like yeah, that one Pixar. too. Yeah. Pixar, okay. It, it's still Disney. It's Disney. That's like saying is Marvel Disney? Yeah, it's Disney. It's Disney. Is Star Wars Disney? Yes. Yes, it is. Everything. After yeah, everything you're saying is Disney, that's why it's all equally shitty. Is, now. is ESPN Disney? Wait, you didn't you didn't like Encanto? No, I didn't. I I, I, liked, I liked thought it was good. okay. The kids I, like it. I can't I can't uh, even understand what the fuck they're saying in half the movie. I'd have no way of enjoying it. It's not it's pretty good. I don't disagree with that. It's we don't just, talk I about Bruno. Like just don't talk about Bruno. Oh, no, no, no. I think that they got people with repetition more than quality with Encanto. Cool. And that that's just my personal take. I know a lot of people liked it, but... Yeah, Inside Out was my last favorite one. My wife that's likes Seeing like Red. Too. I'm like, why Why does that movie exist? Inside right, Out hit me different, you... though. I'm not... Well, what do, you, what do you think about Inside Out 2 that's coming out? Oh, I have no idea. Yeah. Um, she develops just, new emotions. Yeah, yeah she's it's puberty, right? Yeah, she, she's. I don't know, multi personality disorder. I thought it was I think intriguing Disney from that trying perspective. Trying to tackle topics like puberty and girls starting their periods and kids' cartoons is wildly fucking crazy, and they need to backpedal what they're doing. Eh, we'll see. No, I'm not. Gonna um, see. No, I'm you saying we'll see. see. <laughs> you can see and tell me. Yeah, I'm not a true. young girl, though. How am I going to give like the Canto, Lightyear, Strange World, and Wish were all incredible. I watched really? Lightyear; it Wish? sucked. Strange heard... World is like the terrible, and Wish I didn't even waste my time. Strange World, I don't know anybody except for AR that watched it, or Wish for that matter. Uh, Perry, what are you facting? We Facts. got a time lag on our end. 
But uh, the yeah, Encanto, is- again, my wife liked Encanto. Me and my wife were both so pumped for Lightyear, especially with that first trailer that they cut. It looked really that, cool. That movie was a, a letdown. The first, the first like thirty minutes of Lightyear are really cool. Everything else is like, okay, I'm done. And the, the AR twist. is like a beacon of positivity from the other end of the galaxy. So glad he enjoyed him. <laughs> yeah, the, I don't, the, I don't the, roll on AR's uh, recommendations unless it's Star Trek. And yeah, the twist. Uh, uh, I hear onward, him out that year is no good. Onward was okay. Onward, onward got was... me in my feels. But yeah, that's a, oh, and Soul was okay too. Soul was cool, especially hearing Nine Inch Nails music in it. But other than that, it's Inside Out for me. That was the last one, and that was back in what was Luca on twenty fifteen. Wow, Luca Luca was twenty twenty because it came out during the pandemic, and that's a I fun Soul, movie. But that was Disney though. Luca Luca was okay. No, like, Luca Luca's Pixar. Okay. So yeah, yeah Lucas Pixar, and um, this the other one, the the um, the Red Panda movie. What's her name? That scene red, right? Yeah, that's a good movie. That's, yeah, that's a good the movie. one about her period. Yeah, Girl but the movie in period. itself is good. <laughs> Disney targeting these topics is wildly crazy, and no Southern uh, today is steak day. Oh, he's talking about his McDonald's run. Yeah, Disney. Ta- they're, they, I don't know, man. Disney's fucking crazy there's no ifs ands or buts about it the people like coming up with these ideas are fucking crazy the people giving the final judgment call and allowing them to go through have lost their goddamn mind and it's just, just want money well it's not that's always the crazy it's not always about crazy the money. Thing they, no no it they is. want you to it, think it's about money no well it yes yes exactly but the problem is they're fucking losing money left and right like in the past in the past two years, Disney lost 10 years worth of gaining money. Like they built their company up over the last 10 years and in two years dropped to where they were 10 years ago, but they're still making the same content that's losing them viewers, losing their audience, and losing them money. So when's yeah, it going to get to the point where like they've lost so much that that you just had a proxy war over this shit? And when uh when the proxy war ended and they didn't give the two board seats up. They lost eight million dollars in twenty four hours of, of of stock because they didn't because the shareholders like you're not going to do something drastic to change the guard, fucking there it goes like it's just it's crazy how much money they can lose and continue down the same path like the, it's not about money right now to them they're trying to fight a battle they're having a, I, a message I don't call. I don't think that the fan base that i'm talking about really cares about the stock sh- holders and shit like that it's not no, stock. It, it's not stock it, it has nothing to do with stock in that no i understand i'm just saying the financial aspect i guess is the better way to put it um because like the people that i'm talking about just feel like alienated by disney like yeah. they're just cash grabbing on things that were really nostalgic to them and not putting like a I don't any, know. any magic into it they're not so magic into Malefic- that- Maleficent was really good. I loved Maleficent, and it was a great spin on like a story. But then they come out with like Sleeping or what's the one with the uh, Hermione from Harry Potter? Uh, uh, Beauty and the Beast. They come out with Beauty and the Beast, and it's like this like auto tuned disaster. The live action it, one. You see, that's the yeah. side of it. That's the side of it. That's a cash cow, right? The other side yes. is a political yes. struggle, right? Where that's exactly. I'm. We're making the same distinctions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so so. Everyone's seeing it now. Like, no matter what side yeah. of the aisle you're on, how you yes. feel about it, okay. everyone is losing, and Disney's not fucking getting it. Yes. Like the we're people all, that all you think you're picture. pandering to, they don't pay for your shit. Right. They're not coming out in droves to watch it, and the people that you abandon to pander to. Those abandoned people, that was your base. That mm-hmm. was your base for all of existence. You know, like the whole concept of universal messages is lost in modern day Hollywood. Like, be kind, be honest. Like, those things, like, no, they have to get specific. And by getting specific, you're narrowing your audience mm-hmm. and offending a lot of people. And who you're narrowing it to, don't fucking shop with you. Yeah. Because they you already lost them. <laughs> yeah. And you either okay. lost them or they're, they're, they're pirating shit. They're not. They're not walking around in Disney shirts. They don't go to parks. That, like, think of who goes to parks. Family units go to parks. Mm-hmm. Like traditional 
nuclear family units dominate the demographic of who spends money at Disney. And you've spit on them. Yeah. Which is nuts. It's nuts. In a capitalist society, that company sure isn't capitalist, are they? They just, they like buying things. Mm-hmm. They can't buy things anymore. <laughs> Not right now. They're actually selling things and they're selling things, things now. They might they might eventually sell off ESPN. Wild. Which I think makes sense. The, I don't even know. know why they fucking bought it. Oh, they bought it for I forget they got they it was, got it with ABC, didn't they? They got it with ABC. Um, but I think part of it had to do with just they they just they want to globalize everything so yep. they want to be a part of everything so and who, and now, it, it's okay, not a bad this, this thing calls, this calls back to what we were talking about with the real estate in america mm-hmm. who's the number one invest who's who holds the most shares for disney it's not an individual person what mega investment group holds the the majority of shares i have no idea i've never wait looked into it. it wait for it Just... See if this I was telling people it was one thing. People are show, finding something on their own is a whole separate thing. I think the art Disney is putting out is incredible, and if Disney is an example of financial failure, I don't want to succeed. Dude, ha- like I don't, I, you say that all the time, but it's the wildest fucking statement. They've lost more money in the past two years than most people could even dream of earning. It's not, that's not a success story. They're they're on a downward trend of losing it all, massive amounts of layoffs, closures, and shit. That's not a success story. Just because they haven't gone bankrupt doesn't mean they're fucking winning. Yeah, Here, he beat you to it. BlackRock owns the majority shares. Of Disney, BlackRock, the same company we were talking about earlier, that's strong arming the American real estate market, buying up everything so that they can compartmentalize and rent out homes, and there won't be homes to buy. That sounds like, like said, uh, Disney wants to be a globalist, and their primary primary investors are fucking globalists. That sounds like um, some DC villain I know. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All that shit is one thousand percent interconnected. Vanguard, yeah, I know about Vanguard. It's, it's wild. It's all interconnected. Now, if you go and look, and if you get deep in the weeds of this shit, you'll look that Vanguard is heavily invested in BlackRock. And guess what? BlackRock is also heavily invested in Umbrella Corporation. Vanguard. These <laughs> companies that pretend to be separate entities are too big to fail because they invest in each other. All these megacorps, they own stock in each other. That's wild. It's And what's crazy is none of this information is hidden by law, but how do you even know to fucking look for it? Unless I didn't, I, I'm not looking for that kind of that, stuff. That's that, what I'm saying. Who would? Who would even the think? The nefariousness of, of and trying that, to and influence the real content, estate market by buying that, companies. That's why content looks like the way it does because – None of it has been made for the viewers in a long, long time. And the amount of money it would take for them to lose to see any kind of change for the lowly old person just wanting to consume good quality entertainment doesn't exist. That amount of money doesn't exist. There's box office numbers. Like, uh, no. I'm like, shit. I know I'm smiling, but I'm like angry. That shit. Yeah. Like- <laughs> yeah but Kyle, you, but when you said like you feel like they sold off your nostalgia, they did. They yeah. fucking did. So when they buy up these properties, guarantee like there's nothing left of them. They're they're dead. They're over with. Until they let them go, like Stan Lee said back in the 19 fucking eighties. I hope other people write Spider Man stories. I'd love to see what their version of it is. The more people that do, the merrier. I'd, I'd love to see other people's interpretation. Until you get the stranglehold gone and other people can play with them, we're mm-hmm. stuck. Pray that you live long enough to see your favorite IPs hit the public domain. And until then, just buckle up because you're not driving. <laughs> I hate to I hate to agree with CJ on anything, but I but he's, he's, <laughs> he, he is he is telling the truth there. <laughs> and, and <laughs> yeah. 
that's what I'm saying. It, it was it made sense, but now they're at the point that they're like, can we really hold this? You know, at the end of the day, Apple's gonna buy everything. Disney shares are currently at one hundred and eleven dollars a share right now. Their high water mark was nearly two hundred and twenty five just two years ago. Norin, that's how far that they've dropped in two years. I think within time they'll actually get it back, though. Yeah, no, I don't think they'll get it back. That that was a COVID spike that helped that a little bit. I don't I don't think they'll get it back in in. You'll, I don't think to see it that high again, like inflation is going to have to go up drastically. Yeah, inflation will be part of that, of course. Something's going to have to happen because I think uh, Iger, Iger, yeah, they, they're in a better I see place. The plan that homeless level is ridiculous, dude. You ain't lying, dude. If y'all think for a second that none of this shit ain't actually like, like these whole like oh conspiracy theorists, like bro, y'all ought to quit calling people that and start looking into shit. Now there's some dumbasses out there peddling some wild conspiracy theories for sure, but. Yeah, you know, but the problem the is, is in, information is flat. so accessible now. And as mm -hmm. time goes, people start connecting these dots, and you get that one person that looks into that one thing and did the research for the entire world and put it out there. And then that leads the next person down, and information compounds. Bro, these sites look like eerily similar Vanguard and Black. Black Dude, this, I'm telling you, it's the same shit. It's the same <laughs> shit, buddy. Now go look. Like, go look I've made I've website. made better websites than Vanguard's website. I don't think they, they care about the website. The color and the header. <laughs> they, don't the color and the header. they don't care about the web. The AI yeah, is this is website. some trippy stuff, man. You, yeah, I love. Uh, that's why I loved Department of Truth, because like yeah. it scratched it scratched that itch of like conspiracy theories and stuff. Um. Yeah, no, it's wacky. All right, cool. Uh, you guys might. I'm I'm actively writing a comic right now. Um, and it's for context, because I got to bounce go get monkey. For context, in 2001, uh, okay. Disney's net worth was 281 billion, okay. and they're already down to as of today, they're at 206 billion, and they're up right now from where they were because that proxy battle led them to rally their investors and shit. They were down. Uh, to 158. So that's how much they fucking dropped. And that those are those are peak drops, peak drops because Disney didn't peak okay. up. They trended up over our wow. entire lifetime. They trended yeah. up and then they peak dropped. Those aren't millions. Those are billions. So billions. Much money. It's ridiculous. And to think that a peak drop still has this company at its lowest in five years at 158 billion. And the the fact that, that that's I mean, the end of your mar that's the end of your market cap form. Twenty years and you're down seventy billion. <laughs> and, you're, so. and you're still you're still hundreds of billions up though. That's it's fucking crazy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They ain't fixing nothing. Go watch nine oh two one oh X Men's ninety seven. This is what I want my kids growing up with. Yeah, I'm, I'm not watching X Men ninety seven. If I hear everyone rave review about it, I check out the episode and. Other than that, I don't give a the shit. The coolest thing of X Men Seven this week was Storm. I'm gonna tell yeah, you right now, it was Storm, care. and that scene is awesome. Yeah, I just if, if the, the internet explodes with rave reviews, then I go check it out, and I was happy every time I do it like that. If I, I'm not saying people are like saying the episode's bad, but if it doesn't ignite the internet, I'm good. I get that. I, Which I usually don't pay because, attention uh, to others. The storm scene should should have. The storm scene should have. But let me go pick up Monkey. I appreciate y'all hopping on. Y'all have a good day. I appreciate everybody coming to hang out in the chat. And I just hit the end 